Do you think it's because your opponents are worse? Um, so you feel like no matter what you do, it's going to work? Or... I don't think so. I, I think just in every play, like, we like set up conditions for what was yeah. going to happen. And when those conditions were met, I'm just like, core, I'm with you if you engage. I'm DM with you if you engage. Like, they're always playing well today. On that note, I remember last but I asked you guys when you were here if you communicated in Korean, you said yes. Yes. And you were communicating 1v4, basically, right? Yeah. I mean, it's true, right? You were like one man. Yeah. I guess you speak both <laughs> I mean, perfectly, right? So, so it was basically the Koreans were talking, and then Core was translating, and that was also translating like Yeah, you speak both fluently, right? Yeah, uh, not fluently. It's like decently. Okay. I, I'm not very. So English is like 100, and Korean would be like what? Korean was like 70. But like in game, oh, it's yeah. like easier to translate. Yeah. Because I, I can understand it, but mm -hmm. like speaking back then was not as easy. Yeah. And then <clears> now. This year is just English. Yeah, Full English. Pure English. Uh, like, uh, actually, ninety no, percent English. Is, is, Umti has pretty impressive English for how long he's been here. Yeah, his his English was very good before he like was taking classes. Yeah. But I think Umti sometimes in like very dire situations. He would just speak in, Korean. Like if, he, if, he, <laughs> if he's talking to if he's talking to like Core, right? He's yeah. obviously gonna be like, yeah, that's fine. Think fast and then like Korean. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. for the most like I would say ninety, it's like 85, 15 is like Korean English. Yeah, from what I understand, Korean is also more efficient. Of a language, it's very fast in, in the right? moment. Like, you use less words to say the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. So it's like just easier, yeah, right? Be better, especially in the moment for someone like him, right? Yeah. I was gonna ask you what you think of C9. Are they the best team? I mean, I live in their house. I watch their <laughs> scrims. <laughs> yeah, and I watch. So their if you talk I watch trash, their as well. So I watched some scrims you guys this week. I think it was right two days ago, three days ago. I don't remember. Three, four days ago. Yeah. yeah. So I have a little bit of bias. Okay. But. Watching their scrims, you would think they're worse than they played in against Hana Thieves. Mm. So, like, my opinion might be worse because I think they don't show it up in, in scrims very often. They're limit testers in scrims. Who's the biggest yeah. limit tester on Jojo. the team? Just out of Jojo control. Jojo in, in scrims. It's, it's, def it's definitely mid jungle in scrims. Yeah. Like, sometimes they're <clears throat> doing some really insane stuff, and it's like, wow, <laughs> this is insane. But sometimes it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I was saying, what are you doing? Before you guys got here, I was saying that Mithy has a table slam counter at this point and it's like he has, hold, he, has hold, he has to hold he has to hold back from hitting the table because then you can hear it but he's always like oh my god oh my god. I'm, like, I'm gonna kill this guy <laughs> it's like when Bio jumps in and gives it monkey gold to enemy team's AD carry he's like <laughs> wait was that the tier, or Shopify game? No, just, or just that's, just, that's just scrims. That's just scrims. Oh, yeah. scrims? Oh, but shit. actually, like it's last probably week, happened in LCS but happened the, the previous week when CNN played Shopify I was told that a certain coach hit a table so hard that the cable of the monitors that shows the game fell out or broke. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it has to be Mithy. <laughs> I asked him about it. I asked the Bobby, their manager, about it. And he was like, yep. He goes, when Sergei died in the base, you remember? Was like, there a fine? When he flashed in? I don't think there's a fine. Yeah, when he flashed in on the Kaiser, remember? Oh, oh, he yeah. Dies. oh yeah, I heard that too, actually. And then he hit the table so hard that the table like shook or something, and then the cable like fell out <laughs> of the monitor. <laughs> Hopefully was, you didn't get fines. I don't think you get fined for that, do you? Well, I feel like only if you're breaking. Break, only if you're breaking. Yeah, break, so if it's like listening, it's probably okay. fine. Uh, this is the yeah. socket. But yeah, I think C9 is the best team if they play their best game. Yeah. Are you coaching that, them? I'm giving my opinions. Mm. I'm not like actively watching yeah. every scrim and coaching, but I'm, I'm there when they scrim and I'm watching the games with Mithin at long term, <clears> right? Yeah, Vulcan, I think you should really play around because they're here, here. If, one, you, if you just play <laughs> One big thing was like Berserker's Senna was like, he roams too much. I'm like, bro, can you just fucking go to lane and just win? <laughs> That's the point of your champ, is to win lane, make your support like an actual tank, not a support, you know? It's like, he played very well in that one game. Against 100, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the most recent Senna. Yeah. yeah. It was like, after, after week six, when everyone flamed his souls, I think he actually I'm had the most I'm not trying to take credit or anything, but I told Mithy, like, bro, stop roaming or pick a different champ. Like, <laughs> you can just play at 80 carry and have, you know, knowledge roam instead. This is how you're going to play, right? Level four, at, like, 10 minutes. I'm like, bro, come on. Speaking of bot lane, uh, I want to get your two opinion on this. We've seen all these series start with massive smolder prio, <clears throat> and then it'll just disappear like halfway through the series. Like, why is that happening? Um, well, for us, they just banned. Make him leak now? I mean, they just banned all 380 <laughs> carries. Yeah, that, one, that one's obvious. Like, it's, it's on them mostly. Yeah. Because they're banning the 380 carries. They're like, what the fuck? Are they that scared of handshaking it? Mm. So it was basically. I think that's the main thing, at least. Is that surprising for you guys, since Dignitas has been so heavy on the hyperscaling champs? Like, the, you guys even banned the Jinx one game. What the only matchup was, like, maybe they know a little bit better than us, and it's yeah. like, we're going to pilot this game. But, um, for the most part, I think if, they ha or if they're trying to go heavy through bot lane, they should mm -hmm. at least leave those champions open. Yeah. 
I think that was like their biggest downfall. Yeah, I thought that was weird as well. They went for like Ash Vars instead of picking the skilling champs. Yeah. I feel like that's how they won most of their games this split. If they're going to play heavy through a bot side, like Promo State bot, they should leave those skill champions open. The yeah. Calista Vars, Senna. I'm not trying to make you league or anything, but what do you think about the first game, the Kai'Sa, the AP build versus Smolder? Because I think it was pretty decent. The strat they had, you know, they're playing like a full poke comp mm -hmm. against your skilling comp. Well, after they killed me, like they dove us and they hit. Yeah, Kai'Sa is well, I, I was like, thank God he built that. <laughs> Thank God he built that. Build. You think it's bad? I think it's not good if you're winning as hard. The thing is, I I, the there's, there's good things and bad things about it, in my yeah. opinion. <clears throat> I'll just say it here. I think if they had the static into Rage Blade Nashers, I think he would have gotten three items really fast mm -hmm. and to instantly hit Baron. Yeah, you think he would never come back? I don't think they, they would have. I think they would just win. I think the counter argument would be that. The scaling build is fine because he's winning lane anyways. Yeah. Like they have three pushing lanes this game, right? With Jace, top as well. And well, they also have invade prior. It, I just, it just made me feel a lot more comfortable. Comfortable. Because even if my tank gets engaged on, yeah. he's not strong. He's not strong in the front to back. He's just like a poking Kaiso. Yeah. I felt like you guys wouldn't make it to the point where you're outscaled because <clears throat> they're already poking you guys from full screen away, right? I think yeah. they messed up. The, what was it the third dragon fight? Yeah, also one? the second one. You got two kills. Yep. Double kill, shut down, listen. It was like the it was a third or it was, dragon it was a third dragon fight. fight. My teammates like, cannot dodge their I W for their life. Yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, don't want to say just dodge W, but I really wanted to say I mean, if you just dodge, dodge one, W. If you dodge one, you escape for the 20 seconds, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. And I just kind of like three or four in a row. I was like, wow. Kaisa like, no like, W Which direction he's in? Yes. And we saw which direction he's in, but my teammates kept hitting, kept hitting, get, kept getting hit. I was like, please, <laughs> please, his champion is only W. It's kind of hard if you are trying to contest on their vision, yes, right? Yes, if, if they have like the zone, you, it's hard. Yeah, I, I feel like they in the series didn't respect you guys having zone. Yeah, zone I is very like important. Every game they're trying to fight against Rail with no vision, and then Rail presses flash WR and they die. Yeah. And then next fight, yeah. let's fucking do it again. And they yeah. die, die again. And, I was and like, they kind of ran it down at Baron as well. Like towards in, the end of the game. In the second, in the first game, the Kaiser game, they could have just given out Dragon, the third Dragon, I think it was, and then take Herald, take Top Tower, use Herald Mid Tower, and I'm like, just give the Dragon. Was the fourth Dragon the one we got poked out, and then we just yeah, left the oh, okay. fourth one was the one you got poked down and had to give. <clears throat> but you guys got second Dragon in that game because of you got yeah. double kill or yeah, the Herald. Yeah, me and Core got or yeah. Core got a really good game. So yeah. I just pressed my spells. Yeah, I mean, you well, he just pressed his spells too. But I feel yeah, like I he was in the spot. if the game is in a one dragon, one dragon state, giving one dragon is really fine. Yeah. I also think the top play they made, where Xin Zhao just f went on the what's his and name? Also the grief, yeah. Yeah, it was bad, but like, I was like, nice, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I actually thought it was a good play by them to like expect you guys to go top side because you guys can't fight the dragon if they're playing well. So the thing is, we saw the Nautilus. Yeah. I think it was a bit mis miscommunication mm -hmm. with top and jungle. I think Renekton really wanted to stall time and was like, I'm going to look here, we can look here and then leave immediately. Yeah. But then Ninja was like, I'm going in! <laughs> so it was a bit of miscommunication. I just see Umpty run into their target going, give me, give me, give me. And then um, I, Umpty thought it was, I don't know who thought it was better because I was like, thank God that happened, I can breathe. Do you think you guys should be a dabble bot in this game? <clears throat> um, no, I think I just got hooked. Normally it should be Rail getting hooked and we should trade HP, but... Yeah, EQs and then you just... Yeah, and then I just got hooked right behind them. Yeah, I remember that was a good hook by him. Yeah, it was a good hook by him. Normally, Normally it shouldn't be a dive, but then socks. Yeah. And then nice. they played it de decently well mm. after the hook. And then game two and three just felt like <clears throat> inevitable stumps. Yeah. It felt like in game three, this X0 gank, it felt like, I was talking to Dad about it, I thought he was maybe feeling pressured because in game two, you guys gank bought level three and it kind of like ruined the whole lane for them. Yeah. And then he was trying to <clears throat> do the same back. And just yeah. I think it's because they messed up level t one. They did Sarakan. not get the best HP advantage. Yeah, you take W and you don't kill yeah. someone. Like, even if you gank Zeri Lulu, it's not easy. Yeah. Especially against Ghost. If I had Cleanse, I can see it working slightly. But yeah. as soon as you wrap behind him, I'm like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then you guys still have the way control afterwards. Yeah. You dive them. And next he goes for like a top dive or like a Krog invade. Core covers it. And Raptors, then I think. No, it was, no, it was, oh no, Krugs, yeah, he was covering yeah. top dive, yeah. I'm trying to dive and then it was like, nothing was happening, I'm like, wow, the whole game is already over. Yeah. Yeah, the game is four minutes of the game. Yeah. First knockdown, so it was wasted too, because me and Umpty 2v2 yeah, them. Yeah. It was just like, they just, threw, they just don't have a jungler for first yeah, I remember eight, nine minutes of the game, it's like, wow, this they is threw, crazy. They used a charm and their knockdown queue and missed, and I was like, wait, aren't I just gonna die now? And then they died, and I was like, not so wasted, two minute cooldown. GG. Yeah, and flashed. Like, yeah, and like, who can you kill? Because top end got a solo kill on Kassante, so you can only go mid. 
and only there the whole game to cover you. After that, you guys probably blew around that. You covered the only place they had the whole game. Yeah, I want to do talk about the series you had two days ago though against FlyQuest. Mm -hmm. Harder questions, I guess, because you did lose the series. What do you think went wrong against FlyQuest? One fun fact that you've probably heard, <clears throat> and it's weird that it happened in a TL game, was <clears throat> that's the most kills that's ever been in any LCS series ever. I did hear that. Yeah, it was 205. Fist fight every game. The previous What's the next close? The 161. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, what was the difference again? 45 kills more than we've ever had in a bad, playoff please. series before. Well, but it's crazy because like halfway through the split, you guys had the lowest combined kill per minute of like any team in the LCS or the LEC. How did how did that happen? One and then second one would be kind of like what went wrong in the series. I think uh, you can go first. I think both sides are not willing to back down because <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, yeah, like we know they're not gonna back down. So we're like, okay, we're gonna match that aggression. Yeah. And we're not gonna back down if you don't back down. It's just like yeah. comes fist fighting at that point. Yeah. And the games were very messy. Where every at every point. We were someone with fighting, <clears throat> so we would fight mid, bot, top, like everywhere. It was just like there was a lot of people were skipping a lot of steps, like <laughs> on our side and on their side. Like mm. we'd have a fight top lane, and like it'd be me or Yon or whoever would troll by walking up the river and just get caught. And it's like so it was fight top, fight mid, fight in the river, and was, that was just like the entire series. Like I remember, it was game one, they're making a play top lane, and then we're auto automatically making a play mid lane. It was just like. So many fights happening over the map. And the other weird thing about that series is it felt <clears> like every time, I think Nuke Duck ended up saying this, every time a team won a fight, they'd almost be guaranteed to lose the next fight somehow. And was that just like, I, I, it could just be random luck because that's how you end up with a 205 uh -huh. kill series. And it is often you win a fight, then you overstay for something like a dragon or a tower, and you lose tempo, and they have better condition next fight because they have more vision or more setup. Yeah. They have more. They have a one extra turn because we yeah. use our turn to mm. win and take something. Take something. Yeah. yeah, it's a very common thing. It's that people don't understand. You have to give something. Even if they win a team fight, you have to give something somewhere. Mm -hmm. I was walking into our jungle. Yeah. <laughs> you walk. Oh, <laughs> oh, real. <laughs> They're oh, here. What? Exactly. Wait, we won the fight and then we went straight top. Yeah, you. Oh. You win a fight, take Drake. You base, go on top of the jungle. Wait, they're all here. Rel's here. Ah oh, shit. Rel goes. <laughs> yeah, and then I die. They played Rel. Or any champion. You, you guys played real today, every game. <clears throat> now I was going to ask you about the uh, Flyquest Baldwin. Sorry? Flyquest Baldwin. Yeah. I think they're a lot more aggressive you. than Dignitas's bot lane. I think they make a lot of mistakes, mm. but their aggression is there. Oh, the pike. The pike? I don't know if it was the level one. Do you think you had something to do with level one death? I think probably a that level, game you had a Doran's Blade support. Doran's Blade into And then you instant. got first blood. Yeah. I think that's like, and in my head, it's already over. It, yeah. The support, like, the support got the item too. Yeah, that's what I'm he saying. Got the support that, item yeah. is like, like, if you can play Ash and buy a Doran's Blade and then get first blood level one before wave even comes, it's like, oh my god, this is so free. Yeah, I was like, it's over. Ash got the kill. <laughs> if, anyone else, if anyone else got the kill, I'm like, nice, we got a small advantage. Yeah. But I was going to ask, um, that series you guys played every single game, Mars was close to, that's one game, I think, but Senna. He put Senna, I think. Yeah. And yeah, it seemed like you guys were pretty comfortable in these matchups. Yeah. So. We haven't shown that we played Varus at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just prioritize Callista over mm -hmm. everything, and then we try to handshake any other matchup. Mm -hmm. But this time we were like, no, nah, fuck that shit. We're matching it. <laughs> if they're not banning it, we're playing it. Yeah. If, yeah, it was basically just that. I mean, you kind of have to either match or lose something in draft, right? If you can't mm -hmm. play certain matchups. And we were like confident. We were like, yeah, I mean, we play both sides. Mm -hmm. We are very confident. If they're confident, we can just see. How the. This was actually the origin of your <clears throat> trash talk tweet after this series. Because at one point, it did feel like in game two, with the all chat, they did that five man dive bottom lane yeah. on you. They killed you, but then they got aced. Did you actually feel, and this is not a meme <laughs> question, Warfare? did you feel like the chat was, um, was helping? I mean, some of my friends I talked with joke about a global taunt, but that was yeah. like probably the only time in the series where I actually felt like I just had a, a global shen taunt on me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe there's five people bought, no bot wave, <laughs> just like <laughs> they're all there. At that point, you know? <laughs> they were just there, like just ready to kill me. I was like, "What? <laughs> you guys get 300 gold out of this at best, and yeah. they got wiped after." I was so confused. Yeah. What game was that? That was game two. Game two. Game two. I think. Game, game two. I actually think that was just like a rhythm for them. I think they actually just wanted to make a really hard play, but then Ziggs really was like wave play. clears. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think that's just how they want to play, like fast into one side really hard. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't believe it when I saw five people all around my turret. Because they were faster than us. Yeah. But it just took longer because Kasante TP'd in like... Yeah, yeah. nice champ. I, <laughs> nice champ. I know it's only been two days and you had a series today as well, but APA, did you have any takeaways after that series for like things you would want to do differently next time? Um, I think my wards in the first two games were pretty bad. Like we had very low information on Inspired. Like the first game, I think I just kept warding like the ramp instead of warding Raptors. So I think I was trolling by doing that a lot because generally the, the first two games we had like no clue where Inspired was until we showed up somewhere and got through in a gold. Mm. Um, that's like, to me, the biggest takeaway I had, honestly. We actually didn't really lane mid lane, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I did 6CS, Chenzo did 6CS, I'd go ball lane, he'd go top lane. Right. And then, some, yeah. Uh, I didn't learn like too much from like Jensen, to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I learned just maybe I should probably ward more inspired camps. <laughs> right. Just better tracking of the jungle to kind of open and then, up the map for everyone else. I was an intern side lane that series, so I talked about that with Impact, and I looked at it over myself, mm -hmm. so I'll change some things about that as well. Awesome. Next week, you guys play 100 Thieves. <coughs> what day do we play? You play Friday. Friday. Four days yeah. from now, I think. Yeah. Friday, Saturday is where LCS is yeah. next week. Uh, <clears throat> they did beat you twice in the regular season. We were looking back at it. Yeah. Such a different world. Game one, the it was the Riven Parma <laughs> Seraphine game, and then game two was really close as well. And also, Jan, I think when you were on pros with uh, Ayla, you were just saying frauds like the whole time. Oh, it was just a joke. Because everyone in the community. <laughs> What's it do? Because I was here last week with some other people and they were saying frauds, <laughs> not a joke. Well, I don't. It's weird because they're not that great at the early game phase. Yeah. But I think they actually have very like clutch moments. Mm -hmm. So that's very good for them. But if they can't fix their early game, like for example, the C9 game, yeah. Yeah. if they, they get rolled out over. of the water again, then. Yeah. It's hard to find clutch moments, especially in their high pressure like playoff series. Yeah. I don't know if that's what they I think especially the I feel Lulu game, it shows that they like experience. It's like a matchup that's been played for like three years now. You could watch Gen GT1 play it like two weeks ago. As you can get like an actual like what do you call it? This is how you play a matchup exactly. You can watch the whole other game and I watch them play and I'm like face bombing, watching them play. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a very for... easy matchup. To play if you have watched someone good play before. Screaming you guys last year, I know both sides have like ma almost mastered that matchup. Like, yeah. we know like at almost every minute what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that 100 Thieves is lacking like that experience. Moment yeah, I was watching the them play level one, level two, and they were like, this is gonna be a stump. Level one, one is the most important. One side has played it before <laughs> and one side hasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, all level one, you can tell by spacing and by like how they move, trade together, it, what's gonna happen. And then it happened, you know, the monster gap in the bottom lane. Because this is a matchup where you can't. Lose gracefully. Yeah. Is you yeah. have to take every small advantage. Yeah. And then if one small thing happens, then that instantly changes. Mm. I like how you're not giving any details as well. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Shouldn't. I know because no, you're gonna I mean, be playing them next week. I mean, seeing I played was not me already on stage, you know. Yeah. So like, I can't. There's something to say, right? It's just. Yeah. I mean, it's just very like obvious. Yeah. That small details matter a lot in that mm. matchup. Yeah. Like, it's pretty common opinion that hard thieves ball in are not that important to their their games compared to the top side. Fly is kind of similar, I think, most people would say. I think that's pretty on point, but I actually think their FlyQuest's bot lane look for their advantages. But I think in our series, maybe it's because of level one again. Yeah. But they like lost that. We put so many resources in the bot lane level one. Yeah, but they were like very scary. <laughs> I e flashed forward game one. Yeah, that's why I said level I know, one. That was mega worth it. Yeah, yeah I know, their, I know. their bot lane was like, it was like kind of over. I, honestly, I could have like, Choke them out level one harder. Yeah, I, I took like the I took like the safer right route. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was just gonna be a three v three. I'm playing the scaling side. I was like, yeah, it's fine. I'll take the. But then after the game, I'm like, fuck. I I'm thought, just gonna. Yeah, I thought watching that moment that it would be really over for Callista losing both his sums and a chunk level one. Yeah. But then he actually just farmed for free until he died at level five. But that was his own fault dying yeah, there. Yeah. So what I said was it was the same thing would have happened yeah. if I was aggressive level one. But mm -hmm. thankfully they made a mistake. Yeah. So it ended up happening anyways. Yeah, Alcon was the same. Yeah, but. I mistake. thought after that game, I was like, wow, I should just smash them bot lane. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. yeah, I should have done that. That's what I, I got out of it. I got a question for you about Ayla, since you played with him for like two years. And if you don't want to say this because it, like you don't want to trash talk or something, what is the laning phase versus the rest of the game for Ayla? Because I've always seen him. He's actually quite good in team fights and like likes to be in control of the game. But his laning to me has never been like one of his strengths. He's a very adaptable player, I will say. Okay. If you want to play very hard laning phase, then he'll focus on that. 
Okay. I think it depends on what his focus is. Mm -hmm. If he wants to be like a team player at that moment, then he'll like, oh, let's push this, and then I'm going to go through mid, blah, blah, blah. It's like just his focus okay. of what he wants to do. So I know he can be a good lane player because we were we try to be very good lane players after like our first year. Right. Your second year in Academy. Yeah. Okay. So it's just like what he wants to focus on for the most part. Sweet. Fair enough. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit unless you guys want to keep talking about playoffs because there's only four teams left. That's true. And we had we had so much parity in the league this year. I was wondering to power rank the teams that are eliminated. Does that make sense? Because I saw some chatter on X, people like, ah, I wish Shopify would have made playoffs because Dignitas got swept out today. Please don't, don't call it that, please. Huh? Just call it Twitter, please. Twitter? Yeah, come on. X. Okay. Dude, I'm... It's, it's we been, can't be calling it that. It's been long enough that I'm no. starting to call it X. Nope, nope. Not allowed. Okay. If you say X, I'm like, what? what? Yeah, exactly, okay. right? Yeah. I'll, I'll it's, like, so... it's still Twitter for me as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyways. You still send I, tweets. I, I haven't updated my app yet, by the way. Really? Still <laughs> Wait, do you still have the Twitter icon? Yeah. Mine, like, auto-updated. I, 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 I have the X icon now. Yeah. Let me see what do I have. It's impressive. Yeah, I have X as well. You block Twitter. Dude. Wait, can you do and that? It still works. I thought at some point it will auto update. You got an iPhone? Yeah, I got an iPhone. Does it at some point auto update? I feel like sometimes it makes it too somehow. old. The app. Yeah. And so the app says update now, but I'm like, you're like, no, please. no, I, I, I like, no, no. What I do is I just oh, swipe up, <laughs> yeah. and then sweet, or go on Twitter again. <laughs> I'm not updating it. Nice. Uh, okay. Anyway, anyway. The power ranking because I think Immortals was actually like pretty good in a lot of ways, but they ended up having even direction. Even Shopify, honestly. Is, like yeah, would, would your power ranking of the, so, the bottom four switch at all now that they're all eliminated? So I, I, You want to go first me? You, you go first. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I think energy just crashed and burned, to be completely honest, mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. Like, that obviously had, like, the super bad, super weak. Zero four? Zero four. Was it, yeah, zero four. Zero four, just yeah. Like, yeah. The, four. the worst out possible outcome possible. Stomped as well in last game. Into yeah. six seed, getting does. stomped from yeah. the tiebreaker. And then, honestly, even in their... Playoff series, what I saw, like they should have been like three one. Or, like, yeah, I mean it was the Baron steal in game four that kept yeah. them alive. Yeah, Hunties played really poorly in game four. Mm -hmm. The whole get Baron, then they open mids, go bottom. You remember this sequence? What happened in game one? It was a banger, right? Or yeah, that was the FBI five hundred stack game, wasn't it? Oh god, it yeah, FBI, FBI got five hundred stacks on Smolder. FBI had a game with like twenty kills, five hundred stacks on Smolder. Yeah, it's crazy that one team didn't win at forty minutes. How did it go to fifty minutes? Don't worry about it, bro. Yeah, okay. it was fine. They <laughs> I'm gonna rewatch watch it. I'm gonna rewatch it now. Now that I'm not yeah. focused on them, it's yeah. gonna be a long yeah. one. How does Smolder get that many stacks? Uh, energy How just crashed and burned at the that end. That's the record. And... Time. Sorry. So you're fine. My bad. <laughs> yeah, shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just feel like they're crashing burned so hard at the end. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe they're just like team infighting or something. Mm -hmm. I'm sure something was up within like the team because that's like normally not what happens yeah. for what should be like a, at least a top four team. Um, yeah, Palafox mentioned that he just like didn't, he, he had a, like a, almost a self-reflective tweet. He's like, I just need to figure out why I'm playing so bad because mm -hmm. he, he really felt, I think the most compared to what his form was last yeah, year to sure. the end of the split. Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, I think Immortals was solid, honestly. They were actually Still, like, not, like, on FlyQuest level, for sure, or, like, C9 level, but they felt harder to face in the regular season match last week mm -hmm. than Dig today, mm -hmm. to be completely honest. So why did they lose so much? <coughs> I um, think a lot of the games... Last place, right? I think a lot of the yeah. games they actually threw. Like, even the 100 Thieves games, that was, like, their... Like, the qualification match for the playoffs, right? Yeah. I think they were up, like, what, 8K gold? Yeah, I remember tactical. Was that the Siri, Siri game? That was the Siri, the Siri was tactical. tactical. Yeah. It was so, like, 7-1, seven, seven, like, 6-1, yeah, something was, like I that. I think they're in a really winning spot most of the time, but they just can't close it out. Is that the tactical factor? Like, a really strong player in lane and really strong, like... He has a lot of X factor, right? He can play a lot of champs. He can be really tough sometimes, but then he does that. Yeah, it's it's I know that game. Look for Immortals at all the games they were winning with the red gold lines. Sorry for the camera, but they had like four games where they had pretty big leads at 20 yeah. minutes and they still lost. Yeah, I uh, mean, like that can be a team issue. It could also be small sample size. For that it's game, it was probably the Zarya should have played a little bit safer and they probably would have just won normally. Yeah. But I'm not sure about the other games. You I think in, in the past, sorry to cut off, that he sometimes feels pressure to carry 1v9 or no one will carry. That was last year. Do you think that's still yeah. uh, common? I think their soul laners are pretty good. Yeah. At laning phase especially. Yeah. So mm -hmm. and I think their bot lane is like a solid bot lane. And then their jungler is like standard just helping the best they can. I just think they failed at the end goal part. I think they're a very solid team, especially in scrims, with unique ideas. 
It just sucks they couldn't close out the games. Yeah, I thought they had a really creative draft with the the six ball in and the Jace top. I feel like they didn't play around Castle enough this split. That was the only game he played a hard carry, mm -hmm. I think. That was the I only Jace game he played the whole split. I think Castle is one of the very best players in the league. Yeah. Mm. If they, I actually think he's like maybe like top. It's not that uncommon of an opinion, actually. Yeah, I think he's like at least top five in like individual skill. Of all players or top winners? I think all players, maybe. Like top, okay. I would give him like top That's, five. Top, it's pretty big. At least, at least top. Top 10, at So least. what makes you think they didn't play around him more <clears throat> as a player? Because they didn't use him on any carries almost the entire split. It felt like, do you think the Jace game might have been his only hard carry game? You can check stats on it. Yeah, well, probably. I mean, the Jace game I remember really he was pushed. on like Aatrox a lot as well. Aatrox is like a semi. It's like, a yeah, scaling, it's like you can I, carry, I you can get lucky. I think champion, like really. Fiora, Jace, mm -hmm. you know, are carries, and then Nar and Aatrox are like in-betweeners yeah. where Udyr and Xander are tanks. They obviously I didn't win much, fair... but two other wins were Aatrox, one was on Udyr and one was on Jace because the only one... I mean, obviously the meta isn't Fiora and Camille, I know that, but... I think individually he could get his own leads, but they weren't using it enough. Is how I see it. Yeah, I think in this meta with like champs like Jace and TF being viable, I feel like they didn't play that at all. Yeah, he had like a Zach game in there. They were a little all over the place with <laughs> what they were playing. Zach was OP was right? like at some point. Yeah, 0.75. But there were fights in that game, I remember, <laughs> where he actually almost turned the tide. I actually remember that game where he was flying in on like 0 06 Zach and like chunking everybody out. It almost sounds like we have a more, like my gut was I, Immortals was actually way better than last place, but then you have to put somebody last place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who that was because I think Big had like good early games in a lot of situations. They, I think, really sucked today after. Basically, after they lost the dragon fights in the first game, I think they just Collab they were so they just collapsed, like yeah. they mentally collapsed in that. And then energy, obviously, if we look at the most recent form, they were pretty bad. But I don't want to say they were like the worst team in the league. So who is the worst team? Then? It's hard to yeah. say. Like every team is pretty equal. Like at so the start, all dull trash. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, they're all fifth. Much. So, all, so me and Spawn, my head coach, we yeah, yeah. at the start of the season, we're like, well, every team skill level is pretty even. I no, thought there's no terrible players. Yeah, there's no terrible team. I agree with that. I think there's a lot of the teams actually have like different play styles and mm -hmm. different ways they want to win the game. I can like give an example like IMT has a really strong identity and like strong laner solo laners. And I think like Shopify had like not as strong solo laners but had a really good, good early team. game into B Void played pretty well in the mid to late. Game. <laughs> and then there's what Dig had like one idea of like play really hard through bot lane, then like play mm -hmm. hyperscaling to yeah. keep going. And then Dig or who next energy is like I don't know how to explain it. It's like they're a very solid team, but it's just crashed and burned. Well. So who is the worst? The worst. The IMT. worst right now would probably be NRG. Yeah, right now it's probably form. You think if NRG plays IMT, given both teams kept playing, like they did a battle, they actually win? The I think, I think NRG win. would lose at their current form. I think they showed very poor performances in okay. the past. Like, I mean, that might be true. So in eighth, we have NRG. Who's seventh? Shopify? IMT? I think Shopify is pretty good. I think they just... Honestly, if they just If people can carry them, not seventh, but if people gets shut down seventh, I feel like you want to put Dig seventh. Smells like it right now. That's what it sounds like. I think I think I if think... you put Dig and Shopify together, I think <coughs> Shopify would probably win. Why? Because better AD. I think I think, I think both win. sides play through ball lane heavily, but I think B Boy is just a solid player overall. Yeah. I would give him my All Pro first as AD carry. Yeah. I think he's actually going to get that because I, yeah. I put him All Pro first for me. Yeah. I have no idea yeah. yet. Yeah. But I've every, talked to enough people that have yeah. put him first. Every bot laner was very like. Even, but he played the best in mid game, I would say. Yeah. In early game, everyone was like complete like inconsistency. Yeah, I know he can't get MVP because other people play better, yeah. but he's the definition of MVP in my opinion. Not actually the MVP of the league, but most valuable player to his to team, team yeah. by far, right? I think it's like they he doesn't carry them and then no he actually does. carried. Yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. Whereas if this team had a different player, they would just not function right, at all, right? I agree. So. Okay, so we just we just. Kick the two bottom teams out of playoffs and replace them with the seventh and eighth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that like, makes actually, sense, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recency I mean, bias, not a big deal here. Bottom two teams had really good like showings, though. <clears throat> they did, yeah, but agree. they just threw. They weren't they like just couldn't close the game. Both of them. Yeah, they weren't free wins this year. I was really low key hoping that Immortals didn't throw some of those games down the stretch, so that like the last place team would have like five or six wins. It would have actually been the craziest last week if Immortals didn't like yeah. fail to convert so many of those. Maybe games. even we could have been out of playoffs if that happened. There was a chance. It would have been spicy. Yeah, it would be really spicy. Chance we end like seventh. Yeah. Off like a tiebreaker game. Yeah. And that would have been tough. All right. Whoever plays better on the day. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys have a have a break, and we're gonna wrap this up. But the final thing is, I want to give you a chance, if you want, to gain a mental advantage <laughs> for next week because okay. Hundred yeah, Thieves, Hundred Thieves isn't on this platform. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna scale. I'm gonna use this as a scaling moment. Sven. 
you're coming back to AD Carry next year or next split or what? You're looking? We'll see. Maybe if you do, I'll take your job. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, one time I was memeing, like, Dodo, please don't replace me with Zven. Don't worry. Dodo have me on Dono Wall. Oh, or Dodo Wall, we can call it. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Do you Continue. think you're better at AD Carry or support? Mm, I think it depends. I th it's kind of off topic, but I think, like, sometimes when I'm in mid game as an ADC, I know exactly what's going on in the game. I know exactly where I want everyone to be and what to do. I can, I can, I can shot call for my team as AD Carry. But as support, I felt like in mid game sometimes I didn't know where I should be at this moment. It was very, it was very easy when we played comps that are on the AD Carry because I know that kind of mindset. But then I felt lost and I felt like it was frustrating because I could do so much more. And I'll watch a review, I'm like, oh, fuck, I could have been top here, I could have been bought here, diving this guy, doing this and blah, blah, blah. I was thinking it was kind of hard to play with certain At that point, players. it's like a learning process, though, right? Because it was just checking yeah. your support. There's like the first split and our two splits were used learning champions. Sure, knowledge isn't that hard to play, right? But yeah. like, and the chapters... difference between a good engaged player and a bad engaged player is huge. Yeah, I mean, like. So we have to learn all the champions, mechanics, and stuff. And then I can learn the role afterwards. And then we had the whole, you know, <clears throat> MNS and I didn't have that best synergy. Personal issues aside, he wants to fist fight mid every single game. You know this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he plays every lane matchup to win, no matter what. He's a very good player, though. Yeah, he's... I would give him first. There was a point I mean. in time where he played, and I thought to myself in scrims, this guy might be the best player I ever played with. It hadn't, yeah, I played with XPK, I played with Perks, I played with Prime, Mitty, so I all these people, and I was like, I never thought this before. And then at Worlds, I thought, wow, this guy is so... You know, I wanted to... <laughs> so yeah, bad. never mind. Yeah. But then... Hit or miss player. For the actual question you asked, I think it's just different things. I think nowadays AD carries a lot more about being smart than about being skilled. I think a lot of matchups bot are like not scripted, but they're playing the same way it's every like the game. Same thing if you know what to do, you're playing around the bush, you're playing with sweeper this matchup, blah blah blah. It's more mm, more usually be smart and experienced than to be there's not that many matchups besides like, you know, a Phil versus Bushinami. We really space. It's all about mechanics, right? It's like that first wave, everything. Now you can tell if you're playing as a Phyllis player who is a 17 year old Korean guy <laughs> from Academy who plays 16 hours a day, right? You yeah. can tell the difference between pays on the failures and like, sorry, Meech, but you do a Meech, right? It's night and day. Yeah. So those matchups, it matters, but like, I don't think I have bad mechanics. It's like a age, like a narrative, right? Look at Ruler, Death, Faker. We, we thought you were really good on support. Really? You we were uh, like, this guy's mechanically so good on support. We're like, 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 damn. Genuinely playing it against your. Your Melio last year, because we played a lot of Nico comps, right? Yeah, no, I, was I, was year, this. I just could never play Nico versus you, because anytime I would try to fly in, you'd cue me or you'd like ulti Berserker. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, this is the only support that's doing this in the entire league. Yeah, I think in China, it's getting a lot of slander for being <clears throat> unskilled, but there's like a small thing you can do on them. But I mean, I don't know. Core is a really good enchanter, in my opinion. Yeah, I actually... Like, he will, he will. <clears throat> so, for me, that last game, he only missed up like once. Yeah, no ulti? I, yeah, because yeah. he it was nocturnal. But I was like, yeah. I'm gonna go in. I trust you to Rakanol. Yeah, I got a lot. Yeah, so I know he's gonna do it for me because he's mechanically good mm -hmm. and he knows what the champion is. But I think like almost every LCS support would not ult the Rakan if yeah. he flash ult to me. Yeah, I agree. So like that's the difference between like I was often good at Core J's on range champs, not because he's bad, but because he's much better at the melee champs. Mm -hmm. When I watch Core J play Relis Nautilus <coughs> or a lot of side around, right? He's very confident. Even in the Nautilus game, he was, you know, eager on the, the Rel jungle, hooking him out of his W, making fun of him, right? <laughs> yeah, we were um, like emoting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're like, yeah. what is this? You're making him stressed out. And then when Rel plays Rel, he does the same thing with the Qs. He does the interrupts perfectly. He just seems very comfortable in those games. And when he can roam, he can play side lane, he's much better. He's more enabled, I guess. Yeah. It's like his same strong suit. Strong suit. Same as Wolken, but he's actually bad, those champs, you know, at all. Like, Wolken's a great Yumi player. <laughs> <laughs> Like, a great counter player, Yumi too. Is a, Yumi is a very skill extensive champion. Like, you can tell a like, good Yumi player. The old Yumi was better. The old Yumi, yes. No, no, no cope. Like, so, like, so, so, so this so is why like, Yumi's actually feel the bad Yumi. It's supposed to be easy, but it's like, really hard. The ball is like, Ree. Yes, yeah, the Yumi is like, actually very good. Well, you play six, bro. Don't you, talk. Yumi is hard. <laughs> you from like, max range. Oh my god. <laughs> like, you, we, we both know how. Do you want some of this? Yumi is hard. So, I actually agree. Having you talk. Kitong is the good. Kitong is so good at Yumi, but you get any other Yumi. Like... It's like people that actually block skill shots and do auto attack in lane. Now then... Yumi has been reduced to like a yeah. four range champ, but you only press Q. And it's like so disgusting. It's like useless. But... Sure, the remake made Yumi worse. Yeah, pre pre rework Yumi. Like was someone actually who really blocks hard. a Soy bubble or blocks a decent, decent Q and jumps back in. Actually, it doesn't matter, right? Take your HP like when it matters. Yeah. Like, it's but actually... for the question, at this point, sure. I'm like, I think there's a stigma around old people. <laughs> In esports, it's true. Mm. So it's like, <clears throat> if teams think I can't play ADC, 
despite hitting 1k in Korea and 1k in, in the US, more actually playing ADC, then I can't convince them, you know. So um, at that point, I'll take anything I can get yeah. just to I th- play. I think if you look for both, it'd be very good. I thought your support was really good compared to other people's. Nice, bro. Yeah. I appreciate I'm that. not having high expectations for your AD carry. This is where the scaling comes in. I mean, you never play against me as AD carry, so... Okay, so I you... played against you once in scrims. Once. This, really? this is the, this the, way you, this the way you cook. Oh, Ryan. Yeah, was, I, was I playing with Academy then, at that point? Uh, I think it was when... Uh... That, was, that was in Malice, right? Yes. Malice Isles. It was, Isles. Yes. It was only one scrim. Academy? Huh? When were you? That was in 2022. It had a... The, the C9, very start the of the C9 Korean, Korean team happened very late, so I had no option to go. So I said I'll just play Academy for a split. Then... Apparently, it's only at one import slot in Academy, so I was just jobless. And then I was promised at least one scrim a week with Academy against LCS. I guess I scrimmed once against you guys. Yeah, it was were you in LCS, LCS at that point? Or no, we were Academy. Were you were Academy. I was, like, I was yeah, very yeah. bad. But I was like, he's just farming, yes! <laughs> so I was in that, I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> you were just farming, I was like, nice, you're bouncing waves. I don't remember what I was playing, but... Yeah, it was a very long time, I was like... That was a he's... dark time in Academy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I was, you know, promised by LCS, and then suddenly this LCK, like LC, C9 Academy, I mean, C9, uh, C9 Korean team happened with, you know, Berserker, I uh, win some Summit. In, uh, Summit, yeah. And then I was just not playing. It was kind of depressing. I mean, but, uh, I, I've been super interested in this, but you were cooking to gain mental advantage at the start of this. Yeah. I Honestly, without Zven, the league is kind of boring as well. Like, scrims are not as fun. You like, know, someone told me about, you know, our handshake moment last year, and I actually forgot about it. You're, yeah, I remember. I, don't remember yeah. I was like, I didn't even care about it at this yeah, point. I was like, I thought in the moment I was really f- angry about it. I was like, I felt like what you did was BM in the moment. Yeah. But looking back at it, I was like, ah, he was just back up his teammate, yeah. which I was doing as well, right? Yeah, I was like, I didn't care. I like before that, I liked you as a player, and was like, and then you didn't in the moment. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how dare you? And now, like, we're, now we're back. Yeah, I mean, like, it's even, how it is, right? Like even after that happened, I was like, eh, I don't really care. I was like, I respect him as a player, and like, yeah, yeah. Like, that felt the same way. Like, Jad mentioned to me just before, the, and I was like, I actually forgot about this completely until yeah. someone mentioned it to, to me, right? How do you feel about this? Because... The handshake or...? No, no, part? no. You're yapping in all chat, and then you lose to FlyQuest, and Jensen... You saw this, right? I don't think Did I you see the tweet? He called you bad afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did he? Okay. Basically, he talked a lot of shit after they won. That, uh, can a gold player get carried by Team Liquid? <laughs> oh! He quote retweeted that and said, guess not. Um, Basically, he talked shit about you as a player, called you bad, blah, 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 after you lost. Do you feel like it's taken too far? No. Why not? I mean, you won. Like, I, I have I, always had the opinion that bannering is cringe if you do it after you win only. He was typing mm. in the series. Him, Bupo, and Inspired were all typing to me in the series. Yeah. I was 1v3 in. Bro, what the fuck? You gotta back him up here a little bit. I, learned, I was 1v3 I in the, the entire past. series. I, so I don't know if you know. If I'm, if I'm you wanted a handshake after the game, that's why. No, no, no. So what I've learned is after... If I think they're gonna type, I block their entire team. Yeah, I at feel the start that. of the game. Like every game, like C9, instant block after the, as soon as the game That's starts. Only Dota, only Dota, doing types and yeah, but just in, case. just in case. <laughs> like I've done it. Like even today. Isn't that been insecure, bro? No, I just don't want to see anything. Yeah, like, I want to focus Japanese on the game. Yeah. Like after uh, after that C9 it. game, I was like, wow, I actually kind of lost a little bit of focus. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, I was like, mm. I learned that, and I'm always gonna block if I think they're gonna type. More than like, insecure is like. I want to focus on the game, mostly. But then I didn't block them in the FlyQuest game. I was like, <laughs> I wasn't expecting them to type. And then after the first game, I blocked they, them all. They have three Europeans, so. You know when I, so to talk about what you said. Yeah. When I learned that I lose focus when people type to me was when I was in Academy last year mm-hmm. against Dplex. And <laughs> this, was, this was spring. The same culprit. This was spring Another in European. Academy. <laughs> and he was just permanently all chatting to me. and. At the time, I think he was just a lot better than me. He was just completely gapping me in mid lane, just like typing, <laughs> just shit talking to me the entire like playoff yeah. series, and it got so much in my head. So you got inspired by Dplex. I was it's genuinely it's inspired it's by Dplex out there, and I don't know. I just realized how much it affected me. So I realized even if I'm not playing that well in mm. a series, if I'm typing to you know Bufo, Inspired Jensen, Masu, like whoever it is, like Quid for next series, even if it's like. Just like a one percent difference to like yeah. make them lose focus. I think it's good. And then I've like had talks with Yon and Core and everyone on our team. They don't really care. Uh, I don't think it affects them. Do you mute him as well? I muted him at the start of the season. Then he started 
to no, no, him. Him. Yeah, I, I needed him at the start of the season, during his scrims, because I didn't want to see it. Well, then I flamed him because there was a point in time where I was actually timing timestamps. So then I unblocked him. Maybe they're timing summoners? And then he stopped Only doing it, and I was like, this is hmm? And then I stopped doing it, so like, now you can mute me, it's fine. I don't have anything useful. <laughs> I was like, as soon as I unblocked him, he stopped doing the timers, I was like, god damn it. But <laughs> I think I genuinely can make people lose focus and get in their heads just, just like a Do little bit. focus? No. Are you sure about that? I promise. Okay, okay. So you're saying, like, <clears throat> when FlyQuest, five minutes you bought, <laughs> the first thing that comes in your head isn't, I'm going to type something now. What should I type? No. Instead of thinking, first thing I okay, I should go from base to top here. Shit, I should search five people bought. And then? <laughs> and then? Oh, then after the fight, the key, I typed. The keyboard? You know, when, <laughs> when I take the right screen, we hit the... What are you guys doing, boss? You guys are noobs. You guys are trash. I forget what I typed. I typed so much that series. <laughs> but um, so is it worth that it slows you down a little bit? Well, I'm also not the person in our team that like <coughs> says where to go. Like, yeah, yeah core I mean, is the main shot caller. He'll go. Yeah, we're gonna play mid bot here. Not me, but just like the team in whole. Like, core will say, hey, we're gonna play mid bot here. You know, we just got Baron, and then like I'll talk with Impact like all the time. I'll go Impact. Yeah, it was like yeah. Impact. I can beat. These two people in side lane, like I can beat whoever, I can go bot, I can go yeah, top. Yeah. And, then, and so. so what happens when they meet you and then you're just typing to the void? That that's a win. That's a win. <laughs> <laughs> that's a mental win. I mean, it's it's my, like, my uh, first my medication. first season of LCS, I insta blocked JoJo. I'm like, I'm not seeing that typing anymore. Also, I, I don't say, think that's annoying though. <laughs> like if he types R five hundred times in lobby. In scrims? I don't see it. I yeah. mean, I heard even his own team mutes him because he's not doing timers either. <laughs> so it's just like, they don't need to see it. I will say, as a, I played support for a year and a half, right? And I was doing timers. And then every game you don't do them, someone tells you to do them. I'm like, Mithy, bro. No one looks at my timers anyways. So do you look at timers? Yeah. Yes. I've started. You yourself, so you don't know. But like, I've I will did for a bit. He stopped doing it. I will type AD 1750 flash. Just AD, right? And then <laughs> I will ask before every fight, does he have flash? I'm like, control V 10 times in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I mean, we have that problem too sometimes. We're like, guys, I, t I said it. I typed it. Like, sometimes I was like, it's like in the heat of the moment, you're actually not looking at chat. Yeah, yeah, you're not. But if you look at chat and you're like, okay, this guy has no flash for like X time, I can mm. abuse that. Yeah. Okay. On scrims or in scrims, I'm a culprit of that where I'll be like, <laughs> core does like, does their mid laner have flash in this timing? <laughs> uh, control V, control like, V, control V. On stage, I know I always. I'm always looking at chat on stage. So. Oh, yeah, you, 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 you learned that. We you learned that. Maximizing the... <laughs> you know his chat is so small, actually? Really? My chat's on zero. Like, zero studying. Doesn't see anything. That's so random. So oh, the guy okay. who types the most has the smallest chat. I know this is, I know this is long ago, but since everyone was doing it, uh, Zven, yeah. I do legitimately think your support and your AD carry are both, like, top three LCS easily. And even if it's not... Is he in top three? Even if your knowledge and, ex your knowledge and experience would also outweigh those things, even if you weren't top three. Yeah. Because I think your contribution to a team, with how experienced you are at this point, like you actually know how to win. Hell yeah, keep And going, like Dad. having that presence in a team is actually just super important. So what Core said was, <laughs> almost there. Core told me, uh, Core, Core told me, he's like, he always tries to gaslight me. He said, <laughs> so even the year, no, I can tell even you. the year when uh, I think you came back from MSI and like you were sent to Academy for like a oh, month or dude, something. Um, I don't need to get into that, Dark but Cloud9 was, straight up worse as soon as you left. Yeah, I mean, but I also true. heard when you came to Academy... If they're, if they're better than, without their but like, they the Academy player than me, then it would be over for me. But right? when you went to Academy, I'm sure you were salty and pissed, but you like walked into yep. Academy and you're like, let's win, rather than running it down. Like you always, you're Academy always trying to win. Academy so chill. Like, not lying. Like Academy life okay. is so easy. It's you very... do nothing the whole week. You scrim less. It's way too, yeah. you it's have, way too simple. Your, your games are online. So you just play two games with like no time between, no no broadcast basically, no interviews, <laughs> There's no nothing, no, pressure. no content. I was playing like 90 to 100 games a week in Academy. <clears throat> well, just, I think most people play like 30 to 40 to 5 games a yeah, week. I, for me, it's like... Obligations, When scrims, I was in Academy, I was like... Reviews, drafts. Well, I could perma play solo and then I changed the LCS, like yeah. meeting, review. Yeah, yeah. Scrim like, meeting, There's something to do. Content, review, content, LCS, you have to be here an hour and a half before, an hour and a half after. Yeah, the three match days a week when it's like triple best to one are actually killer. Like it's <clears> so you were saying before improve. something, yeah. before oh, Jet started glazing me. Uh, oh yeah, no. So Core <laughs> constantly tries to gas that. He's like, oh yeah, gas. Yo. So like, yo, I was listening to Berserker's interview. He said, wow, their AD carry is really good in laning phase, but he really can't play anything else. And I'm like, dude, Wait, there's no about, way. About you or? About me. But I know, I know Berserker. 
won't say that. He can think that, but he won't say that. I'm like, nice try. I'm not even going to watch it. There's no way he said it. <laughs> and then today, he's like, Zven on the podcast said, you are, or Zven said he's better than you. Is that I true? Can, you I said can, that, I'm pretty sure you said that. Yeah. I would believe that. Though. Okay, but like, he oh, was, yeah, Core was baiting him, though. He was like, kind of like, he was pushing ass. it, you know? It was oh, like, okay. So, like, he was you like, think you're better than Jan? <laughs> he kept asking me if I was better than, like, people, and I was like, yeah. I can't just say no. Like, what kind of player are you? Yeah. It's, like, it's like, when I asked Core, are you going to beat FlyQuest? He said, yeah. Oh, of course you're going to say, yeah. You know, then he likes lost. It's just, this is how it is, right? You can't just say no. Um, it's been, no, so I'm, Core, I'm, I'm Core was doing it to you. Yeah, he was gaslighting. Like, I don't guess like, he was, he was like, baiting me. Instigating. 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 Like, instigating. Like the, the Mark instigating. Ronson meme. Yeah, like. he's always instigating <laughs> as well. That's amazing. Okay, uh, I do want to give you a quick amount of time to gain mental advantage before next week, if you want. Nah, don't need it. You don't want to order a yappuccino? Yeah. Good. No, no yapping for against Henry. I'll do that in the screen. I, I, I like okay. Henry. Do you know people call Yappa? Yappa. They call it. Tina calls you Yappa. I don't type that much in scrims. No, but they call it. <laughs> the coin. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's, that's a great a, name. That's a funny name. Yeah, I've, I've never heard that before. I think I'm, on just... in like five or so days, I can name change. So that's like that's top <laughs> candidate when for someone, name change in solo queue. Some joke or someone told me. It wasn't Sinan. Someone else told me that when someone talks too much, they say, "Who ordered a yappuccino?" <laughs> How do you feel about this one? <laughs> C9 memes are so good. Yeah, I've heard some C9 memes from our mouth. Honestly, like I'm the biggest C9 meme creator. I still use my memes nowadays in, in the team. And this isn't just another thing you bring to a team. But apart. most of them I steal from other people that are not okay. in esports, like vegan. So like our team just like says, wow, that was so vegan. And then my, so my head coach just says, Is he vegan? they were on the same grass diet. <laughs> and then Impact out here says, man, they're like Gandhi. They don't want to fight. They're pacifists. <laughs> Impact just goes whenever you see someone extremely messed up, it goes, let's talk. Let's talk about it. <laughs> But like those memes and then calling champs Mr. Useful, it's like... I like, like the Mr. Useful one. Yeah. No, Mr. Useful? Jin is Mr. Useful. Is it? Because no. he's very useful. <laughs> he's a good champion. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for taking the time. Congratulations on moving on to next week. You play Friday, LCS is on Friday, and Saturday next week for uh, for two semi-final matchups to see who ends up going to finals weekend. Yep. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Welcome back to LCS opening day for game three, FlyQuest and Shopify Rebellion. I was born in Iraq, the city of Baghdad, in 2004. I think that is just around the year where the war started. Like, I was only a year old before we left. All my extended family, like my grandparents, my uncles, my cousins, they all stayed in Iraq. So it was a tough decision Whenever I think about the sacrifices my parents made, I feel like I have to push myself forward whenever I make a goal, no matter how like tired I would feel or no matter how much I feel like it was unachievable, just because whenever I remember how much was sacrificed for me to even have the opportunity, it would feel like a slap in the face to half-ass my effort. We head on to the Rift for game three of our opening weekend. Mama, Baba, yalla b'sara al la'ba b'dat. Yalla, yalla. B'sara, b'sara al la'ba b'dat. Yusuf, come in now, can you? No, no, no. Allah, I love you. Come, come, come. 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 Yeah, we don't go for you, you. FlyQuest, are they in trouble at this point? Doesn't find Busio. Gets clipped. The shot of him is down. Towards a lot of damage. The kick is right. Wall Turtle is forced to play. It's a little too late. If he goes down, this could be big for the side of Blackwish. Blackwish is ready for that one. The last defense will not be made by Shopify Rebellion. And it is the opening weekend day with a statement win. New year, new Flyquest, and they are taking their time with this one. Needs go back. Get out and see the world. My name is Fahad Abdul Malik. I'm the ADC for FlyQuest, and some people know me as Masu. Needs go back. Get out and see the world with your own eyes. Hello, Yana. Mabrur. Oh,
شكرا شكرا عمري افتح الكاميرا هلا حبيبي مبروك اهلا اهلا مبروك يا بلا ادب عفي عليك يعني عفي عليك حبيبي بالبدايه يعني فزستونا احنا قلنا راحت اللعبه ايه يعني ما عرفنا شنو شنو بدنا نسوي بعدين يعني لا المهم رجعت المهم يعني بالضبط المهم يعني استعدتوها حبيبي شكرا قوبي حبيبي عافيه عليك يا بلا ادب This is my rookie year and it's been a pretty insane roller coaster I would say. I did feel like pretty homesick for the first while because it was my first time living alone. I'm like so used to hearing my like dad stomp around the house or like hearing my siblings say stupid stuff. I was kind of just getting used to living alone and having nobody there to kind of take care of me as well. So visiting home was a nice few days. <laughs> All my like ethics and manners come from the like closely knitted culture in Iraq, which I didn't get to experience directly in the country, but I got to live it through my family, of course. So I don't really remember anything at all other than like stories that I've heard from my sister, brother, or my daughter and mom. It's always nice to have these old pictures with you. But, um, Was this grandma's house? Yep, so uh, we would spend a lot of our time in our grandmother's house whenever us and our cousins would all come together. That was before the war, so everything was still like relatively peaceful. The neighborhood it's, itself like was very friendly. Do you remember when we had the PlayStation 2 and then we were just, we had a shared room. Mm -hmm. At first it was uh, Yusuf and I, and then it was you and I, do you remember? Yeah. And then we just played on the carpet. Yeah. I still remember, it was like a cartoon dinosaur carpet. <laughs> That's where we first had started gaming with us. I would get stuck on a mission for like an hour with many of these puzzle games. I would just not be able to solve something, and then he would just do it himself and then teach me how to do it. So, uh, so yeah. And these pictures, Fahad was so one year, one year old. Yeah. That's when uh, our dad had his accident, and that's uh, Fahad in his lap, and then Yusuf and I. But at the time, they told me it was an accident. Mom and dad just did their best to make us feel like everything is normal, everything is is fine. My dad and mom would like play it off as uh, something not too serious. That's to not scare the kids, but you know, now that they t tell the stories, they realize that like sometimes like a close neighborhood would get bombed or sometimes, you know, like something very dangerous could happen close to them. My dad told me a little bit about when he got into a accident because he was a victim of like a kidnapping attempt. And I am not sure why he was, like, why those people wanted to kidnap him. It might have been because of his profession as a doctor, or it might have been just, for, like, for a ransom. It was a conflict time in Iraq. On February 9th, 2005, that's morning time, while on my way home, I realized uh, after a while there's two cars. First it was one car and after I realized two cars were trying to stop me. And that specific time the kidnap was on the top of the situation there. I swear of the God I never surrender because uh, you and your family gonna be in a torture way. So I accelerated in a crazy way, I hit one of the cars and accelerated to run away. And after that, uh, the second car uh, stayed after me. I couldn't stop my car. The traffic was uh, stopped there. So I rolled over for four times. I just hit uh, a car in the front of me. I still remember that car because it was l the last flashing before the accident was uh, the Dodge uh, red color. With that accident, I think they left me. The car totally smashed.
I had an injury to my uh, left knee, but I'm lucky that I still alive. And that's why I have a special relationship with Fahad because I stayed for nine months, uh, eight months at home. Usually uh, the closest one to me was Fahad. I'm blessed uh, because of him. He was just two months old at that time. It wasn't safe anymore to stay, especially for the kids. Today, it happened with me. Tomorrow, they're going to try again, and even for one of the kids. So it was difficult to stay. That's why we decided to leave. On one side, I, like, I feel really lucky that I got a chance to grow up without having to worry about, you know, mm, the implications of the war. And then the other part where it's like, I feel pretty terrible for what they had to go through. I left my childhood, memory, a lot of friends, families. I remember till now when my father, God bless his soul, when he told me, we have only one son. We don't want to lose you. Just go out. Just go out. It's a conflict period of time. Just go out. We don't know what's going on. So it, it was against my wishes. I decided to go and to take my kids, my wife, to a better life, to a say, I am lucky because I had a lot of them. They couldn't have that chance. It was a very difficult time. What he wanted for me in the end was like just a secure future. So then, of course, when he heard the idea of playing video games for a living, he, it was like hard for him to even believe it. The opportunity of this, it's like something I was working pretty consistently towards. It's something that my friends and my brother also pushed me towards. I know it was one that I could only get once. As a um, academic family, we wished him to be like, uh, as his parents, uh, to be a physician or whatever academic, but I couldn't stop in his way. So I sat with him. I saw that passion and love in his eyes when he's talking about League of Legends. For sure, I was uh, zero knowledge. I have no background about what's the meaning of League of Legends. When he started to explain for me, Yusuf, he explained more. I said, so you love it? You want it? He said, I love it. I want to go for it. At that time, I stopped. I realized because maybe if I affecting him by my decision, maybe he's gonna lose both sides. I never thought I'd like leave home this early, and especially because in like Arab culture, the kids like even once they start working, they stay home for a while. When I was a kid, I would always tell them like. I'll never leave you. Like, always uh, stay around and take care of you guys. He said, because of how much you said that, he was sure I was gonna leave first. Usually when we leave, we live together as a family. Wherever, whenever we keep as a member of five, we never separated. He was the first child to left home, which we never used to all of a sudden. Fahd, he is not in his room. So it was a very difficult time for, uh, yeah. Now he is there. Like it was shock for the whole family. But I was so happy for him. I am so proud of him. We are so proud of him. So yes, I have to say that I am lucky that even if I can say it's a sacrifice that we made me and mom to reach them to a better life, now we are gaining what we planned for. Where are you going, my brown eyed son? He used to crawl, but now you run. Lasso now takes a step forward. He started off on a road half dark. Oh, he's looking, he climbed the fence, Lasso! And the river pulled into a question. Lasso made Cloud 
It's just no matter what I do, just make sure that my parents didn't do and go through everything they have went through for nothing. I just really wanted to make a vow to myself to try my hardest to not make their sacrifices go to waste. Series, you had to lock in a little bit, so a little bit of trash talk, and then next year's will ramp it up. <laughs> what? That was yesterday. Camera. That was yesterday. Yeah. That is true. You said out of context, it makes no sense. I thought it was super logical. Anyway, Dokla. Okay. Welcome to the show, man. Good to be here. Woo! Yeah, welcome back. Uh, what have you been up to the last week? Uh, 
just been taking care of my health, honestly. Just uh, gymming, trying to just eat healthy and uh, take care of my uh, health. So um, no oopsies happened before my LCS match. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you have planned before the next split of LCS starts up? Just uh, playing league, get back to the grind. You know, spring doesn't really matter. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's one of the little bit of a wash. But um, no, obviously, uh, I have to level up for uh, summer. And I'm um, just excited to see how uh, whoever represents us at MSI, how they perform. Because, uh, um, yeah, go in A. All right, good stuff. Mm -hmm. We saw some highlights from yesterday, but we're going to run a quick little recap as ourselves. What did you take from the series yesterday, Doka? Uh, top lane, it doesn't matter if you get soul killed or not. That's what I learned from this one. <laughs> yeah? Because if you just take a tank, you're going to be more useful. <laughs> but um, I learned that Teal is a very bloody team compared to what they actually played in like the regular season. So um, yeah, a lot of action in this series. I thought like a lot of like unforced fights as well, but um, yeah, it's, it's entertaining to watch. One thing that people kept saying was that TL are a lot more like this in scrims. Like there were two disparate scrim rumors which, about 100 Thieves and TL. Did you encounter this TL in scrims with NRG? Yeah, we, we did encounter this variation of Team Liquid. <laughs> and we also encountered the 100 Thieves variation. Um, Unfortunately, they didn't show up on stage like that for us, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the scrim rumors, you can put some stock into it. Actually, question for you, like, have you been on a team or a situation where it's like, you're just a completely different team in scrims to... Yeah, that was us last year. <laughs> 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 I think we were the epitome of that last year, and um, yeah. How do you approach that conversation for, uh, like, how? Do, where does that start? Because, like, you guys last year, I'm assuming you guys Lost a lot in scrims? Yeah, we, we, at least my memory of it was that we did not have a very good track <laughs> record. Maybe the stats might tell a different story, but yeah. uh, my memory is that we would always lose in scrims, but honestly, our morale was not shaken mm -hmm. from that, and I think that's the biggest thing, honestly. It's just like the vibes that um, you have, win or lose, just how much you can take away from winning or losing. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll get into the bracket in a second, but I actually, we, we skipped over a little bit there. Last split, summer 2023, mm -hmm. you're LCS champion, and obviously this split, the expectations are higher, yeah. and things are super disappointing. I, I just kind of want to wonder, like, now that you have a week away from it, like, how are you reflecting on what happened in spring? Yeah, we got kind of smashed, I mean, this whole split. I think even if we, like, I think we didn't level up enough, like, throughout the course of the split, and even if we, like, won our series against 100, I don't necessarily think it would have been, like, we would have been championship caliber mm -hmm. by the time, like, finals would have came around, so I think, um, yeah, just throughout the split, I don't think we leveled up as fast as we should or could have. And okay. um, I think by the time it, at playoffs game, I think it was kind of too late, even though we did play a bit better than what we played in regular season. But um, it was just it just wasn't there. Right. Any any plans for how you're going to fix that in the summer? You don't have to answer. Yeah, it I, mean, I know it's always like four like days. In. But I just, what you're here, so <laughs> you got to lock yeah. in. Like summer is the one that matters. Um, jokingly, but um, obviously. Uh, just you have to reflect on yeah. what went wrong, what you could do better, and um, kind of just take this as a learning experience, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Good luck in summer. Let's pull up the bracket for what we have left in the spring split playoffs. Three teams. Team Liquid awaits the loser of today, and then the winner will go straight to the championship match, which will be Sunday, March 31st. Day before April 1st, so just to make sure that no one thinks it's a joke. Anyway, we're not the only league with finals. Next week, Azale, Kobe, Medios, and more have a message about the NACL playoffs, which I think have their finals on April 1st. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, next up in some news, it was announced that NACA finals will be live here in the Riot Games Arena, which is obviously a pretty big deal because this could be the first time some of these players are actually taken to the stage. I am so pumped for this. To get to see players experience their first ever game on stage is incredible. You know, kind of learning what it's like. Uh, what's NACL? So speaking of magic, Cubby, I hear you worked some to get NACL finals live somehow. Yeah, team effort. Uh, but you know what? We're going back to the studio on April 1st for our live finals. You can get tickets now, and there's even going to be an award show to go along with it. So you know what's interesting, Emily? Not only are they bringing back the most valuable prospect, but they're introducing a new slew of awards for the players and teams also to vote on. Yeah, so looking at the list, there's also going to be a, a most improved player and a rookie of the split award, and they're voting for all pros. 
It's kind of like we do in the LCS, so it'll feel a little more familiar, I guess. Yo, Eric, they just announced that NACL finals are live and we can get tickets. Oh, sick. Playoffs are on right now. Put it on. Let's go. Welcome back. Let's pull up our Samsung SSD Fast 5 for this week. Get cleaner socks, Kangas. <laughs> That's a message to you. <laughs> Just to note, the LCS average is all of spring split plus playoffs. Wow, playoff players are just destroying the LCS average. Yeah, it was just FlyQuest and T9. I mean, it makes sense for, I mean, Blabber to be fastest level six for Armin Jungler. I mean, we talk about him being more efficient, but Inspired, a lot of times, we'll get on the map a little bit more. So, like, a lot of these don't are not surprising to me. Yeah, hoping the fastest kill stays low today because I want action-packed games. A reminder that Samsung is partnered with Sleeper and Fantasy LCS, and you can earn bonus points each week for drafting the best performers to your team. Congrats to those of you who claimed that reward this week. Plus, use code SSD990PROLCS through March 29th to get 20% off 990PRO 1, 2, and 4 terabyte SSDs. And something else about today's series. Okay, let me know. Is the All-Pro. Mm -hmm. Which All-Pros are in the series? I know that... Some of us did not think many Cloud9 players would make it to the All-Pro, yet it's actually almost all. Almost all of them. That's actually crazy. Which ones, okay, this is a great conversation. Which one are you surprised about uh, made it into All-Pro, just um, in general? Berserker, I think that My one man. to me is a surprise. I think JoJo deserved it. He was kind of like 1v9ing yeah. uh, at least some of the games. Um, and then Blabber and Vulcan, I'm not sure exactly. Um, honestly, I just pay attention to top lane. I don't really pay attention to anything else. But um, <laughs> I didn't think Berserker was having like his high highs like that we're all, we all know him for. So that's why it was surprising for me. One thing I'm super curious about, just because we've had a lot of conversation, or I've seen a lot of conversation around All Pro, and the because we had so few games, kind of a discrepancy between people who are outside of like a scrim environment and then player votes. When you're looking at, I can't recall if you've ever voted for All Pro, but when you're looking at like evaluating other players in your position, how much does scrim data matter versus like how many stage games you guys are actually able to watch? Uh, I think I would say it's a combination of both. I think scrim, you can have a good gauge, and on stage, I think it's how they execute, um, like whatever matchup they're playing, and then base it off that. So. I would give like about half half stock, maybe okay. a bit more to scrims, honestly, compared to stage, because you're only playing like 18 games. Yeah. Or, yeah. Normally 14. Yeah. 14. Yeah. yeah. So. Thanks, Golden Guardians. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> FlyQuest. And, Fly, I want to talk about the playoff timelines. FlyQuest and, and Cloud9 and what their histories are like. For FlyQuest, if they win the split, it would be the first split they're in their organization's history. Yeah. I'd say it's really strange thinking back to that spring 2020 and summer 2020 era they had where they actually finished like back to back second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet it, when you look back to it, you're just like, oh yeah, they're, they've never been super good, yet they were in finals twice in a row. Yeah, that was uh, what, solo, I Santorin, forgot the jump. Power of Evil. Santorin, yeah. Power of Evil era. Wild Turtle, and I forgot. Was yeah. it Ignar? I think it was it? Ignar. Might have been, yeah. Yeah. Cloud9. Uh, back to back, couldn't go back to back to back thanks to Dokla <laughs> and the squad. But trying to get right back on there, even though the regular season was a little rough, that's uh, if they're able to win this split, that's a pretty impressive three out of four era of dominance. Yeah, and like my thought process, like for Cloud9, they're, they've been a team that has always had championship championship expectations, whereas teams around them from like Team Liquid that of course have done that in the past, um, Energy of course being able to win the first one, but like. I look towards FlyQuest, a team that have definitely funded and tried their hardest to get a championship with the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. with the teams, the rosters that they picked up. The biggest shock for me was the third place last year because it was third place and then did not qualify for a team yeah. that everyone had high expectations for. So the lessons, of course, was with this roster that they ended up bringing. And a lot of people are high on it. Only problem is playoffs started and Cloud9 are looking good again. <laughs> That's the only issue is that they've found a way to creep back into mm -hmm. like championship expectations immediately. Emily? Yeah, I think uh, the, the most shocking thing to me for the FlyQuest timeline was last summer. Yeah. Because like as they started oh, losing, I, yeah, I was just like, oh, they <laughs> have wild. to rebound. Like I remember I kept 
and I think you did too, kept picking mm -hmm. them. We're like, they're, we've, they've got to, you know, they're due. Like, this is such a good team. They did so well last split. And yeah, whatever happened internally was. Uh, I know. I feel like this year's FlyQuest has done everything they can to just never speak of that roster. <laughs> <laughs> like, five players, they were, everyone thought they were going to Worlds after yep. like game. week yeah. six <laughs> of spring split. And now it's just totally new squad. Let's just, yeah. let's just roll with it. But this is going to be a, a really good series. And speaking of which, those two guys on stage, I got a chance to catch up with them about 30 minutes ago. Check it out. Thank you very much. I'm here with Mithy and Nuke Duck, head coaches for FlyQuest and Cloud9. And both of you guys were able to win your best of fives last week. 3-2 against Team Liquid, 3-0 against Hunter Thieves. But after the sketchy regular season that Cloud9 kind of had, did you expect to see Cloud9 in this winner's bracket final still? Uh, yeah, I expected it. They faced like 100 Thieves and I thought, you know, C9 just like stronger players. So I thought they would, uh, yeah, they would win, yeah. I expected that. And Mithy, uh, one interesting thing that I just learned is that even though FlyQuest had side selection for game one, they picked red side. Did that surprise you and why? Uh, yeah, it did, and uh, it's very scary. So, uh, yeah, usually teams pick blue side because it generally has better win rate and it's easier to prep, like uh, for the first game at least. So, um, yeah, it was surprising. They have some something planned. And uh, Mithy, you've also made multiple finals in a row with Cloud9. A win today also puts you in the finals once again. What do you have to do to make sure you make it to finals again? Win. Anything else? <laughs> no, just win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Nuke Duck FlyQuest still trying for the first championship from the org. Has there been any conversations about that, or are you just trying to take it one game at a time? Uh, yeah, just one game at a time. Yeah. Uh, we. Yeah. No, I mean we're not talking about like it would be great to win. I don't know, uh, but we are not like talking about the, that so much right now. Yeah. But that's been the goal from the start. So you know. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Uh, I'll let you go. Get ready for the games. We're done here. A lot of people in the esports industry like to, you know, pretend that maybe you're a very popular player or whatever, and that's why you can be all high and mighty or whatever, compared to the people that do more of the background work, like managers or even fans. I don't feel that way at all. I want to make sure that everyone knows that I stand on the same ground, you know? I'm the same as other people. I just, people just like watching what I do. That's the only difference. Thank you, FlyQuest. That's a preview of their docu-series inventory. They got a bunch of episodes of that up, but Raz. Yeah? You had something for us. Yes, I did. The conversation was about the top lane. We okay. needed to talk about top lane, between how Fudge has been performing, uh, you know, in this, this playoffs versus Whippo. So I thought for us, we needed to start talking about Whippo versus Fudge, okay. like in this matchup. Okay, what about them though? Well, this looks weird. Yeah. Yeah, this is a problem. We need to update this a bit if we could. Just a little bit, if we can. Oh, we're tired. Oh, okay. It's a little okay. bit. Okay. All right, actually, Whippo's, that lease is now fitting a little better. But I think He's one more time. He's a little wider. It doesn't look, okay, All this right. looks right. This okay, looks right. Big this Bug versus Wide Whippo. Oh my These God. look like the actual pictures of the two. That's actually insane. So I just want us to actually start talking about them both in the top lane. Like, who do we think are better laners, better team fighters, just metrics overall going into the series. Thankfully, okay. we have you, Dokla. Uh, you can call us idiots in general if you yeah, think we're wrong I'll on this call one. You out, yeah. Okay, perfect. So let's start on this one. First one is better yeah, laning. So if you leaning. agree with, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pick laning. mine. I actually, yeah. this yeah, might be an unpopular opinion. Up, and then I'll this be might the, be an unpopular I'll be opinion. Of it. Okay, all right. I, better I laning. Think this Damn. Might be an unpopular opinion. Damn, I'll start here. What? I'll, I'll what? Go really? Here. I'll be here. Yeah. Oh, you're making me look like a fool. Explain yourself. Well, I think Whippo, when he's on his champions, he has a really good, clear idea of how he wants to execute his lane, and then he generally does it really well, and then puts himself in a good position. And I would say his picks are more volatile in terms of like spicy counter picks, and I think Fudge is pretty standard, but I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just think Whippo does like what Fudge might do, but just executes it a bit better. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, what hard, what's hard for me is like we had that one series versus Hundred Thieves where he did phenomenally, and during the regular season, Fudge was on and off. So it's really tough for me to kind of discern what's what is he going to look like going into this series for the rest I of the playoffs. For me, they're both super analytical about their laning phases, but yeah. uh, I think at least in playoffs, Fudge has been 
been better at winning, yes. like specifically setting up dives and things like that, working his, manipulating his way to work with wrestlers. Okay, but to be fair, they played one best of five against um, Hunter Thieves, and I think sure. everyone played well that game. And I, I think TL is a far better yeah. team than Hunter Thieves, and they went to game five, so like, True. you guys have to give it stock in terms of who he was playing against. Okay. All right, let's go to the like next topic. Yeah. Team fighting. Team fighting, who's the better team fighter? Okay, you know what, I'm moving uh, over here. It's a tough I one. I actually don't even know. Uh, you can go in the middle if you want. Yeah, I'll just stand in the middle. This They're one, I think. Uh, team fighting. Top lane doesn't really matter too much. You just do what you're told. But <laughs> I'm not like in the, the group journal, think we have. We have yeah, tough. I don't know about this. This is rough. Yeah. I don't yeah. feel great about What's this. What's next? What's next? Okay, I mean, I'll just I'll just start by saying with team fighting. I mean, Whippo generally will pick for the team. He'll pick mm -hmm. four or five. Carry potential. Carry potential. Uh, More carry. Dude, this one reaches feel, back I feel a little like bit. This is equal. I'm sticking with. Blippo. I mean, his old game. You gotta game. pick a side. I'm sticking with. Blippo. No, the you don't. Why Whippo yeah. big fudge? All right. Uh, I'll, uh, I mean, I just remember his Olaf games that really stand out to me. So. Same. Now you gotta. Uh, explain mine is yourself. more historical. Because I remember, Sorry. like, especially in playoffs, Fudge carries games with his counter picks fairly frequently. It did happen with the Twist of Fate, but even back to, I know everyone memed on him because he didn't do it at MSI, but like he carried with the Fiora counter picks. Like he ran the top lane meta a couple years ago or a year and a half ago in, in top lane. So I think he actually has the potential to carry a lot of games. Wait, if we're going more carry potential though, Whippo has done it in two roles, like historically. Carried? Yeah. I, I okay. loved Bwipo Jungle. I mean, I'm a big Bwipo Jungle oh, apologist. I thought you were just talking about AD. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, more AD potential. Sense, yeah. Last more one, X more X-Factor. Factor. I, I definitely think it has to be I mean, Bwipo. yeah. He has uh, the pocket yeah. picks up the wazzy. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Just the because I feel like he, yeah, he has so many interesting, like not just counter picks, but also blind picks that he'll go to that you yeah. might not always think of. We got a squad over here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, anyway, that was fun. That was fun, Raz. <laughs> All right. uh, Emily, I know you wanted to talk about Chovy and JoJo. We've covered yeah. top lane, so let's let's hit the mid lane up. Yeah, so there's a joke that um, JoJo is the NA Chovy. He said this himself. He wants to be the NA Chovy, so we're going to look at their champ pool. Uh, does he want to be NA Chovy or is he just copying Chovy? Well, we're essentially going to use it as a predictor, right? So yeah. the last champions that Chovy played are actually Aurelian Soul, the Silas, which is not here. It's not on the graphic. Silas. Him. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good Silas. Uh, <laughs> Oriana, so that. Yone, Tristana, Talia, and Corky. Mm -hmm. And this is I, I want to see if it's true where like there's a rumor that if Chovy plays something like now that Chovy's played Aurelian Soul, JoJo's gonna look at it and be like, hmm, yeah, maybe yeah. Aurelian Soul is like pretty good, you guys. You just have uh, to find the correlation between after Genji plays and yeah, exactly. how similar the drafts might be. Yeah, after. I think it's there. Honestly, we've heard all the players he looks up to. Like it's not necessarily a meme. Like there's definitely large grains of truth yeah. to this. Uh, and I think the the other really interesting thing, uh, as we look at like the vast amount of champions that Chovy has also played on his side, obviously played way more games in LCK. Um, but going up against Jensen today, I think Jensen has had a really good split. And mm. some of the comps that FlyQuest were willing to run in their last series, particularly Jensen locking in the Annie for a carry Viego comp, I think. A lot of teams, and again, I'm going to bring it up just because everyone keeps talking about Milky Way. A lot of teams are like, why don't we just play carry jungle? Why don't we just play Milky Way style? And it requires your mid laner, like Care, yeah. to play stuff like Annie or Karma a lot of the time um, and kind of like take one for the team, right? Uh, drop Ego and play something a little bit less flashy uh, so that your jungler can kind of be on more of a carry. And I think Jensen exemplified that in his Annie series. Yeah, and I think for me, expecting there to be just a lot of Talia, um, it has dominated the playoffs. Yep. Jensen had a great Talia. He's not going to be able to play Azir. So I think there just needs to be a response to the pick. A decent one could be Annie if you're trying to set up with your jungler. So that that's what I'm thinking at the moment. I mean, Jensen looked like he was ready to play Annie right there. He's just, he's all chilling. right, just lock me in Annie. He's like, all right. He's <laughs> like, all right, drop sorry, sword up. And uh, trust me that this next point is going to be on topic of C9, but it's going to take a little while. So, uh, Dokla, I want to get your opinion on this. Okay. Um, so what you have here uh, is my 
you can look at the big screen there. Okay. Uh, so that's my 12th grade report card. <laughs> okay. uh, the grade is on the left and then the subject is on the bottom. So basically, do you think that I was like a top tier student? Just with based like, off this. Yeah, like I was really good at math. I could no, not speak no French way. for the life if, of me. If you're failing in history, or like, see, I want to say it's failing. Yeah, like, it's if you're not pretty doing close. Well in history, then I. I can't draw. Like I'm decent at public <laughs> speaking, though, right? Like I'm okay. Yeah. Your PE grade is off yeah. the charts. Yeah. There, you know? Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> what's off the charts is the math grade. Oh, it's yeah. even behind this. So you're um, heavy in math and PE. Okay, so so we're we're pretty sure that this is like. I had like a pretty average high school experience, right? Mm -hmm. My yeah. parents would say it's a success just off math alone. They my, don't care about it. My so, parents would say that you need to get A's in everything yeah, or you're out is, of the This house. looks like a failure. <laughs> Fair enough. Man. Let's take this exact same format then okay. and look at Cloud9 Spring. And I have to ask you, oh God. are they back? Because instead of PE, it's their week one performance. <laughs> <laughs> and they were back, but they kind of struggled. They had that one week when we were doing the face-off where they said they were back and then they clearly yeah, yeah. weren't and now they had another good series. So like... The rumors were false. Are uh, they actually I back? True. I think... Okay, I think uh, it's a bit of a difference between school and uh, playoffs. But like, okay, <laughs> you just cut everything out before playoff starts, it doesn't matter. All that matters is how you play on the day. And yeah. um, right now this. they're looking like they're back. So. Like all I'm saying, if we could just bring back this, the school report card. <laughs> just bring back the school report card if possible. Because at the end of the day, week six doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. You can cope. Wow, okay, my bad, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they can do the report card. This one is not working. That's fair. If it's not yeah. working, it's not working. But all I'm saying, if I'm talking to my parents, they don't even think that French class exists. You just have to cope. Yeah. What is art? What is French class? What's yeah. week six? All that matters is that you did well in math and you yeah. did well at the end math of the split. Math is all that matters. So I think they're back. Oh, it worked. You oh, suck up. This is wild. I got your yeah, well, Oh, That's great. Okay. Friends, I didn't you were really that. angry okay. at French. But this is memes as an introduction. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think a legitimate question about Cloud9 because I look at the way they played in week one mm -hmm. and they picked all winning lanes and they smashed people. Mm -hmm. And then when all of the things were happening when we said they weren't back, they were still picking all winning lanes and just not smashing people. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't necessarily feel like they've evolved or fixed things. Like they just smashed 100 Thieves with all winning lanes. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be their one trick. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they can win the LCS with that trick. Yeah, I just want to say your memory is a lot better than mine because I don't remember back to week one. But um, <laughs> <laughs> going back to last week when they played, I think um, they kind of just won mid 2v2. And it was really easy to play the game from yeah. there. And top lane had counter pick. I think Fudge executed his, uh, his picks well. And then Berserker was back. And yeah, Berserker was back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, if you win all your lanes, the game's going to look really easy. But I think now that they're, they're against better laners, uh, we'll see how macro plays a part of it. Yeah, I feel like winning your lanes is not a one trick <laughs> play style necessarily. That's fair, it's like the core uh, way of getting yeah, leads like, in League of Legends. Like that's how our recent team, uh, T1, won the World <laughs> Championship. Um, but that that joke aside, I think the big difference in me in ter uh, for me in terms of like, is C9 back? Obviously Berserker played better, but it was the one-two punch of JoJo um, and Blabber actually working together as a mid-jungle duo. I thought they looked better together as a unit yeah. against 100 Thieves than they had all season. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in what our predictions for this one is going to be because at Let's least for up. me, once we get a view of it, even though I'm predicting Cloud9, here it is, both Jad and Doku going towards FlyQuest. I think FlyQuest has a real chance based off top, the top side of the map. What's your thought on this one? Why'd you pick uh, FlyQuest? Um, well, I think this game could, or this series could easily go five games. And I just picked FlyQuest because I think they're just more, um, they have more like plays in their playbook. I think they go through side lanes a lot when they're behind and they play from behind pretty well. So I think they just have um, a, a, just a better chance of winning. And for what it's worth, I'm very scared of Cloud9. Yeah. Like week one and one week of playoffs is still enough to strike fear. In <laughs> like, because the way they won just does look very dominating if they can pull that off. But I have to, I have to give an edge to FlyQuest because like it's two of seven weeks where they've legitimately been good. And I think FlyQuest has been better than them, you know, five of the seven weeks. Yeah. 
And this is tough for me. I had a 3-1 for Cloud9 for one reason. I felt like FlyQuest's success came through Jensen performing versus APA and then being able to use that advantage to go top lane and work alongside Inspired. Whereas versus C9, I think JoJo is a much tougher opponent in lane to deal with. And then bot lane is, I think, going to be a travesty. <laughs> like, I think Berserker and Vulcan have still been really strong laners. And I, that's pretty much how Cloud9 will win their games is play through bot lane uh, and play through JoJo. And that's not going to be a struggle here. For I also just heard there was a chat poll. 57% of chat said C9 is back, okay. which okay. I'm going to extrapolate and say 57% think that French doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well. Yeah, there's yeah. no reason to learn French in school. Thank you for that chat. <laughs> uh, this is coming that's from Albert. at the lounge. We're only a minute and 20 seconds from the game. Let's get into them. Sorry, Vulcan. Dan Smolder. <laughs> In the LCS, champions aren't born, they're made. Champions are crowned, history is reforged. The beauty of the game comes to bear in its tensest moments, where the crowd roars and cries at each joy and heartbreak, where split seconds make the difference between the fallen and the forever. The LCS is always here to bring you back into the game, time and time. Red Bull gives you way. regular season team looking to lock themselves into finals for a shot at their first LCS title. It's FlyQuest. On the other side, a super team that looked pretty damn super in our first week of playoffs. Cloud9 are no stranger to finals weekends, and they're just as hungry to lock themselves in for a shot at another LCS title. The LCS playoffs continue. FlyQuest versus C9 starts right now. Welcome back to the LCS, everybody. It's time for another installment of Playoffs Action. I am Captain Flowers, joined by Azale and Kobe here for our series. And what are you grinning so big for? <laughs> you're returned, you're refreshed, <laughs> you're back and better than ever. Production production actually got us a bucket here, just in case. A bucket. <laughs> well, thank you. You're feeling well thank yesterday. Thank you, production, for the bucket. We will hopefully We're not glad you're back, have to be using any of that. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. But we have another, hopefully, banger of a series lined up for ourselves here today. Before we get into champ select though, we're going to hear from Vulcan on what he expects from FlyQuest headed into these games. With FlyQuest, I think we can expect something more creative from them. Um, Boypo has always been someone who's like willing to play these odd picks uh, if he has, you know, whatever reason that he finds to, to play them. Um, so I think they'll be more unpredictable in draft. And same goes for Busio. He's also willing to play like more unconventional supports. And yeah, we'll be, you know, we'll have a long draft meeting before playing them because uh, we have to be on top of our game when we draft against them. And other than that, I think, I mean, I, I just think when you have Jojo Pyun lining up in the mid lane against any LCS teams, you already know that you're going to be winning mid lane. So as long as we don't grieve too hard and, you know, everyone does their job well, doesn't do very many mistakes, hopefully none, um, then I feel like, yeah, I think FlyQuest isn't a problem for us. 
Vulcan specifically shouting out Jojo and his prowess in the mid lane here is something that C9 can rely on. Going up against Jensen, though, who has also been a top performer for FlyQuest, in part, a big reason in part for why they've been able to find the success they have so far in this split. It's pretty interesting, too, with Jensen's whole career, it is usually felt like he was in the shadow of some other superstar mid laner before it was Bjergsen. Now, apparently, it's JoJo, uh, when even inspired Jensen's own jungler is always talking about how JoJo is the best and JoJo is such a magnificent <laughs> mid laner. Feels like, you know, Inspired still got some like old love connection with his ex. With his ex. Gotta yeah. On. Gotta move got on. A new mid laner now, Inspired. <laughs> Gonna have to move on in this series because I have to say, one of the biggest things in Cloud9 series was Blabber ganking mid. He had really creative moves around Fog of War, he was very active. Uh, so I'm super excited for especially the whole top side of the map uh, in this series, including mid lane there with the junglers and top laners. And I think it's it's kind of an interesting position for Blabber because for so long, he has been the definitive best jungler in the LCS. And then you come into this split, he's not first team, he's not second team, pretty much everyone is saying Inspired, River, have they outperform you. Even yesterday after Umti's win, he's saying, yeah, I actually hope I play against Blabber because he's worse than Inspired. He's the easier jungler to play against. Mm -hmm. Everyone I think really has been kind of doubting him and saying you're not where you used to be. So so it's up to Blabber to kind of reclaim his spot at the top of the pile. Exactly. For so long, the conversation has always been about who's number two underneath him. But you hit the nail on the head, man. It's all been about River and Inspired so far here during the spring split. But let's go ahead and get into draft because the first six bands are already done. It's Orianna, Varus, and Rek'Sai banned out by C9. FlyQuest removing the Ari, the Lucian, and the Nico. C9 rapidly locking Kalista. And the Rek'Sai is the one I want to focus on because uh, Fudge himself had specific words talking about Bwipo and how scary Bwipo can be with Counterpick. And in game number one here, FlyQuest are starting out on red side. They could save Counterpick for Bwipo. Rek'Sai top, we just saw Broken Blade uh, in Europe a couple of games uh, playing on this champ and how annoying it can be with the mobility, with the healing. And it's also interesting, you know, knowing that Bwipo has all these different picks that he's cooking up. They're on red side, right? So they have that fifth pick counter pick. You know, what is he going to go for? What is Fudge going to play? When Fudge was casting with us last week, he was talking about you know, the difficulties and how being on red side is often good against Whippo just to get a normal matchup. Not even yeah. necessarily to get a big counter pick, but just to make sure that he's not doing anything too crazy. So I'm really curious, you know, is there something that's really been cooked up for this game one? You, you talked about the Rek'Sai, right obviously that's banned out, but Whippo has a lot of picks he could go to. Certainly does. Olaf was one of the super big ones where he was able to actually 1v9, but this draft is already pretty interesting. One of the biggest changes for Cloud9 in playoffs was that the entire team was playing better than they did in the regular season, but especially to me, the bottom lane yeah. played so much better to much more your expectations of Berserker especially. Mm -hmm. And now they're slamming the Callista Renata, which is one of the most aggro bottom lanes there are. So definitely expect uh, Blabber to pay some attention there. I mean, their Lucian Nami game was night and day from what they were doing in the regular season. The one that they played in playoffs, they dominated. They were able to pull off dives. They were able to really stomp through these lanes yeah. and play towards those advantages. This is a super aggressive lane. They can play that sort of style. They can really look to pound home an advantage, especially with the Tzalea, who can be moving around the map if he gets lane prior. Exactly. We're talking about junglers looking towards bottom lane. Talia loves to be able to find those windows to make those rotations, get this Kalista snowballing early so you can shut down that Senna stack machine before it becomes the absolutely oppressive power that it can evolve into. Renekton will be locked in for FlyQuest, so we're not going to get to see that red side fifth pick top side counter pick instead they're just going to go with pretty much the most basic standard evergreen top laner there can be yes yeah, so this is this is pretty interesting right so you know i'm curious if there is going to be any kind of surprise swap around or something like that from fly quest because otherwise you know what it looks like is you've already locked both your soul laners in the first three on red side we already know that Senna's going to be going bot. You've already seen what the entire bot lane is from Cloud9, so you wouldn't really be getting any sort of a counter pick on red side, which I generally feel like can be somewhat of a failed draft. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, maybe there is potential for things to be swapped around or be a little bit surprising. It could potentially be Karma support, though generally we do see Senna almost exclusively with melee champions these days. 
Senna and Karma both being on your team does also. <laughs> Toby, you're gonna enjoy that level. So for people who don't watch the dive and don't know, this was our dive bet. Yeah. Both Azale and Meteos uh, bet, that, bet that Cloud9 right. were going to win the entire split. Uh, and I bet on, they gave me two. I got FlyQuest. Two for one special. Yeah, <laughs> I got FlyQuest and I, I got 100 Thieves. That one didn't work out uh, for me as well. So all my coins are on FlyQuest. When we were doing our NACL co-stream during one of the off weeks, you also made some bet about eating a lemon. What is it with you and the lemons? The, I, I had the idea because of the dive one, and we couldn't come oh, up with anything really else. likes lemons. <laughs> he, he secretly just goes home and eats a full lemon every night. He's been training. <laughs> the lemon lover. <laughs> I have never eaten a lemon in my life. That's These what a lemon eater would yeah, say. That's exactly what it would be. <laughs> we're not falling off flowers. flowers I have Thank you. <laughs> Shout out. Good looking oh, out. I'll, I'll keep that we in mind. We appreciate you. We're covered. We got the we got the we bucket got trash here. Can, we got Pepto. Yeah. All right. I've got a lemon for Kobe. I got a bottle of Pepto. <laughs> Kobe gets a lemon. Where are these lemon accusations coming <laughs> from? Zilla, what do you get? Well, we need to find a present for you from yeah. the audience. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to find out. Maybe someone will have something for me. Hey, Vi went through. Boys, focus okay. up. Focus all right, up. All right, okay, focus Vi up. All right. All right. All right. Twitch Vi to Leo. Bubble. Sejuani, Tom Kench, all banned away. We got Lee Sin for FlyQuest and for Inspired. We got Vi locked in for Blabber. What is the final pick of the draft here for C9. What are we going to get in the top lane to deal with that lizard? Oh, is there any chance that this is a Lee Sin bot? I feel like if, if someone was going to cook in this league for support, that it could be Busio. Nah, I think Blabber's, Lee Sin was, or Blabber's Lee Sin was insane. Inspired's Lee Sin's insane. We've had so many cool I Lee Sin. Just, I just wonder, it's game one. You're red side. Are you really not going to cook anything? You're just going to blind pick both your soul laners yeah, for game, quest? game one. Game one is, is chill. We saved the cooking till later okay. in the series. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll find out. Fifth pick here coming through could be way so it, it's if yeah, it's karma, way, it could be way support or karma support so yeah. both these are uh, could be possible we'll have to see where it's gonna go uh this will be a double range lane with senna which isn't common in pro play but i do really think these are strong in solo queue uh, so it is looking like karma i wonder if it's gonna be a farming karma i've seen that with both i have seen um senna swain is something that's relatively popular online that people will play that and have a farming swain so you could do that with karma you could just have it be that support as well I think this is pretty cool. And Huey, for Jensen, he's looked good in the couple times that he's brought it out. We also saw uh, it brought out by Insanity a few times, and he yeah. looked really good on it as well. I, I would definitely greatly prefer it to be a farming uh, Karma and a fasting Senna. Me too. Okay. So you can get uh, some nice value out of the souls there. And Karma just does so well with money now, uh, with the changes. So, I, you know, I really want to see the Malignants on it. I really want to see Busio getting some, uh, some, some spotlight time because... He got first team all pro yep. here. Uh, very impressive for such a young player in the LCS. And of course, his history being a mid laner before and then transferring down to uh, support in the bottom lane. You kind of want to see him. Your support. Yeah, you kind of want to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. see him on like AP carries, you know, and, and, and them actually going with the farming style. So how do you guys want to see FlyQuest play this game out because Cloud9 got that Vi Talia combo that's so powerful with mid jungle. They got to have the Callista Renata super aggro bot lane, and we already discussed how FlyQuest isn't getting a counter pick with the red side round five pick. How Senna doesn't normally pair with a pick like Karma. So what's the trick here? How do you navigate this? So I will say, you know, they did flex the Karma to bot, so they did get answering that pick, you know, with, with the, the pick of your mid lane for Jensen. But I think a lot of it for Inspired is just about answering where the plays are going to be. And I think this is a style that he's really, really strong at. He wants to answer where Blabber is going to go. They want to look to scale. Way Senna Karma, really powerful as far as their scaling. And I think they're going to look to fight around these objectives. Lots of shielding, lots of early game power here for them. Um, so I think it's going to be about strong lanes, poking them out, and then setting up our own objectives. Yeah, I think the biggest target here is going to be for sure the Vi Talia combo. This combo is the easiest in the game to pull off. Vi guarantees the seismic shove. You have so much burst damage. And and Jensen is playing Huey. Uh, <laughs> Jojo with some kind words here. Okay. Everybody's a yappa now. Yeah, the, the yap meta has dawned, uh -huh. gentlemen. Yeah. Welcome to the new era Welcome of LCS. Him. He's taking over. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little APA in all of us. Yeah, but well, well, I mean, if you're starting the chatting now, uh, I would say it's probably going to be harder for the way to answer the chat. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, as we were talking about, Leeson has been so big so far in playoffs. 
Uh, and Inspired certainly has been creative, although they did start with a ward on Raptors that does see Inspired now, so they know that he is starting on Raptors red side. Well, they're gonna go behind yeah. them. This is actually really cheeky. C9 really looking to put that aggro immediately into play. Bottom side, Busio gets chunked a little bit there by Berserker and Vulcan. This is something that I am really happy to see just based on the terrain changes. I remember back when the changes first came in for this season, there was plenty of cheesy clips going around with bottom lanes and junglers doing just that, going around for that surprise pathing. Yeah, I think it's smart, right? You just get instant value out of the Guardian proc as well from Vulcan. He starts mm -hmm. with the E, they get a little bit of chunk. It is going to be Busio that's farming. He's starting with the Doran's Ring, Senna's on support item. So it is going to be that fasting Senna, the farming karma here. Uh, and just going for what could be, you know, low risk play, but maybe medium reward. Hey, maybe they go up a little bit too far and you get a good chunk and you get an yeah. advantage in that 2v2. Because FlyQuest for their side, it's really about the poke. They don't want to commit to all ins with the Senna Karma. They have to whittle you down, stay high on health, utilizing those Senna Qs for pastor heals and damage. Uh, and really just try to play a little bit more of a slow burn. All right, let's track a, a track inspired right now because he did what's become pretty common now is a one quadrant clear into recall for longsword mm -hmm. uh, start on a lot of these AD junglers. So inspired's coming back out with his first purchase with that extra AD from the longsword gives you the extra advantage and a little bit of a scrap. Well, Inspired clearing through that blue side quadrant now, and you can see the same thing being done by Blabber, who is probably going to finish just slightly ahead of him again because he didn't have to go back and complete that first shot. 34 to 35 on the treats, so they're still both around the same point here in terms yeah. of their jungle progression. I mean, basically, this this clear where you do three camps space and get a longsword is only advantageous if you can actually make something happen with the longsword. Otherwise, you're yeah. just doing a slower six camp clear, right? Because Blaver can actually look to base here. But if they do meet up bot or they meet up at a scuttle, you have that extra AD, you have that extra little bit of combat power that potentially can make a difference in these fights. Yeah, exactly. With both of them starting on the same side of the map, I can see how you can predict it as we're going to end up fighting over something. Whether it's a crab, whether it's bottom lane, it's most likely going down that way. But Inspired now pathing back up towards the top side of things as Blabber has already secured the bottom river scuttle crab so the long sword doesn't end up getting to make a whole lot of impact just yet inspired yeah he's not going to get anything yeah, I mean, <laughs> he, he was seen by the minion, minions as well yeah. and, and Jojo also obviously putting that ward but just trading the scuttles for now uh, what it also does set you up for is if uh, he stays out here for another 50 seconds the void grub early arrival mm. um, it's super nice to just be there immediately when void grub spawn yoinking the first one you can instantly take those if you have smite first one is uh, immediately toast especially to a Lee Sin that has execute damage Jojo continuing to put the pressure here on Jensen, shutting him back. Not a whole lot of mana left for the Talia to work with. But this is actually pretty concerning because Jensen already TP'd back and he's that low. Yeah. Jojo hasn't even based, right? So Jojo's going to be able to reset here. If he bases, immediately TPs and can actually lock Jensen in this lane for a little bit longer, it can get concerning for Jensen. So what Jensen's going to try to do is as soon as Jojo bases, he's going to try to actually reset the wave, bounce it, and get a base off himself. Oh, bottom lane, Masu forced to flash back as Berserker and Vulcan find first blood in the 2v2. Kalista Renata doing what you draft him to do. Ooh, I want to see the very beginning of that because Vulcan looked like he was able to land a nice handshake. Uh, flash answered there as Berserker chased him down and first blood. This Cloud9 bottom oh, lane! Oh my goodness, man! You disrespect them once, all right. You disrespect them twice. This bottom lane's over. They're still back. <laughs> Cloud9 <laughs> in playoffs. All right, Jojo here, uh, fishing around. Looks like it'd just be the control word, though. And they're going to sacrifice the grubs on top side. Of course, Blabber did have the later recall since Inspired went for the early longsword one. So um, there is the Doran's blade difference, which is pretty popular for a lot of AD junglers. Remember? There is going to be a nerf pretty soon where Doran's yeah. Blades will be uh, unique with uh, jungle items and support items, so you won't be able to do this for long. But Blabber grabs one while you still can. And we saw Jensen go back to base to heal up. He arrives oh. back into lane, and he's already in some trouble. Whippo, now nah, he's not going to end up falling for the trap there, getting beat up underneath the turret, so he'll escape. That was actually really close, though, because he, he kind of did. He got knocked under the tower, but Fudge didn't quite have the damage to finish off the cannon, so the turret didn't actually swap aggro over onto the Renekton. So uh, nice little attempt there by Fudge, but doesn't quite have the damage to burst down those minions. Otherwise, I think Whippo could have been in a lot of trouble. Flabber, not six, but he is PTA. He does have a D-Blade. He is really strong early, and this could be trouble for FlyQuest. Masu and Busio trying to get back underneath the turret. Blabber nicely done with the ball breaker. Comboed with the 
flash to get past Busio and immediately secure another kill on Masu. And before, in order to get into that position, he did a really nice Q over here through uh, around the ward while support just cleared out the ward. Then he waits for his Q cooldown to come back up, then goes for the gank from behind, but mid. Jojo now in trouble as Inspired looks to bring the extra burst to set Jensen up for success. FlyQuest finally respond and get their first kill of the game. Yeah, Inspired flashing behind him. Almost, almost looked like he thought he had ult there for a second, but I guess he's probably just trying to dodge a spell or something. Either way, nicely done. Are able to get that kill. It's a good vision play that was kind of eerily reminiscent of the one that Blabber made in his last playoff series that you did a breakdown on, Kobe. Uh, really just playing on the edge of vision there. Blabber, though, back down to bot side. This time he's six now, so the ulti is prepped and ready. They know that Lee Sin is on top side, so there is an angle to potentially dive, and FlyQuest is just going to have to evacuate. Yeah, this is so scary, man. The Vi, plus when you have to deal with Renata having a bailout, it just makes the turret so dive so much more powerful because the opportunity to trade is so heavily reduced. C9 up one and a half thousand gold, two kills and three grubs. Yes, FlyQuest got that first Drake, but I feel like if you got to pick which side you want to be on, especially comparing bottom lane, Berserker's plenty out farming his counterpart in the Karma. Yeah. He's already got a 200 gold bounty. This is what C9 fans want to see. And look at that gold in the mid lane. Even with the kill, barely a little bit of a lead there for Jensen. I think the biggest discrepancy is the flash difference, but uh, Jensen mm -hmm. is playing into Vi Talia combo, so uh, still very dangerous even with his flash. Blabber just has to be a little bit cognizant. Make sure you don't flash to or ult too close to tower. Jensen brings you into a bad spot. Um, but they definitely still can pull off a lot of pressure right now. Blabber with his ultimate ready. And I feel like Cloud9 is going to be really happy about how the top lane is going. You're just playing this tank, Gragas, up there, who's just farming even against Whippo on yeah. the Renekton. It's been very quiet. Gragas scales incredibly well. Uh, Fudge was such a standout in their previous series against 100 Thieves, really was dominant against Sniper, had all these great counter picks, but he's showing, hey, he can play the other side of it, he can play weak side, doesn't need that jungle attention, and as long as you're just chilling and farming up here, you are so happy as the Gragas. I mean, it's kind of going back to what Vulcan was talking about when we heard from him right before the series started, right? When he says, hey, we're expecting mid lane to win, so as long as the sides don't do anything egregious or bad, we're chilling, and so far, bottom lane is absolutely smashing, Fudge is neutralizing, and C9 is invading the FlyQuest jungle, stealing away that blue buff. Yeah, using their big, big push advantage in bottom lane to go for some of these invades. And of course, JoJo's calling, hey, Inspired has no flash still from the flash that he pulled on me in mid lane. So Blabber, come over here. We're going for the invade. You have ult ready. Ooh. Another nice knockback there from Fudge's ulti, but not enough to really threaten anything serious on Dubwipo's Renekton. Yeah, I think, again, it's just basically a sustained play. Uh, this is actually pretty nice for, for Bupo. Being able to get the plant there kind of bails him out of a bad situation. Doesn't actually have to use his recall just yet and TP back, so going to be able to save that. Uh, and Fudge is just looking for these trades. You try to utilize your passive in matchups like this. You just try to constantly chip them down, and it's often your mana bar versus their health bar, which is going to kind of run out first. These trades kind of important now, too. Uh, Never mind. All right, we get the ultimate out of Inspired, but kind of important because second grubs are available right now as mid lane also trading here. So once they got the ult advantage now on cooldown on Inspired, yeah. uh, with Blabber not using his, but at least it Sin Kick being down, gotta expect uh, they should be able to go for six grub play here for Cloud9. Could be a pretty big snowball in gold. One thing FlyQuest does have going for him right now is control over the top side. Whippo shoving another wave in, trying to collect the money on the first turret plate. Fudge does not have a lot of resources still to work with, nearly out of mana here, but does have the Unleashed Teleport ready to return to base and bring him back into the fight if it does end up becoming a scrap over these grubs that Blabber is just now starting up. Jensen flashing away from the seismic shove here in mid lane. Yeah. There's that ever important summoner spell we're talking about on this immobile mage. It's all these small wins that are like, yeah, okay, grubs are free, grubs are so free free right now. There's no kick on Lee Sin. Now there's no flash on mid. Uh, you know, we just had the full health teleport back from Jojo. The freest six grubs ever here for Cloud9. And not currently the response of Dragon quite yet. Honestly, if, if Blabber finishes this up pretty quickly, they could even retain control down here because Berserker and Vulcan just waiting in this brush, guarding the bottom side of the map. And you gotta say, six grubs, it feels so good when you can secure those as your jungler and your lanes are already winning, right? Because mid lane has been pushing in constantly, bot lane has been pushing in constantly, top is neutral or getting shoved, but it doesn't really matter because this is gonna help Vulcan, Berserker, Jojo accelerate their game, potentially take even more plates away as FlyQuest gonna start this up on Vision. Blabber's coming out from base, looks like they may be too late to contest, but they are 
potentially moving around. That bot lane is going in, and they're going to TP. Yeah, even if they can't contest the objective, they want to try to find a fight afterwards. Fudge making his way over. Drake still at about 2k. Blabber comes over the wall. They engage immediately right on top of Inspire. They're looking to burst him down, and he's already gone. Berserker gets the kill as JoJo flashes back over the wall to stay alive. The hostile takeover hits Masu and Whippo both, but C9 is going to be careful. It's going to be Whippo securing the Drake, and FlyQuest is ready to fight. Masu gets the kill credit on Blabber, and FlyQuest are not just going to let C9 run the show. I think Blabber used his smite in the kill. He didn't actually have the smite for the dragon there at all, so they just walk up. I'm not sure if they track that or just wanted to take the fight either way, but Whippo just walks up, takes that dragon. A great start for Cloud9, turns bad as FlyQuest punish. Yeah, when you see the Vi still whacking the dragon at like 400 health, 300 health, you're like, oh, he hasn't smited yet. Oh, Does pretty sure he doesn't have it. So the spectator uh, is always, always is always really bugged on the cooldowns yeah. for summoner spells, so it's it's hard to, to trust if, if that or not. But uh, he obviously did not have it when they were hitting dragon. So the chase back here definitely fortunate here for Blimbo oh. to be able to go in and get it. Yeah, that was down to 38, and everyone on 5-9 kind of stopped hitting it because they realized, okay, FlyQuest is coming in. They're probably expecting Blabber to be able to smite and finish. Uh, but either way, a little bit of an oopsie there from Cloud9. Still up in gold, though. But FlyQuest does have a nice in towards a potential soul here. And it is an ocean soul, uh, which is a really powerful one. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal to not end up having to go even on these early drakes. JoJo getting dove. Nice play from Inspired, kicking him right back into the waiting arms of Busio and Jensen. FlyQuest now near Nearly got this game tied up in kills. It's a pretty close one. It is, and Busio is kind of getting online. He's got his malignant stun here already. So he's gonna be feeling good about that. Eclipse done for Inspired as top lane just gonna be scrapping it up. Not too much gonna come from that. But JoJo, the target of quite a lot of attention, clearly Inspired wanting to shut him down, has been going mid. He spent a couple flashes already specifically on that mid laner. Yep. Uh, this is nothing new for JoJo. This has been really what we've been seeing over the last couple of years. People are nonstop putting that attention towards him. But I will say it's a little, a little bit atypical for him to die to it this much. He has been getting better and better at actually avoiding it. So FlyQuest mm -hmm. executing well and being able to punish Cloud9 mid laner. All right, let's see what Blabber can uh, respond with here because he's got his Thunder Sky done. He has his ultimate ready mm -hmm. here on the Vi. So they're going to try and force something to start up the Rift Heralds to get some more tower pushing power for themselves. Looks like with the, the later reset for FlyQuest, I think they're just coming out to cover yeah. lanes and there's not going to be any fight over the actual Herald itself. Of course, this objective isn't as big of a deal as it used to be uh, last season, but still quite nice mm -hmm. in being able to push, especially if you do have six grubs, then you get a bunch of void mines if you drive it, yep. uh, and you can swarm uh, one of these outer towers, namely mid is usually the most successful choice. And there we go, pop it mid. Exactly, they want to do just that. The charge alone will not kill the turret from this health, but with the wave already built up, with the amount of players that they had present for the push, they can hard force that one down. <laughs> C9, collect the first turret of the game. They look so goofy when there's that many, man. It's just a clown car, all the little grubs <laughs> popping out. Dude, a Rift Herald push with Belveth is now one of the funniest things in League of Legends because it's just so much garbage all over the screen. It looks like you're playing an old RTS. Get game. a York in there. Yeah. Oh, I just checked. That swarm of Void Mites did 21 damage to the secondary Let's turret. go. <laughs> nice. Good it's job. A, it's about the quality of the damage. Uh -huh. uh -huh. it, it looked really it looked, intimidating. It was, a, it was a cool 21 damage. Oh, yeah. that was that's. <laughs> they're going to need that later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if that tower just barely dies later to like a single caster minion yeah. auto attack, mm -hmm. that was the we're grubs. all going to remember this moment. FlyQuest are taking over the top side river now, though. Unfortunately for them, there's not really a whole lot left here right now. Cloud9 have controlled everything that spawned inside of that pit so far in these first 15 and a half minutes of gameplay. But our next neutral objective will be the third Drake, the first one of those ocean Drakes that will be spawning this game here in just over 60 seconds. Cloud9 obviously showed they were already ready to contest the previous one. It just got a little bit goofy. So I'm expecting us to have another fight over Drake number three. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think you want to be giving Fly a free in towards Soul. Uh, that is kind of their major win condition right now. That's going to be what they're looking for. Uh, we're looking across the item completions pretty even across the board. I would say maybe a little bit more power on the FlyQuest side for now as there's some kind of scaling items, things like the Roa that need a lot of time to scale up here for Fudge. Good uh, safe play here from JoJo too. You know, Inspired spent a lot of time waiting around. They've really had a target on JoJo, him plus Jensen. Um, constantly looking for these plays, but 
no opportunity on the top side before the reset here for Dragon. This is also kind of interesting from Vulcan. So he's going Redemption Rush, which is pretty atypical, but I actually quite like this against a Huey because so much AoE in these fights ah. that I really do think it is about answering that. You throw out the E, you shield up a lot of people, you drop that Redemption immediately when that AoE is coming through, and you can kind of potentially reset the fight from what could be a devastating situation. Also, Cloud9 have a lot of utility on their team to be able to force the location of a fight. When you have Vi Ultimate and Renata Ultimate here, you can keep them in place for the duration. Tactical nuke redemption. Exactly, for the, <laughs> for the big redemption <laughs> to land. Well, the Drake has spawned and the fight is ready to kick off. Let's see who's actually going to end up engaging here. Blabber jumping back up the wall, looking for a potential wraparound. Yeah, I'm gonna guess Blabber's gonna be the one doing it. Uh, Renata ultimate here is definitely something FlyQuest also have to be cognizant of. So they're spreading out. They, they cannot group up here. It kind of fills up the river when uh, when you've got a good position there for Vulcan. Like the banana bush control for Cloud9 here. They've got control ward yep. in it. Uh, really helps out in their target choice now. And JoJo's going for a mid lane. Oh, he was he was walking towards mid lane, towards that, that minion wave, but they're just gonna let the wave crash into tower. He's gonna look for an angle, I think, here for the ult. He try to cut some... Yeah. Oh, nice! He finds Jensen and forces the flash back over the wall. Dawning Shadow to make sure their mid laner stays alive. Comes out for C9. Berserker's already at half HP. Whippo at half now, too. They want to maintain control over the Drake for FlyQuest, but they ain't gonna do it. The hostile takeover flies out, and Fudge might just drop the Spiraling Despair. He'll barely hold on. As Inspired is trapped back inside the pit, and the Drake's still at 1,700 HP. FlyQuest secures the objective, and nobody's dead on either team. Nicely done there by FlyQuest. They found the size shove on a Jensen, but Jensen poked out Berserker so much that he couldn't even really enter the fight, even after Redemption, and him picking up the Honey Fruit, he was still pretty low, so again, Cloud9 can't find the angle here, and that's three straight dragons for FlyQuest. Cloud9 will get a little bit of gold off the back of this, but you're starting to get nervous if you're on the Cloud9 side. Yeah, you certainly are, with the way that that dragon fight went, if the next one also uh, goes the same way, you, you really have a hole to dig yourself out of. I do like that they still as soon as uh, they didn't have follow-up damage on Inspired, and Inspired flashed away from Blabber ulting him uh, and trying to go for that inside the Dragon Pit, then they were like, you know what? We're not getting this Dragon. They back out. Too much poke damage. Fudge had already been pushed out to like 50 HP maybe. And so they just run mid to try and at least get a Constellation Prize. Got that secondary turret. C9 up 2,000 gold with Jensen and Inspired up here in the top lane, just allowing Jensen to push out, making it look like, oh man, Hui's just trying to push the side lane. Be a shame if you ganked him. Maybe bait Cloud9 into a play that they aren't quite ready for, but it does not look like C9's interested in that whatsoever. Berserker here still on the Kalista 3, 0, and 1. Most kills of anybody on either team. Blade of the Rune King completed. This champion has so much outplay opportunity. Especially yeah. when you're up against stuff that's got to land skill shots like the way when you got to try to hit them with a center root or something like that. And Berserker needs to continue playing like playoff Berserker, I think, for C9 to get the dub here. And, and he also needs to rely on some teammates here to be able to hold them in place because Kalista's most scary thing is playing into big range. And when you're outranged by Huey and then Senna's soul starts stacking up and, and there's there's karma cues coming at you, there, there's a lot of range there on FlyQuest, a lot of poke damage that can be really annoying. And we saw the early stages of it in the last fight. So sometimes it can be really annoying for Kalista to actually close that range. But when you do, it just blows open. If you have a good Gragas engage, Vi ultimate, you know, into Talia combos, then it can be very explosive. But if FlyQuest can control it and get the that poke damage down they only need one more dragon um, you know one more successful fight here for them to be able to get uh, a lot of control i just think flyquest played so well around that potential engage from cloud nine they were so well spread out there was no one that could actually be two-man body slam two-man grag assaulted at any point even when blabber went in the rest of the team from flyquest then steps forward and actually zones off the follow-up they're not able to come in and actually do anything off the back of that vial so FlyQuest really positioned well, and I just think limited Cloud9's options. So Berserker didn't even really get the auto attack. He did nothing in that last fight. So he has all the gold, but if you can't get a range, you're not going to do anything with it. And I like how FlyQuest are playing really safe around these Jensen flash timers. Jensen on the way still has not died, even though enemy team has so much engaged. Uh, and when he does have his cooldown on his flash, they just revert to farming, back to side lanes here. Okay, everybody keep it calm. Uh, but that champion does so much AoE damage, has a lot of range, 
So it can make it very problematic for, for Cloud9, especially if they wait the cooldown and get his flash back up for the extra safety. Yep, that flash cooldown has about 45 seconds left on it right now. And that next Drake will not be spawning for another 90 or so. And this is the huge fight that we will be looking forward to. Jojo staying very far at range from this minion wave, just wants to clear it all out. Jensen's just chilling. And Inspired's in that yeah, side He's still in he there. Doesn't, he doesn't know. Jojo's so. never going up there, though. He, he, is, he is avoiding the Inspired camp pretty well. Inspired. Going to be spotted out by that one. So Jojo's instincts are now proven correct from the Cloud9 point of view, as Inspired and Jensen are once again going to retreat back towards that Tier 1 turret. FlyQuest still have not claimed any turrets from C9 so far this game. C9 with the two that they managed to bring down there in the mid lane, but the outer turret still standing in both those sides. And even though, you know, Renekton had a little bit of extra CS on Fudge, you know, Fudge with the scaling Gragas build, Seraphs has transformed and Rod of Ages is up to seven stacks. So he is feeling quite good about this. You get a decent amount of AP in this. You get the extra survivability of the shield, so much extra sustain and health here. Um, the, the double scaling items build feels quite nice once you get past 20 uh, something minutes here. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, this 30 HP that was left on Dragon when Wipo actually takes it away, that changes the, the feeling of this game so much. Because yeah. if you have two Dragons to one right now, you're not feeling the pressure. But for Cloud9, this could potentially be a game losing fight if they do, in fact, fail to execute on it. So they are trying to play through mid, they're trying to mix it up a little bit. And it is kind of this 5v5 skirmish to get control of mid and then move down to the river and try to get Pryo towards that Dragon. We'll see if Cloud9 just starts it up immediately. Dragon spawning right now. Blabber and Fudge. Those are your two big go buttons on C9. FlyQuest trying to be careful about how they approach. Jojo Pion dropping down that seismic shove, forcing Whippo to pop the slice early. Won't get the dice since he didn't find a target. Good wall. Weaver's wall to get rid of everybody else. And Blabber's going to claim the Drake before FlyQuest can say anything about it. But the damage on Jojo is huge. Jensen ends up getting the kill. And now C9's got to be careful. Berserker waiting in the tri brush. Whippo doesn't want to face check it. FlyQuest are just going to march as five back up towards mid and back up towards the Baron. Yeah, they could even go to Baron. We'll see if they actually do have the confidence to start it up. They're at least going to push for this tier one mid. So they're not going to go for that. Baron. Cloud9, good job securing this, but a good job as well from Whippo getting it onto Jojo, taking him down. Cloud9 on the other side, we're trying to burst down Inspire, but he had a nice flash over that Weaver's Wall to avoid the cast coming out there from Fudge that would have spelled his death. All right, FlyQuest getting some more money for themselves, getting some uh, tower gold as well on top of the kill gold. Let's take another look at how it started out. Because the wall was good from Jojo, but keep your eyes on Jojo back here as Whippo goes to the side. Nice little job there. He goes into the brush from the side uh, of the red wall here. And then, surprise, Crocodile in the brush right behind you lands the stun and deletes that mid laner. That's another one where it looks funny watching it with God mode where we can see yeah. everything. But if you watch that from Fog, he doesn't see him going to that brush. He has right. no idea that he's right beside him because of intelligent pathing there from Whippo. And that's something that maybe we could actually see from them on the desk. They could highlight that. Because uh, those are those plays that are so subtle, but are really, really impressive. Knowing the limits of that vision, taking the maximum advantage of it, JoJo gets com completely caught off guard. Metal Gear Renekton completes his objective, and JoJo is now 0-3-0 and zero on the Talia this game. Yeah, he's had a couple good placements with things like the walls, but it's definitely not the performance that you'd want to see. No, not at all. And I mean, if you get isolated and stunned up, it's actually so devastating because it sets up for the Severing Bull from Huey so easily. And when yeah. you have that ISO damage, it is a huge amount of damage that can actually come from very far away. Let's check how much it is right now, just for, just for fun. Severing Bolt currently does 838 damage if you are isolated or locked down. And that's before not item procs, runes, etc. He has yeah, airy. Not pretty. Uh, he has items that can proc, so yeah. Um, look at Blabber's, or look at uh, Berserker's gold as well. Uh, he's, he's looking pretty rich still here on Cloud9. This... This is definitely something that they need to utilize. I mean, they have not gotten a good Callista fight since the lane stages. The lane stages, really good for them. They're able to get a nice lead, but they haven't been able to do much with here. And he does have a big bounty on his head. Meanwhile, another attempt here. Inspired looking for one of these side lane plays, but uh, Berserker's got a big bounty on his head too. So uh, by the same token, if FlyQuest can actually focus on him and get that kill, Blabber getting pretty aggro here, trying to contest for that Grom. C9 going to work together with him to steal away the enemy blue buff 
from FlyQuest, get that team-wide bonus for everybody as the four-man squad continues their invade of this blue side jungle for Fly. They'll steal away even the wolf cam next. Blabber going in for the ball breaker. Flash, they'll burst down inspired. They'll take him out. And Berserker's in a rampage. C9 got a 5v4 for the next 35 seconds. Nicely done there by Cloud9. And now with the jungler dead, for sure they're gonna go to Baron. Inspired playing with fire. He was dancing so close while Jensen was taking the tier one top. He didn't need to be that close. Gets caught by the Q flash from Blabber. They're not even gonna start it up. I'm actually really surprised. I guess they're too worried about the AOE from Jensen and from Busio. But and, that's and a lot to spend Jensen there. also just cleared the top tower while yeah. that pick was happening. So he pushed the wave all the way on top side up to secondary tower here for Jojo. So this this way getting very rich. Solo tower gold now for Jensen as well. Um, I mean, they, they open up the map even a lot more on that side too. It's just, I think it's just too dangerous to, to pin yourselves in t inside this Baron pit. But then the, the thing becomes that that was a wasted flash basically from Blabber. Like you got 300 gold. 300 gold is not worth it for your flash when Soul is on the table here in a minute, right? Like that is actually problematic. You know, if you're not going to be able to get a follow-up objective, it's just a trade. It is really not worthwhile. That's why I keep complimenting FlyQuest for how calm they are in this game. You can see during that, even while the pick is happening, Jensen just keeps on split pushing top. He gets the objective. So, okay, yeah, they gave up the golden in, uh, in jungle, but they did get that outer tower. And now he's got two needlessly large rods. He's looking for his death cap. That uh, that three items power spike for Jensen for Huey is going to be massive. Berserker does have his terminus now though, so he does have his three items. Whippo going to get jumped on here for the very start, but Fudge is stunned up. Cast goes out, but it doesn't get much. Fudge at about half HP. Whippo's even lower. Sterix keeps him going. As Inspired still looking for the angle, a big kick ends up hitting three. Vulcan pop first as Jensen goes on a killing spree and Blabber's about to drop. Berserker tries to get away, but Jensen's painting their blood all over the floor. Oh! and Berserker falls. Fudge tries to run, but the big man ain't going nowhere. Shut down over to Inspired. Soul over to FlyQuest. Fight for FlyQuest. FlyQuest team fighting there was just beautiful. Spacing out Berserker, not allowing him into the fight, not allowing him to get anything done whatsoever. This range advantage is just the biggest thing for FlyQuest. Massive. They're going to get all the kills, plus the soul, plus the Baron. That's that's wrapping up the game right there. They just grabbed everything off the table, Flowers. Absolutely everything except Jojo, but they've already killed him three times hey, this game, already so had that. they're not even too worried about that. Baron about to drop. C9 have been in a gold lead the entire game, but when the pendulum swings, it swings hard, and FlyQuest are now the ones calling the shots. All right, so while we're watching this, just remember that this way damage is going to be magnified by a completed death cap after this fight. Uh, ultimate knocks him out of the fight initially, and then they all turn on Whippo, but he survives on the Renekton uh, with his Steric Gage. Yeah, Berserker is just having so much trouble actually getting in and autoing. As soon as he gets a target that he can hit, Whippo, Whippo starts backing off. The poke starts landing on him. There's Way poke being thrown at him. There's Busio poke being thrown Whee! at him. Senna steps forward as well, outranging him there. It's so difficult for him to actually make use of this Rage Blade, stack it up, get something done. FlyQuest just play that out so well, so patient through these minutes where Cloud9 had this big early game lead. Now you've got the range advantage with an Ocean Soul. So you have the sustain advantage there. Easy, easy to proc it. The Siege here, complemented by the Baron buff from FlyQuest is gonna take its toll on mid lane and then just swap right up to top side where minions are coming down. And that kick from Inspired was just sick. Through multiple members there, so well placed, you know, disengaging the fight, buying time for that bailout to expire. Uh, FlyQuest just really playing towards their win conditions here, not getting rattled under pressure whatsoever. Yeah, it's it's something with Lee Sin where he's a much more flexible champion than everyone always just trying to insect people. But when you've got range advantage, peeling and, and using it straight forward are quite nice. And now FlyQuest rotate right on back over to Whippo where they have another minion wave at tower. Yeah, FlyQuest have really built this lead up now as they try to get the engage on the Whippo. He gets himself away for now with a hostile takeover. Flew out, Berserker's already got the first kill on the Croc. Now they're gonna jump in for Busio. They'll look for him too. Inspire with a nice kickback on the Jojo, but it ain't gonna matter. Inspire drops next. C9 just got three, and they're about to make it four. Masu tries to kite him out, but Blabber and Berserker are in hot pursuit. You wanted to see a Callista fight? There's your Callista.
list to fight. How much can they get, though? There's only the one cannon minion they can try to tank for. They're rushing down mid, so they at least want to try to get this inhibitor. Jensen could maybe actually snipe it out with a severing bolt or something. Kill that one minion would mean a lot here. Sever protect the cannon the president. <laughs> they they protect him from the, <laughs> the fissure. Get down, Mr. <laughs> cannon. <laughs> They're still gonna be able to continue the push here though. It's, ooh, good flash oh. from Jensen. Death timers too short, obviously, to go for an end, but they will get an inhibitor for their troubles. We are getting a good game one, boys. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that is... That's the difference between getting that engaged and the, the all-in of this shorter range but high explosive damage team. Let's take a look at how they actually got it this time. So everybody's rotating back over to the minion wave that Blippo had up at tower. Then Blabber just goes for the closest person, ults Whippo while he's under tower, and then is able to get the Q to baby bump him back in for another tower shot. And this ulti from JoJo, locking them in, setting up for the hostile takeover from Vulcan, to me, that was really the defining moment of the fight. It makes it so there's no recourse for FlyQuest. You're locked in, you can't go forward into the hostile takeover, you can't escape over the Weaver's wall. That was really well positioned, really well executed. Cod9 saw their moment, they immediately pounced on it. That's what it's gonna take for them to find a way back into this game. FlyQuest still with a gold lead, but it's so minuscule at this point, it pretty much does not matter. They've still got that soul. And the thing that I'm looking at most right now is how synchronized these clocks are in mm -hmm. the top corners of the screen. It's two minutes until Elder. It's 2.15 until Baron. This game's going to become very chaotic very soon. The soul is really, really powerful, but you know what doesn't really care about soul is <laughs> Elder. So if you can get that, everything else is kind of off the table. It would be pretty much lights out, I think, for sure. FlyQuest gets it because they have so many ways to apply it and so much poke. But if Cloud9 gets it, likewise, hey, could, yeah. be, could be tough. An execute for your burst damage seems nice as well. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see, though, because Inspired's going on a long trip into enemy Very territory. Far, that Lee Sin is trying to get behind mid lane, but the minions are coming up soon. Yeah, if Inspired can Dojo get has an no angle, TV, by the big, way. But yeah, FlyQuest not going to get that angle they were looking for. Fudge pushed back by the presence of Inspired here, trying to create space for the team. Blabber and Fudge both going forward. Weaver's wall comes out, but it doesn't weave a whole lot. He got knocked off Blabber, Blabber and trying to get away. Yes, Whippo has managed to find Jojo, and he's looking to solo him out before the rest of the fight even starts dawning. Shadow over to the top. Jojo is low. They're going to grab him, and Jensen's taking a kill. FlyQuest is finding some health bars, and Inspired is chasing him down. Blabber's going to die next, and there goes Vulcan. Berserker will fight for his life here in the jungle. But another severing bolt is gonna take him so close to death's door. Fudge gets jumped on. The bolt gets sidestepped. Fudge and Berserker both still staying alive for now. As Inspired oh! gets picked off. Big play coming out from Fudge, but he'll pay for it with his life. Berserker's trying to just thin the waves, do whatever he can. It ain't gonna matter. The grasping maw pulls him down. We gotta get the replay of Whippo catching JoJo off the Talia wall. He was in the middle of the jungle between the team and where JoJo was trying to rotate from. Exactly. Look at this, look at this. He's in here waiting for him. Another surprise, Crocodile! That was so insanely well done. The new JoJo had no TP. The only way he joins the team is with the ult. So he drops a pink ward, plays off vision, lays a trap, and finds him on the ulti. Fly Quest have been inside JoJo's head, one step ahead of JoJo the entire game, constantly camping him. Elder. Whippo especially. Multiple assassinations on the Cloud9 mid laner. And Elder's under fire. Now it's a send everything in there. You know, Blabber just trying to try and get a steal. Q over when it gets low and hope for the best. Well, FlyQuest has to take this pretty slow because they're still waiting on Inspired to get back with the rest of the team and have their own smite there. That's going to give Cloud9 no time flash. to get everybody in there as well. All right, FlyQuest, now they've got Inspired. Now they're ready to burn it a little bit faster if they need to. Elder at half HP. C9 still looking for an angle. Blabber has a blast cone ready to fly over the wall if he needs it, but now there's no more blast cone, so he's gonna have to use his vault breaker. Fudge at about one third HP, still looking on the approach here. There's a Renata ulti over the wall, but the Dawning Shadows wouldn't respond. They've got the Elder, and they've got JoJo yet again. Jensen now dominating as FlyQuest continue the chase. Busio's ready to lock them down with the slows, and Berserker is executed with the power of the Drake. Blabber and Vulcan aren't long for this world, and FlyQuest are on the a victory march. Busio goes up into the top lane just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure this one's all wrapped up. 40 seconds on the death timers, and only a big man with a barrel standing between FlyQuest and the Nexus.
fly quest, such intelligent play, so calm through this game. And it's only Fudge that stands between them and a game one victory. He'll clear out the wave for now. Next wave's coming up. The barrel's cooking. It doesn't cook for long enough. It only gets one little minion. Now the teleport's showing up just to guarantee this does not stop here. Inspired, keeping Fudge pushed all the way back into the fountain. Fly quest, weather the storm, and come out on top in game one. Now, Inspired's Lee Sin didn't have the best scoreline on this team, but was so instrumental in so many of these fly quest plays. Yep. Jensen goes deathless in this game, playing the Hui mid, playing around the flash cooldowns. Absolutely impressive game one from FlyQuest. I also have to say, man, Whippo's game IQ is just off the charts. Like the intelligence he showed in this game of where to position, it's not mechanics, it's plays that you could press the buttons, but you wouldn't think to be in that spot at that time and right. execute it in that way. When he sneaks around the red buff brush to get Jojo off by that one dragon, when he's lying in wait for the Weaver's wall on a pink, knowing exactly the path that Jojo would have to take ulting back to the team, those are two such incredibly high IQ League of Legends plays that it's just beautiful to watch someone straight up outthink their opponents in that way. And he stole the Drake at 31 HP. <laughs> I say that kind of jokingly, but it also warped the way that the mid game played Get out. Get you a yeah. Whippo who can do it all. Yeah. Absolutely. But before we head back to the lounge, it's time to take a look at our LCS Connected Comms replay presented by AT&T, voted on by chat. We're finishing, okay? Take a little bit too much. I'm looking at these guys. Nice. 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 Let's fight to fight, 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 chase, 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 chase. Maybe, okay, I'm I'm terrorist, I'm I'm terrorist, I'm I'm terrorist. Terrorist. no, just let them come yeah, I no idea, we should come Okay, okay, go Nash then. Does she have TP? She, she does. does. Welcome back to the LCS Lounge. We got Dokla here to break down one of the big fights in this game. And Dokla, this was kind of a display of how hard it is for Kalista to team fight in the late game here? Yeah, I mean, Kalista right now, I think is what, 3-0, and has a 1K bounty on her <laughs> head, and she's, you know, the main character for C9 here. And we're just gonna take a look at in this fight how hard it is for him to play this whole scenario out. So C9 gets a good engage. They're able to hit Renekton who split off from the team here. But um, yeah, just- so right here, Berserker. Yeah, basically Berserker is just caught between like just guy. so much chaos in this fight. And just wanna look at like how hard it is for him to play. Like he's autoing as much as he possibly can, but like the Renekton just won't die, he's too tanky. And Inspired hits a great kick here, gets a three-man kick. But um, after this, like, Kalissa's damage is just gone. Um, there's yeah. really nothing to do. They have a way from top here and a Karma here to just chase them. Yeah, and I like the, the choke, I know. like the range discrepancy because essentially you're gonna see this guy way back here kill the people way down here. Yeah, and whereas Berserker was free hitting the Renekton and didn't do anything. Yeah, and at this point the fight's lost. Like Kalissa just can't carry this fight anymore. A Mantra Q comes down, hits Kalissa. And um, this just goes to show the team comm difference. Even though C9 had an early game lead, it was just didn't really translate into anything really because the, just the range discrepancy is just too much. Yeah, it does bring me back to the question we had earlier in the lounge though, uh, of if C9 is back. <laughs> um, I don't know, like if they were back, they would have been able to capitalize on. Um, because so lead. we're now here, I'd say game one would be like, Probably this would be the data point. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe back, maybe back, because they had some yeah. highlights, uh, like you know, just two v two killing. But um, they they needed to like transition that lead into objectives before they're actually back. So they're yeah. they're not there yet. So maybe they over the course of the specify they'll figure out the trajectory to get there. But right now they're they're in the maybe back territory. Yeah, I mean, question as well for the rest of the lounge. Hit us. The early priority that Cloud9 used the Callista for. Because mm -hmm. they got multiple solo kills, yet they were down three dragons to zero at one point. They turned it into six grubs, but then didn't use the grubs for anything. Do you think that was like a bad choice or just bad execution after they got the six grubs? First trick, first trick they couldn't do anything after because they literally just got the 2v2 kill base and then Inspired just instantly started it yeah, with his big with that his tempo. Team yeah. Yeah. So the tempo couldn't really do much about that. And then that's when they actually just started losing fights around Drake. So it became harder for them for that. I point. mean, I'll say JoJo did get caught twice on like crucial moments yeah. where 
if he's in a better position, maybe he's going to be strong um, enough to like actually be a second carry threat in this game, but it just wasn't the case for majority of the game. Yeah, there was a second Drake fight that I think was really, really big for FlyQuest, mm -hmm. having Whippo be able to come in and kind of run through the entire team fight. Um, I, I do also think if you are going to prioritize like Grubs and Herald like that, um, maybe use your lanes assignments a little bit differently. Mm. Really, really try to like shove that advantage because if you can get all of those tier one outers down like super, super yeah. quickly and take over the map, then your setup is just so much better. And Callista is so great if you are able to set up with her around objectives. Yeah, I would have liked to see them like swap the lanes around after um, they had six rubs. Just send Callista to top lane, find a swap timer, and Gragas to bot. Because Gragas can clear the waves against um, Senna Karma, but mm -hmm. it's going to be much harder for Renekton to. And they could have taken tower plates and got a bigger gold lead off that. So I think a bit of a macro error from C9, but let's see how they adapt. All right, well, Clodden has to win three of the next four. They've selected red side for game two. And Inspired made a big impact in game one with the Lee Sin kicks. Let's hear from him on his first split back in the LCS. This split, uh, if I manage to do well with FlyQuest, I feel like everyone should uh, realize that I'm probably uh, like actually the best player of the jungle like in, in the West because I managed to have very really good result in Europe playing with a rookie team like it was back then Larsen and Finn when we were rookies then I go into EG and I have rookie AD carry and mid laner and I managed to win the split then I straight go into FlyQuest and I have rookie bot lane and I still managed to do good so I feel like it should be clear that why the team is doing good is, is me. I'm gonna look to flash on Rumble. Yeah. He's going very far up. Wait, wait, look, 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 look. Watch out, watch out, watch out. We got her. First it out. Flyquist are back in the game. They find the huge play. Their flash back from off from Inspired. The break last summer, I don't really know why it happened. I still really like the team, like especially Jojo. I think we, we really liked playing with each other. But during the offseason, we just got contacted by EG that we are all going to be dropped and uh, we'll have to look for a different opportunity, a different team. That was really shocking to me, so I just decided to take a split off because I didn't really have any good options that I felt like if I go to that team, I can actually uh, contest to, to win the whole series. I wasn't really surprised that he wasn't on our team, I think. <laughs> How do I say this in the nicest way possible? Yeah, I think some of the people making decisions on rosters are absolutely clueless. So I found it pretty egregious that I wasn't on a team, but the fact that he wasn't is like, whoa, you guys are trolling. <laughs> the number one trait that makes Inspired special is that he, he takes responsibility for everyone in the team in the most extreme way possible. And he will always make sure that everyone's playing the same game. And usually that's his vision, if players around him are playing poorly, like he will, he's relentless in making sure they actually step up and play well, and he will go through every situation and explain to them what he wants them to do, which is something that, like, this is what you hire coaches for, you know? That's, like, invaluable, and again, why he's so valuable to every team, and I think why every team that he plays with levels up so much. The break made me realize that I miss playing, like, so much, so after, like, two months of a break, I already wanted to play a little bit, but... Uh... I couldn't, I didn't, didn't have an opportunity, so yeah, I was a little bit bored. But it made me have way more motivation going into this split and playing again. Inspired and Jensen have just been combining so well throughout this game. Look at Freon! He's got Cleanse and he's got Flash still available, but he's hiding this one now. The Flash from Inspired is trying to connect the Sun. Yon flashes backwards, but the resets are pouring in! I think the only thing that can stop us from winning is C9. <laughs> C9 is scary because of Jojo. Like I know, like I played with him, I kind of made him. Right now I can see like so the stuff that he learned from me and he's applying it into his games while still using his talent that he always had. But right now he seems like a very all-rounded player and it's really annoying to face him. Having success in uh, these playoffs, I will be able to back up my words because right now I do believe I'm, I'm the best, but I think some people are still hesitating on confirming that. So if I win, everyone will have no doubt. Red Bull gives you wings.
cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. Welcome back to Champion Select for Game 2, FlyQuest versus Cloud9. FlyQuest got Dragon Soul, won Game 1. Cloud9, with the side selection, chose Red, mm. which is the same side that FlyQuest selected at the start of the series. And that's surprising, because most teams, after they lose, they opt to go on blue side. So they clearly have you know, value on red side, and let's see how they use it in draft. We were wondering off camera where the Callisto would go if they would let Masu have that on red side. The answer is no. They've taken out Callisto, Huey, and then Jensen's Oriana. Yeah, and just the quote on the screen from Fudge just talking about how it's just really difficult to, uh, you know, pick against or blind pick in general versus uh, Whippo. So yeah, nice I mean Whippo blinded yeah. last game yeah. and he had sure. two bands on red. But, yeah. Um, and no, he still absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean okay, Renek and Gragas is like a snooze <laughs> fast. Like, just just start the game at 15 minutes and then maybe something might happen. You were having an existential crisis about how the Renek and Gragas top lane matchup plays out past 12 minutes. Like, what's the point of even trading? <laughs> yeah. Just, just start proxying and have some fun. I don't know. 
Right off the bat, though, the Callista was banned by Cloud9. That is something we were pretty sure Masu was going to lock if it was up for first pick. But the Varus has gone through this draft, so we have the current Varus Senna trade. Yeah, and I, do, I will say this about a Senna draft for C9. I think one of my favorite drafts from them, uh, and when they looked so back, uh, was that kind of Nidalee Renekton topside, or just basically mm -hmm. anything that does allow them to play around topside, uh, because it does seem that Blabber is most comfortable usually playing around top lane, or when yeah. I think of Fudge and Blabber together, I do think of that first season they kind of spent together, uh, as we see the Nautilus locked in alongside Senna, and there are just so many different things you can bring to a Senna composition. Yeah, fully expecting this one to be Fasting Senna and just a big fat Nautilus. Any any questions around Berserker Senna was pretty much late to rest the last time we saw him play it. Actually had a really high mm -hmm. um, stacking on mm -hmm. that game. So it's going to be nice to see what C9 tends to pair with this. Usually, I mean, I, I, in week five, if I remember correctly, they had like a Renekton on three or something, and they had a Nidalee that followed. So like, if you, this is like a decent amount of setup for a carry jungle. Okay, you know? so they show the flex on Karma going to mid. So True. the response should probably be mid lane here for C9. But um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty strong. Like overall three ball comp for FlyQuest, kind of similar to what they had. I mean, they could just team. run back the Talia. Yep. Seems like a fine choice. It's interesting though, FlyQuest clearly has a lot going Yo. with this Karma oh. Flex strategy. Nice. That's, that's aggression right there from JoJo. One yeah. of the picks we were looking at this morning. Yeah, Chovy played it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, I think JoJo would, this is a very JoJo style champion, yeah. right? Like we have seen him, yeah, I mean, like after the Azir global ban, we were like, what is he gonna play to help out C9? And his first game was on Yone, so. It's not totally a Chovy thing. I, that is funny though, that it lined up in there. Yeah. I mean, this lane is pretty neutral. I mean, um, the lethal tempo nerfs don't really impact this lane because you're not necessarily fighting in the lane anyway. So once you get level, what, like seven or, between seven or nine somewhere, the break point is like lethal tempo is actually a buff. So um, kind of suits well for how uh, the Yon wants to play into the Karma lane. So I would say it's a pretty good lane and gives them the damage that they need because a mage for mid for C9 would not, I, I don't think he'd have enough damage in the team comp, so it sets him up pretty well. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about what four pick would be. Gut feel, of course, it, would, it looks like it would be jungle. Yeah. Lee Sin had a pretty big impact from FlyQuest side. Inspired did really well on it. And it's actually just been taking over playoffs as a, as a pick in general. Yeah. I mean, Viego could pair well. Um, any bruiser like Xin Zhao could do well too. So, okay. They double ban for top, which I don't know if I agree with. I mean, they're trying to like cover what Yon might be hard against with the Jackson Renekton, mm -hmm. but. Um, any chance they're holding that Yon as a flex? Yeah, like, that, that's what I was gonna ask. Is, do you, yeah, top, do you yeah. think they'd flex at top? Um, I'm trying to think of like any potential good lanes right now, and it's just hard to, like you can scale, but. Um, You've played some Yon top in your day. Yeah, I don't think you have necessarily <laughs> any like winning lanes outright, so I wouldn't. Really outside of like going top. outside of like Aatrox, right? Because that's the one that people yeah. would get into most. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's kind of where I expect the blind to be for FlyQuest, Aatrox here. And um, let's see how the rest of this draft might shape out. Yeah, currently FlyQuest have a lot of range. They definitely need a tank. So I could also see them just blind picking Gragas, although mm -hmm. having a potential counter pick against that would be tough. And then I think I mean, I'm actually really curious to see what Fudge counterpicks with. Mm -hmm. They can have such a strong top side with Yon Sejuani and another melee in the top lane, especially if they get to counterpick the matchup. Yeah, so. I think something like a Gwen could be really good here, depending on what the lane might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. No one would actually be able to get damaged. Yeah, your, get your, damaged your value damage. is really high, and the Flacos is all very short range. So um, if it's not Poke Varus, which I don't think it will be, then I think Gwen could be good here. Yeah. But with Gragas, I think most people default to Aatrox, and I think this lane is Relatively neutral, like sure Aatrox can have some pressure, but Gragas after like level seven just kind of neutralizes Aatrox in my opinion and um, it's kind of a stalemate. So I'm expecting an Aatrox, but yeah. if he has something yeah. else then I'd be excited. Gragas is such <laughs> a good pick on five, right? You're going out like just against Yone and the comp. Yeah. I mean, Rumble makes sense here. They do need AP for yeah. C9 mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily want to pick Gwen into Gragas because it's kind of a counter lane. So um, kind of fits out 
what C9 needs here. Okay. Emily, which side do you like more? Uh, I actually really like FlyQuest Comp. Um, I think they'll be able to pilot really well. I really like when Sinjo in particular has an enchanter on his side because he al you already have all of these moments where he like pops ult and he suddenly becomes like unkillable. Yeah, he can and with really a karma go to the arena, behind yeah. him, um, they have a lot of range. When C9 are going into them, they have responses with both the Gragas and the Renata. Um, so I actually really, really like this comp that Fly has put together. Sounds good. Looking forward to an exciting game, too. Flowers, Kobe, Zale, take it away. Thank you very much, everybody, and welcome back. It's time for our second episode of this series, man. Game number it's one show. was an exciting Yeah, I'm down for this yeah. series. Sometimes the, the cloud nine fly quest. Quest. Will the sequel be as good as the original, Kobe? Yeah. Sometimes the pilot's well, not great. I think, one was. I think the sequel will be because Cloud9 are running back. They're like, you know what? Hard engage, let's go harder. We must go <laughs> more engage. <laughs> they have guaranteed like Nautilus and Sejuani and a Yone with both, with two uh, champions that have really good AOE ults that go over the top. Mm -hmm. I think that's a key. It's like, this is actually way easier to pull off because Rumble Ultimate and Senna Ultimate, the range is insane. And so you just need a, one of these things to connect from Blabber, Jojo, or Vulcan. And then you've got so much layer damage over top that uh, I definitely expect them to get more beneficial fights for themselves than we yeah. saw in the, in the last one. Mm -hmm. Also, the like range discrepancy isn't as crazy for FlyQuest. Yeah. They do have the Renata on their side now, though, which is a pretty big uh, like AOE that you have to avoid when you're charging into. But um, I definitely, I definitely think we're gonna also get spicier Cloud9 early. Like Blabber is playing Sejuani with uh, double solo laners who can help proc your stun. All right, as we are currently stuck in a pause, let's go ahead and toss things down to Raz, who's standing by for an interview with C9 coach Mithy. Perfect timing, honestly. Thank you for taking the interview. Uh, first question from my side. You guys, guys had a crazy early game uh, start, but you weren't able to translate it. What went wrong in that last game, in your opinion? Yeah, I think we, um, like, because we killed them both, they got a few dragons. I think we could have planned better to give a few less. And then it just came down to fights, and I just think they they had the better end of us in in the fights. Uh, we so we just talked about how we can you know be more connected, more decisive uh, moving forward. And yeah, hopefully it works out. Perfect, thank you. And the next question is just more so about looking forward. What adaptations are you making? You already mentioned like team fight adaptations, but you can talk about the draft a little bit. You guys picked up Yone, and we're getting straight into the game. So what adaptations are you hoping for with the comp that you guys just picked up? Uh, well, our, I think our fighting is should be a bit more straightforward this game, uh, which will help, um, you know, developing into the series. And then we are, we are red side, so those are the two adaptations. So. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. And we're sending this one straight back to the casters. All righty, thank you very much, gentlemen, and welcome back, everybody. We are unpaused, we are locked in, and we are ready to go here for the second game. Azale, uh, Kobe, what do you guys think is the, uh, what's what's the secret sauce here for Cloud9? Flowers, we got to get, we got to jump on top of these invading top laners, man. All right, they're, all right. They're getting out of control. This is uh, every jungler's pet peeve. Bwipo, he body slams over. He gets the ward behind on red. Blabber, pretty smart rotation. He moves his Sejuani down to the other side of the map. But uh, the, the plague of top laners invading junglers for level <laughs> ones has... Uh, top laners revenge. Gotten out of control, but We're yeah. ganking the junglers now. Uh, it's really smart because Whippo uses the extra mobility. He knows that Blabber is starting on blue. Double range advantage is uh, on the other side now, and Vulcan can't really hook in here, so you kind of just have to take it. Uh, which is rough. You know, you can see Busio starting with the Guardian, so he's happy to take an early. Look at that movement on the wall. <laughs> oh, Vulcan finds the dredge line there. The in Berserker now backing up versus that double range that we're talking about. Uh, so when we had Sven on, he was kind of talking about some of these matchups where you are playing, you know, a farming melee champion like the Nautilus into some of these difficult double range matchups. And in his opinion, a lot of times you actually just had to kind of choose a moment to basically just hook in, trade out your health bar, you know, get a good trade and then just TP back and try to play the lane from parity from there. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see how they do want to play it out because it can be very difficult when they're stacking the wave on you to actually farm under your tower without giving up too much HP to the point where you actually can't really get any of the CS, right? So he's gonna have to pick and choose which minions he actually goes for and how much health he's willing to trade for those minions because this wave is huge and he needs to get some of it. 
And if we remember back to the previous game, it was around level three or four, I think, when Berserker and Vulcan were getting those isolated kills down here in the bottom oh, lane. They're just gonna give it to him. I, I think okay. this is a little bit surprising. I mean, so I guess they don't really know exactly where Sedwani is, so they are playing a little bit more respectful. So he's gonna take a super early base, buy a longsword, you know, get another potion here. Uh, but the cost of this is that you're not punishing the un under turret whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, you're hoping then potentially that you could lock Vulcan into a longer lane with more combat power. But because he has a TP, I don't think they're going to get too much from that. So a little bit more of the kind of passive style there from uh, from Masu takes the safer guaranteed play, but does give a lot of breathing room there to Vulcan, where I think he would have been in tough to get much of that farm. I also want to talk about some of the biggest changes in this game compared to last game, where mid lane okay. matchup is very, very, very different. Um, obviously, Jensen in the last one was playing very safe. He was playing into a Talia Vi, uh, was just focused on farming, and he was going to be the big artillery later. But Jensen on the Karma here into the Yone matchup has gone for the Comet plus the Scorch. Uh, he so far has 64 extra damage off of the Scorch, 149 off of the Comets. Uh, landing all those comments are pretty easy with uh, Karma into Yone. Mm -hmm. um, but he's really trying to get all that pressure out. Oh, nice handshake on Vulcan. He tries to get away with the last auto attack in the air. When because Lightning won't hit him! The potion! He lives off of potion juice! Man, that was so close. And I wonder if Inspired could have just W flashed there and actually finished him off, or would he have died had he done it? Uh, but it's going to mean Vulcan gets the TP back here, resets the health bar, now going to be in a decent spot. As uh, Blabber is going to arrive as well to try to cover, that was very nearly first blood here. That's about as close as it gets. Yep. Uh, drink your potions, kids. They keep the first blood away. And no one's going to even remember that now that Vulcan's gotten to teleport back with full health. Yeah. Uh, and Blabber has finished up his clear back out with a Kindle gem on the Sejuani to bottom side. Trying too. to make you remember it by showing you the replay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll remember one more time here. Uh, but the good handshake pulled him back uh, into range and almost got it. Oh, that is crazy close. And that W is, yeah. If he W flashes, he gets him for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. But the question is, do you get stuck under tower maybe and die? And if your calculation was that I was going to hit him anyway, then you wouldn't flash. So that I one's mean, a tough one to call, but that was so close. Exactly. It's so close that I can't really fault him and say, oh, yeah, you should have flashed no, for that. No, no, And in a lot of those situations, it's not like you can calculate the ignite perfectly. I probably would have thought he was going to die to the ignite, you know? Like, he was really, really low there, so you wouldn't want to commit that play. Uh, but definitely a bit unfortunate, and it does mean that it's a good reset from Vulcan. He doesn't die. He's actually up, like, or even, excuse me, in farm, so he's feeling good. Yeah, exactly, and they, they've got the Senna rotating up to the Grubs, the classic play here. Um, extra benefit of playing the Fasting Senna on bottom side, just roams up to the Grubs, grabs some souls with the rest of the team, get the objective, and you want that with this Cloud9 comp. Uh, you know, they're looking for, uh, for Blabber especially here to start some soft off later. And if that would have gone through, if there would have been that last little tick of damage to kill him off, it would have been around the same time as game number one, where we saw the bottom lane kills happening. Now Vulcan's in some trouble yet again, as he finds himself alone against the power of Varus and Renata. But he's tanky enough to get back away to the safety of the turret, but he's got to go home yet again. I like that, though. You know, he's walking towards the upper wall, and so they're trying to block there. And then he opens up himself a hook angle to the side wall and is able to, in, in the end, walk it out. Yeah, what's will play for him? I thought they maybe could have body blocked him better. That's why I thought he was dead for sure, because I thought they were going to be able to stand on the other side of him and not allow him to get that. But Block both angles. Yeah, is going to be able to make it happen. And to be fair, it's hard because you have to be auto-attacking and getting damage, and you can't just be walking alongside him. Yeah. Um, so not quite able to finish him off. Critical that Vulcan does stay alive, but it still will mean brought Pryo, and that first dragon goes fly quest away. That ended up being their big win condition in the last game mm -hmm. and could potentially be the same in this one. Yep. All three of the early grubs for C9. The early Drake for FlyQuest. Things pretty reminiscent of uh, how they might have looked back in that previous game. Back over in mid. The farm is even. We're talking about Jensen taking the Comet, taking the Scorch, looking to just be an absolute menace in the lane. But it hasn't slowed down JoJo's farming. Yeah, I yeah. mean, JoJo probably has second wind, right? So I feel like that's always kind of the answer to these types of things. So, you know, he's 325 healing from that. The Scorch has done 200 damage. Second wing D-Shield is really strong in these matchups. It's mm -hmm. Like, basically every single person takes it in melee versus range. And it is just about surviving and stabilizing. Because once you get to a certain point, Yone can push these waves out very quickly. Yeah, and a lot of the priority that Jensen had from his aggressive play was in the early levels. Now that you've got level six on the Yone, you can threaten more all-ins with your jungler. 
uh, as Jojo goes for some E trades here, uh, which are very dangerous, especially now Sejuani also has ultimate. Like that CC is immense. So you have to be a little bit more tempered with some of your harassment in the mid lane. Nice timing on the soul inbound as well. You know, he goes in and waits till the tether's just about to proc, then snaps back, getting maximum damage out with his E uh, and still being able to immune that. But obviously the monster Q there set up by the tether is always going to be nice little bit of trading. No grubs for another 90 seconds, but Blabber is heading into the enemy jungle on this top side of the map. He'll find Inspired here in just a moment, and he actually arrives in time to steal away the blue. Nicely done w. there. Just a bit of an early smite, you know, because there wasn't any vision on it, so he just blind stole it, I believe. Very nice here from Blabber. Levels up his uh, jungle pet as well. And you always get the extra ego on enemy jungler. <laughs> yes, up ego. Uh, a nice, uh, very living in, important. <laughs> living inside their head. Um, honestly, it's uh, it's just like a Kindle gem uh, rush here, anyways, into Knight's Vow. So, Blabber probably gonna Knight's Vow up JoJo here, or make that Sejuani Yone duo even more fearsome in the early game, and look for those skirmishes. Those are two champs that you know they have no problem staying inside Xin Zhao's ultimate inside that range, so it does make it a little bit more difficult for you. So up here in the top lane, one thing we haven't really talked about a whole lot so far is the farm difference between Fudge and Whippo. Fudge has a couple of waves of a lead built up over this Grog as Whippo stuck underneath the turret. Mana very, very pressured. And now Blabber's coming around from the side. He will walk over this ward. So Whippo knows that this is a possibility. Fudge at about half Blabber HP, tank. okay. They just immediately clear out the wave with Whippo's ulti. Nicely done there, getting rid of the threat. Meanwhile, back in bottom, it's Berserker and Vulcan fighting back. Nice dredge line on Busio. Dawning Shadow over the top, and Busio's about to pop. They won't get him just yet. Wind becomes lightning, and there's Inspired showing up to make the difference. Vulcan escapes back underneath the turret, but Berserker has already dropped, and Fly quest for the first one for the board. Nice job here from Inspired taking advantage. He, he knows Blabber is going up to the top to go grab these grubs. So they do at least make them pay for it with a kill on the bottom side and a first blood kill at that. Um, also, look at his path. Mini map right now. You saw him use the blast cone over the back of the dragon wall. So Inspired avoids all of this vision on bottom side. The, the river was lit up. The tri brush was lit up with wards. And just because of that Blast Cone, that's the only way that Zin can get in there behind them. And this time around, he flashes the W to make sure it connects. Yeah, nicely done there. And you could also see, I think that was pretty well played by Busio. And he goes for the Flash Q, doesn't actually connect, but he's tanking so much of the damage and the Sen is hitting him. He throws the bailout on Masu for the attack speed, for the move speed forward. And Masu's just hitting Senna. So Senna can't actually stay in to finish him off, even if Zin Dao doesn't show up. So. You know, using his HP as a resource there, tanking up as much damage as possible, gives Masu the space to get what he needs done. Man, I actually feel for the Cloud9 bottom lane there, because Top of River was warded, Tribrush is warded. They're like, we are good, right? No way. Uh, immobile Zin Zhao is getting behind here, but... And now they're going to word out where the blast gun was. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't let him do it again. Well, you know that thing was just you, so it's dead now. But we'll look for the next just one. Just in case. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Those blast plants, they're sneaky. <laughs> they figured it out. Inspired was looking for uh, a little bit more presence in the game here over in mid lane. But JoJo with the soul unbound, it's so easy for him to get away from ganks on this champion as Blabber. Still just hanging around, making sure that Inspired doesn't try any repeat business over here. He's not going to be able to contest any of the camp or anything. You can see that Inspired has already secured the Ooh, chicken nice sport himself. Step. Yep, nicely played up there. Whippo finally putting a little bit of pressure back on the Fudge, but Whippo has already used his TP returning to lane, and Fudge has his ready to cast. So once the Rumble decides to go back to base, he'll be just fine. And that was a pretty big sidestep, actually. You know, Fudge gets hit by the ulti there. He could potentially be in a lot of trouble. And uh, gonna be able to narrowly avoid that. Has taken the bad end of some trades here. So Fudge now gonna have to go home. Just uses the equalizer on the wave. It is gonna be a catalyst here. So it's gonna be a row up for Bufo. All right, little adjustment here. You heard Mithy in the interview talking about, all right, we, we needed to get more of these early dragons. So we gave up yeah. way too many. They, they, again, this game got their six scrubs, mm -hmm. but have a much easier time 
uh, picking up the dragon because of the uh, bottom side of the map here on the reset. And you see Masu and Busio for FlyQuest have rotated up to top side for the lane swap. I love the placement and the timing of that barrel there from Whippo. He knew exactly when Fudge was going to be arriving back to the lane so that the barrel was completely cooked on maximum damage for that instant greeting. Hello, welcome yeah, back. Yeah. And the teleports always arrive between where you're teleporting and your uh, fountain, so you can always aim it easily. No equalizer, so Berserker's trying to hustle up here and potentially defend a dive. Fudge knows that it could be coming in, so he's backing off. All right, Masu will be the only one auto-attacking the turret for now. Would like to grab this third plate if he can. Berserker has arrived and made his way up. Masu needs a little bit more damage. Not quite going to get that plate. I will say I'm a little bit surprised. Vulcan's first item as the farming Nautilus is actually a Knight's Vow. So he's going Knight's Vow. So Cloud9 are going to go double Knight's Vow. It's likely going to be on uh, both Jojo and Berserker. Could be on Fudge as well. Uh, but this does mean individually he will be less tanky. Uh, and it can be, you know, one of the big strengths of this is that you kind of get the super tank Nautilus as we've seen in some of these previous games. Yeah, I mean, this item is just so efficient right now. Really good early source of cooldown reduction for yep, tank yeah. items where a lot of tank items got cooldown reduction kind of taken out of them or at least reduced. Um, but Knight's Vow also got the change this season compared to last season um, where it is no longer the pre-mitigation damage and you do get the, uh, you do take less from your connection. Plus you get that uh, that extra healing from them if your carry is doing enough damage. It's definitely valuable, and I'm kind of curious on your take on this. You know, I generally build it, and I think two is even really good. As long as I have two people that I think are like hyper carry type champions on my team. You're fighting over the Yone right now. For, exactly. <laughs> that's your that's, that's, that's the only person that's worth a <laughs> yeah. vow, man. Like, I don't want to vow this poor Senna. I don't really want to vow the Rumble. So that's why. I'll, I'll vow Rumble. I'll, I'll take okay. the one. You can you can you have the, the Yone. You get the Prince, I get the King. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the Rumble. <laughs> Rumble's looking pretty good to me. Azale, why? this deal pretty hard, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, but we'll win the game he's because still of... He's the knight, but he's the knight to the prince. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. It's like he's a squire. Man, it's it's the the squire's yeah. bow. Yeah. All right, well, the Rift Herald is going to go over to C9. They will continue their absolute control over these early game topside neutral objectives. Purple objectives. Yes. If it's purple, Cloud9's getting it, except huh? for maybe not Baron. <laughs> but... The other purple stuff has gone their way here so far in this series. Only a 400 gold lead for C9, despite the fact that they're the team that doesn't have the single kill in this first 15 minutes of gameplay. This one is not very fast paced. Both teams seem to be pretty comfortable just letting things move forward. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's been such a wildly different pace. Uh, than even the previous FlyQuest series, and definitely than the series we watched yesterday, where it had been so scrappy, FlyQuest has come into this one, and they seem to be much more the team that wants to be kind of like wax on, wax off, just deny what Cloud9 are trying to do, uh, make sure that they're taking the fights when and where they can get them. Uh, Cloud9, I feel like, has been hunting for some opportunities, but FlyQuest has just been so good at, at not really opening themselves up to it. Like, when you draft, Sejuani with double melee soul lanes, yeah. you want to be fighting, but they haven't been able to make anything happen. And this is one of the big benefits that a lot of people are talking about with having Inspired and Whippo on your team as two really intelligent shot callers. Uh, it seems like the whole squad is really focused. Their, their comms have always been clear when we get to listen in. Um, and it seems like the, the in-game direction never feels panicked. So definitely a benefit here uh, with combining those veterans with the younger players on the bottom half. All right, C9 sending a squad up to the top lane here, thinking, okay, they really, really like to pick on JoJo. Last game, they really went after JoJo plenty of times. If they're doing it again, we'll be ready. But there's no such play being formulated by FlyQuest right now. It'll be up to Masu to deal with the wave about to collide with the mid lane turret. But now that the Herald's a part of this party, I don't really see bye a bye. way where this thing survives. That will be the first turret of the game, again, going the way of Cloud9. How, many are they, how much damage are they going to do? Um, I'm taking a look. Okay. Yeah, figure it out. Oh, Is it more they, than 21? It's still ticking. There. They got a lot more hits Almost this 200. They got a lot more hits Wowie. this time. Wow. The, the, even the Void Mites have improved for Cloud9 in Ooh. game number two of the series. The sequel. The Void Uh-huh. The AI has improved. <laughs> Uh, I, I heard one person in the crowd kind of cheer for Void Mites, but then it sounded like they were embarrassed because nobody else was. <laughs> the one Void Mite yeah, enjoyer. Been there. Looking around like, nobody else likes Void oh, Mites. Oh, oh, Just me. My bad. Oh, I All apologize. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're pretty cool. I actually think they're cute. They're goofy. I yeah. like them because they're yeah. goofy. They look that like me little me. jumping potatoes. Yeah, that's that's goofy, man. I like, I like that. Now, three-man standoff here in mid. 
Inspired jumps in, but then right back out. Not really a whole lot worried about it. Here. Handshake on Vulcan. Now they're worried about this. Dredge line to get himself away. Blabber's here on the front line. Sejuani ain't worried about getting bursted here just yet. Low HP on Vulcan and Blabber both as FlyQuest punch him. I mean, that is the difference between an on-hit Varus and a Fasting Senna in what they're going to do to that front line, right? Mm. So Inspired goes in. He's not afraid at all. Vulcan has to flash out. Blabber's getting pumped as well. Masu was just ripping through those tanks. On hit Varus, if you have the safety, if you can stand and fire, is one of the best AD carries in the game at shredding these tanks. You can absolutely obliterate them, and he has the Karma. He has this Renata, who has a locket completed now as well. Yeah, if Cloud9 want to do a play, they need JoJo with his Kraken Slayer here, whacking away, stacking up his lethal tempo. Um, other than that, it's going to have to be the big layering of ultimates wherever Rumble is. And currently, Fudge split pushing on back on the bottom side. He'll still teleport, obviously ready, but uh, so is everybody else's butt whippos. And I like the fact that you bring this up about the on-hit Varus, Isaac, and how, hey, yeah, this thing does have a really high DPS potential, but you have to make sure that it's properly protected and facilitated, because we're talking about the guy who's the young player, the rookie, the new dude on this squad of these guys that we've been talking about, how much game knowledge and just general perception of the way that League of Legends can be played is, like Inspired, like Wimpo, like Jensen, right? And so they're saying, no, 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 we can play support for Masu. This guy can get the ball into the end zone. And I think that he deserves that faith and that credit. In the final game of their series versus Team Liquid, he was on the Varus. This was the Poke Varus. But he was 11-1-12 and 12 in the final game uh, of that best of five. Really big performance. Uh, I think the entire team has talked about how much faith that they really do have in their younger players. I just think that's something that's been cool about the LCS this year is we've had a number of teams uh, that have really put faith in these young players to be able to get things done. Yeah. And they've really succeeded with that. You know, 100 Thieves obviously have been now eliminated, but a lot of their guys were these brand new young players who even made all pro who are really uh, successful for them throughout the year. And FlyQuest is similar to that. All right, does he get this blue buff also? Let's see. Inspire trying to stand and fight. Whipple comes in over the top of the body, slamming Berserkers under pressure. Now Busio's come to reinforce him. Hostile takeover over the top, but it only finds Blabber. Vulcan's still trying to get away, but the Equalizer puts the damage on FlyQuest health bars. Jojo with the Fate Seal tries to get himself back out. Another beautiful handshake coming out from the first team. All pro support means FlyQuest get their second kill of the game. Cloud9 just have no damage without Jojo. He's the only one doing anything to this front line. So if he's not there, Flycaster are like, yeah, let's fight. Let's start it up. JoJo does eventually arrive and is able to use the soul inbound, avoid the hostile takeover, but it just doesn't matter. Busio trying to flash away from this one. A lot of damage comes out, but not enough to kill him. Now Berserker's trying to escape from Inspired. Tries to sidestep the win, becomes lightning, succeeds at it. He'll live for now. Whippo and Jensen, though, still looking to see if they can keep this fight going. Jensen with a flash forward! And Whippo's big old belly bops him! They're gonna get one back for Fudge on C9's side, but he'll die to Masu's arrow in the air as he flies away on the blast cone. It's a four to one game for FlyQuest. So Jensen still deathless, 2 0 on the Karma now, flashing forward with these big Qs as FlyQuest chased Cloud9 across the map. They had already sent JoJo down to bottom lane uh, to go push the wave, and so JoJo was split pushing during that, and then the rest of Cloud9 decides to go for a pick themselves. Look at the mini-map right now. JoJo just teleported down there, so he does not have a ticket back to this fight in mid, and Cloud9 are trying to get the early jump on Busio. They realize they don't have burst damage, uh, so they're not going to be able to finish off the kill on the Busio, and then they have to scramble because FlyQuest have them completely outnumbered as they chase through. Inspired goes down river, um, but Jensen, he's like, I'll tank the turret, goes in with the big Q, able to get it. Of course, Fudge is able in the end to burn down the counter kill, but it's still going to be plus one here for the side of FlyQuest as they get the two for one. Yeah, here are you. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Whippo on that Gragas, trying to uh, always look for these angles, always look for these engages. Last time around, we saw the build with the double scaling items, the Seraphs plus the Rod of Ages when it was played by Fudge. This time around, going for the Frozen Heart second instead, playing more of that frontline role. Yeah, you're not going to have the infinity scaling power and the, the mana spamming, but you're slowing down the attack speed from Yone. You've got the extra armor to survive the damage from him and the Senna. You can just throw yourself in there. So I got an update from production. They did a poll in chat to ask chat if they also think void mites are cute or if they're ugly. 72% <laughs> think they're cute. I that's think that's a dub. <laughs> Guess we got some cute void mites.
Mike. Two of them. It's cool. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Spam your ayayas for the void, Mike. <laughs> They're the new favorite characters. Those little purple cuties. <laughs> the one guy in the audience is now vindicated. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> the void Mike <laughs> reigns supreme as FlyQuest is still only 200 gold ahead of C9 in this game despite leading by three kills. But it's just starting to feel a little bit reminiscent of last game where they're mm. controlling the fights where you're they're having trouble seeing exactly how FlyQuest is going to lose these fights. I mean, it has to be about JoJo, but there's so many ways to shut him down. We already got the fight starting off. JoJo's locked down. He's nearly killed here with the very, very start. Jetson shuts him down, and that's exactly the kill FlyQuest wanted to start this one up. Whippo's about to burn. He's got to be careful trying to get away over the top of the equalizer. The bailout saves him. They can't get Whippo. He's too damn wide. FlyQuest two for nothing. The bailout plays always feel so good. He got hooked back in. They used the ultimate over the top to kill him, but FlyQuest, after those, they're just gonna go pick up Baron. They do sacrifice one dragon to Cloud9, but it would just be Cloud9's second dragon. It is just a single Cloud Drake, and them having the Baron, their push is going to be so difficult for Cloud9 to deal with. Look at Cloud9's comp. Where's the wave clear, boys? There's nothing, uh, nothing at all. It's donate sword. <laughs> yeah, keep on looking. <laughs> I mean, here, here's the engage. So this is the problem. When you're starting off a fight as the Yone, it is so difficult. Man. He's going to get knocked up by Inspired, ulted by Masu. There's all this CC that comes over the top. You get burst down before you can really get anything done. There's so much pressure on him, I feel, with this team comp. It's so low damage. And then this hook in, a bit unfortunate, is I think that we're going to get the kill regardless. Vulcan didn't realize it, though, so he hooks in and unfortunately gives him the bailout, knows his mistake immediately. Yep, you can see the frustration uh, compared with the absolute excitement on the other side. I specifically love, never mind, we might get a chase down here. I specifically love in that play, Inspired, not auto attacking JoJo, not getting the challenge on JoJo, even though the Yone just engaged on him. He waits it out and then he uses his Zin ult to get the little baby bump backwards. Yep. And Yone, one of the most annoying champions to catch with the Soul Unbound, they're able to kill him off so early because of that. It's it's a mistake that a lot of Yas uh, uh, Zin's out players sometimes do make, mm -hmm. accidentally getting that challenge on, but really heads up play from him and the rest of FlyQuest. And now with the Siege, you're just gonna 4-1 split push, Jensen take out top while the rest of the team slowly whittles away at mid. Yeah, Whippo not afraid to be here on the front line. Goes back in for the Demolish proc. Nice ulti from Blabber, but there's no follow-up again. If JoJo's not ready to immediately snap in and follow it up, you're not going to kill anybody. But even if he is, I just don't see how you win the fights. It's mm. Renata Karma. You hit the ulti even on Masu. You have JoJo go over the top. He gets bailed out. Hostile takeover comes. There's an... Wait, hold on. We already got a problem. JoJo is dead, it's and done. Jensen is the one burying him yet again. For 4-0 and 2 here on the Karma. A beautiful catch on JoJo, and they aren't done yet. FlyQuest have found Berserker right next to him, and they're still going forward. Inspired gets back out of the turbo aggro. Whippo's going to be the tank now. He's going to be a little bit careful about this one. Down to one third, but reinforced by the shields again. Jensen on this Karma, doing exactly what he needs to. 20 seconds on JoJo and Berserker both. All five men on FlyQuest are still pushing the enemy base with Baron for the next 30 seconds. C9 trying to scramble to defend here in this 3v5. First Nexus turret is already down. Fudge at 40% HP, completely zoned away by the inner flames as Blabber tries to just clear out some of the waves, but now he has to flash out to avoid the engage from Whippo. Berserker and Jojo are finally back in the fight. They lock down Whippo. They follow it up with a fade seal, but Jojo has to snap back. He can't get a single kill. C9 rallies oh. to the defense, but Whippo gives him a drink. Masu picks up the kill, and FlyQuest are again in an advantage. 5v4, Nexus and half HP. Jojo dead again. Masu unstoppable. C9 can't hold it. FlyQuest are going up 2-0. Holy, FlyQuest absolutely own JoJo. And they're owning Cloud9 in this series. 2-0 the start. This, I gotta say, man. This is impressive. So impressive. And the, the drafts, I think, from FlyQuest have been really intelligent. Game one, they got massive range advantages. 
Game two, Cloud9 go at them with even more hard engage, but you're trying to hard engage into a comp that has such good answers for it. You know, you can flame Jojo for dying as he goes in, but it looks so hard for him to ever stay in long enough to actually get anything done. And there's so many answers to him when he does go in. Yeah. Even if you zero someone out the bailout, the handshake, all the CC, and he gets first down. He got bounced around by Gragas ultimate into handshake, into absolute destruction. They only got two kills as a team that game, but the two kills they got, JoJo wasn't involved. He ends game two, zero, three, and zero on this Yone that was supposed to be the damage delivery vehicle for the comp. But game number two is all wrapped up now. Reminder, tickets for LCS finals sold out immediately. But if you want to attend, we still got some good news. We've opened up additional seating to watch in the outdoor fan fest zone alongside Sneaky and Medios. There's only a few of these left though. So scan that QR code to get yours before they sell out. Now we're going to head on over to the LCS lounge to break down this series where FlyQuest is on match point. Dang. Welcome back to the lounge. Yeah, yeah two oh. a, I feel pretty vindicated in my, you know when you like strongly? Again, no one yeah. was doubting your point. I know, I was <laughs> doubting you. <laughs> Whenever I strongly defend a draft and then it loses, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I was right. This draft, I was right uh, as we kick off our highlight package here. Yeah, I mean, so this is what I was afraid of for Cloud9 after their whole regular season and the way they beat 100 Thieves because I haven't seen Cloud9 like win a, a close game well. Mm -hmm. And unless they're blowing the other team out in lane, they don't wanna, seem cohesive enough to generate victory. I wanna pause and actually go through that play again just to point out one thing that casters uh, called out from the very beginning, uh, which was that Inspired played with vision really well. We talk about how junglers can play with vision, but mm. he basically takes a path that avoids all this giant block of wards here. So if you're wondering like why C9 thought that they were like safe as we play through the rest of it, uh, we can speed through it since we've already seen it. But um, since you wonder like why they were playing so aggressively, it's because they thought they were completely covered. Dokla, I want to ask your que like a question to you about this comp because, yeah, you made the point about like being able to win a close game. I felt like this comp was just really tough to play for if you're a C9. Yeah, I mean, I think just the biggest thing for me is just a Renata pick into Nautilus. It kind of shuts down everything that C9 wants to do. Like they want to dive in and Renata just completely disables that from happening. And they have a lot of immediate CC, so Ooh. it's hard for Jojo to really do damage because they have a Veris he has a Verisol to think about, Gragas E and a Renata Q and a Renata ult. So it's really hard for him to get his damage off, even though he was really fed um, just by farming. But just this fight is like, so he goes in and then he's just Renata Q into yep. just Verisol into <laughs> W from Karma. Like he just can't play the game and the rest of his team just doesn't have the damage. That I was without say, was Gragas ult too. Yeah. What would make this comp way easier to play for Cloud9 is if they were about oh. 8,000 gold ahead at this point. Yeah, actually. Because if, that, like, that's what happened when they just played had six yeah. items, they just won every just early game by 4K. There. This Renata Gragas combo is, yeah. It's nasty. It, I mean, it stuffs every single thing that C9 wants to do. And then again, like I talked about enchanters with Sinjao, we didn't see it to its like full extent of how nasty it can get, but like basically it gets to a point where Sinjao just does not die. Yeah. yeah. It was disgusting. I mean, I will say Flyquist is outplaying uh, C9, but as well out drafting. So uh, props to the coaches here. Yeah, I mean, thinking about the whole series, game one, Berserker and Vulcan popped off with a bunch of Callista yeah, kills, yeah. but they didn't turn it any into anything. Yeah. Uh, currently, Cloud9 has killed 12 grubs to zero. Mm -hmm. Their grub conversion to victory rate seems very low. Fair. I just, I, this, I, I know I'm probably beaten on the same point, but it feels to me like this is the Cloud9 that existed in like week mm -hmm. two or week five. Like it's just the very, not dominant early game Cloud9 that doesn't seem to have team comp or team cohesion. And then the FlyQuest team just seems like because they have such good players, they're picking really cohesive team comps, mm -hmm. like holding on for dear life for the first 15 minutes and then getting wins. Yeah, I think FlyQuest, at least throughout the entire split, I've loved their drafts the most of most teams. Like they've always drafted well, at least going to 4-5. Um, so at least like usually it'd be Whippo and Inspired rounding out the composition and they've always had like a scaling midline mage for Jensen. So 
most drafts you look at from a FlyQuest perspective, they scale better. Yep. And most drafts that you look through a FlyQuest, you're like, Buffo also just runs through team fights because this champion will just not just counter his lane, will counter the team comp. I got a question. Hit me. So what if LCS teams hired professional lip readers, so then in between the games, they watch this yeah. and they figure out what the enemy team's saying. That's a great idea. Let's do it. I think a lot of the time they're just like, I really like the fruit that we had last week. If we yeah. could just. Anyway. <laughs> the arrow was so intense and he was giving Mossy direction. I was like, yeah. what are they saying? Some coaches, I swear to God, think, are, yeah. they're so concerned about it because they'll be hiding their mouths while yeah. they're <laughs> while they're drafting just for that reason. So I don't know if you're if you're a lip reader out there professionally, an esport team needs you. Yeah bring a lot of value. I think Nukeduk was saying, oh my god, I drafted so well, guys. Just take a look at this draft. Yeah. Unfortunately, we do got to go. While we wait to see if C9 can turn it around in game three, they need to win three games in a row. Raz, you sat down with C9's top laner, Fudge, because he did win last week's MasterCard Player of the Week. And here's the interview. What's up? It's MasterCard Player of the Week for week one of playoffs. Congratulations, Fudge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, no so what I'm doing. <laughs> so rapid fire questions, 90 seconds to answer them. If you want to pass, you can pass. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, perfect. Let's get into it now. Favorite oceanic teammate that you've had? King. Okay. Uh, what about Fantix? You're playing against him today. As a coach. Uh, he was my first ever coach. I liked him a lot. We are no longer friends. There <laughs> we go. Great answer. <laughs> Biggest all pro snub? Biggest all pro snub? Yeah. Uh, who's the AD? Uh, B-Boy. Oh, B-Boy? Great, yeah. Well, he got first place. He yeah, got first yeah, place. Yeah, he didn't deserve first place. Oh, my God, okay. <laughs> uh, who's your MVP? Uh, Whippo. Favorite design champion? <clears throat> Aurelio. What is a pet, or what is a, your pet peeve on the team? People talk too much. Okay. Uh, what is a red flag that you have? None. Uh, what is your favorite artist in track? In track? Actually, this is your track. favorite, yeah, what's oh. your favorite artist? You can just go uh, the Kendrick Lamar. Uh, favorite fitness routine, or what's your fitness routine? Mm, we just do C9 workouts every morning. They destroy our bodies. How do you keep focused on your personal goals? You keep focused on them. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, worst thing about queuing up in top in solo queue? When your teammates don't swap and give you last pick. Uh, favorite player to watch internationally? Zeus. Do you really have a secret SoundCloud? I do not. I lied. You lied? I lied. What? I lied. Okay. That's, that's a red flag, actually. I'm that is okay. That's I instantly lied. a red flag. Sorry, red flag. All right. That's going to be the end, end of that one. So, like, it's just like talk about like being able to play in Oceania uh, and what kind of lessons you had and like just your I mean, memories of it. It was my first ever split, right? And mm -hmm. I moved to a different city when I was 17, which was huge for me. I was really homesick. A lot of my teammates were, all, I was already friends with off like Discord and they were already pro players. I had a really good team. And Fantix was the coach of that, which was now Richard on mm -hmm. FlyQuest. Uh, it's kind of fun whenever I play against them remembering that <laughs> <laughs> how we used to be as friends. Yeah. And now it's sort of just like, eh. We don't even know each other anymore. That's fair enough. That happens to a lot of people. You just drift apart. Yeah. So maybe you guys connect after this series. Maybe yeah. you won't be, be feeling too happy after this maybe series. <laughs> maybe we're even more enemies after maybe, this series. Maybe. And pick the trophy up. And congratulations again on the player of the week. Thank you. Red Bull gives you wings. Make more good in the Kia Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. Dude, why'd you put your new rig in the basement? Didn't you hear? Bill's a good gillionaire now. Basically, my new connection is so strong I can game anywhere. Check it out. We've got Gamer Rocker, Gamer Floaty, Gamer Couch. Whoa. It's got wheels. Gamer Bench, Gamer Throne, and Gamer Mower. What's that? It's hard to game while walking downstairs. I get it. That's smart. Live like a gagillionaire with low latency everywhere. AT&T Fiber with all five. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste.
Welcome back, everybody. It's playoffs, and it's looking pretty dire here for Cloud9, down zero and two against FlyQuest. Game number one, game number one was close. Game uh -huh. number two uh -huh. was not. So at the beginning of this series, I was getting flamed for uh, our dive bet, the lemon, uh, the lemon bet. <laughs> the lemon is in the other mouth. Azale needed. Yeah. <laughs> it's about to be. On the other foot, you know. I thought it worked. It's about Come to be on. in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not with me. I'm just. I'm, I'm just. You gonna... have some cooked references. Hey, he got to he... pretend. <laughs> he was give the man a break. He goes. I go along with you. <laughs> Listen, what happened to being bros? You're just to, well, I thought we were ride or die, Flower. I abandoned you in your time of living. You looked at me like I was the biggest idiot you've ever met. Whippo, Whippo is shocked right now at this breakup. Yeah, uh, crazy. <laughs> I stopped in for him and it's time of need. Yeah. Where was he when I made a bad joke? How quickly I was we right forget. Here. I was just <laughs> shaking my head. Were you? You're going to make him sick again, sir. Uh, oh, no. Please, no. Don't boom me. All right. We've got, let's, let's see how the draft changes around here in this one. Cloud9 has elected to go back on the red side here for this game. It's Ari, oh. Nico, and Lucian banned out by FlyQuest. It's Senna, Varus, and Kalista banned out by C9. It's Oriana locked in for yeah. Jensen. Get to the good one. There we go. <laughs> the Jensen Oriana. I had the to get legend. To the junk first. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the legend here. Most played champion. Incredible win rate on this. It's almost always been permaban versus him, and yet they let it through. Um, let's uh, let's see how they fare here. It feels like in game in this game, Cloud9 are like, you know what? We are so against the ropes right now. We got to unleash hell. Berserker Zeri, the go-to. This is his favorite champion. He was like our original Pentakill king on it, and they need to bring that back. Pentakill Pikachu has been dethroned by the dragon, <laughs> but. Berserker is an OG Pentakill uh, is, Pikachu player. Back in a brighter time when Pentakills meant something. Uh -huh. but, um, Are we really saying that Zeri era was when Pentakills meant by something? By comparison. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we are. The dark times of Smolder have really <laughs> eternal dark perspective. Right Smolder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Things are. But I, I will say for Cloud Nine, this feels like they're just going towards absolute comfort. They're going to go towards a five v five comp. Uh, and I, I worry a little bit for, you know, where they're at prep-wise, because I did feel like they got kind of draft gap two games in a row, mm. and now it feels like they're like, all right, well, I guess we just pick what we normally play and go for 5v5, but Zeri's not really considered uh, S tier right now. Smolder was actually available. They elected not to go for it. So they're going, I assume, Maokai jungle potentially, or do you think it's going to be Maokai support? I feel like if you go Maokai support, the lane is going to be potentially too weak. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of assuming it is going to be Maokai jungle, and now we know that. So it is going to be Zeri and Alistar. So drafting go buttons, mm. playing around Berserker. I think, I think Cloud9 have to ban out some like Vi, some junglers that are going to lock down the Zeri because uh, Berserker is obviously, they're like, all right, Berserker, please save us. Mm -hmm. They're praying to him right now. You know, they, they've tried in the previous two games. They're like, JoJo hasn't been able to do it. So they really got to ban some junglers to protect that. Yeah, there, there's the Vi. Expect another jungle ban here because some, uh, some guaranteed engages onto that Zeri are the scary thing. I would also ban Nocturne with the Vi, even though Zeri does have a lot better escape options. When you have Nocturne with Nautilus and Orianna, it's like, holy, I can't see anything, and I'm just getting jumped on. Chat voted 83% of them thought that the lemon in the other mouth worked. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm just uh -huh. uh, vindicated. You're one of the 17%. Now yeah, you're the I, weirdo flower. I guess I'm the, I'm the weirdo, man. Yeah. I don't understand the lemon. <laughs> you're getting a lemon too, buddy. I don't want no lemon. I didn't well, agree to this. Should have should have thought of that. Well, you should have been playing me on your show. Well, you can come on, eat the lemon. We're going to invite flowers on the dive. Just this, eat the lemon. This week, just eat the lemon. Uh -huh. This guy sitting in the background, not participating in any way. I'm just going to be chilling. <laughs> I'll yeah. nod my head when you say something. Okay. That's how I'll make it up to you. I appreciate I'm not that. even going to pay attention to what you say, but Thank I'm going to agree no matter what it is. That's important. <laughs> Blind faith. Lemon stonks are Thank down. <laughs> Whoa, that was a quick side. <laughs> That's that's impressive. Ran out, immediately made it uh, up to date. I love the topical signs. Between mm. game signage. All right. The so the sign game is out of control. This one, by the way. Yeah, we are we are Shout popping off with the posters. signs. Good job, fans. We've got uh, Tristana, Jace, and Renekton. Three AD Ooh. solo laners. They're calling for the Kiana. Here. Okay. I feel about that one. <laughs> well, Kiana's popular now because the voice actress for Kiana has been doing a lot of yeah. stuff reacting to the community. Those are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, those are really entertaining. So. All right. Well, they're going back to the. I don't think we're gonna Kiana. 
but it would be cool. I also don't think so. Uh, <laughs> with the uh, with the Yone lock in here, can they get it done? Maokai, Twisted Advance, plus a Yone. Like, they've got the point and click. Yo, they've that got to get those kills. Sick. That is what? actually crazy. That's better than anything I could ever LCS even imagine drawing. How long did that take you? That that was that was insane. The detail on that Oriana. By the way, Oriana. The like, ah, I got here last yeah. Thursday. <laughs> yeah, just, just, been just for chill a while. <laughs> The exact stats for a Jensen Oriana. By the way, most played champion for him over the course of his very long professional uh, career at 98 games, 75% win rate wow. with the rounding up uh, there for him. That is absolutely crazy. Oh, Gwen, I would actually really like here. It is into uh, the Gragas. Of course, you can still go phase rush, and sometimes people go phase rush and AP Gragas and do these little different things to answer it. Whoa. Instead, it's going to be the mind. Olaf. So taking a page out of Whippo's book here a little bit and throwing one of his counter picks right back at him. This becomes very difficult. It is definitely going to be phase rush Gragas. I'd be shocked if it is not. That is one of the only ways you can actually disengage these potential all ins. Yeah. But of course, you can immune the cask, you can immune the body slam. You are looking to really go right at him. They're drafting some dive buddies here alongside the One, some additional targets, some people to be able to actually start up the fight so he can be the follow-up. It's so much easier as a Yone when you are the secondary engage instead of the primary. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be Phase Rush Gargus, and Phase Rush Gargus is pretty hard to, to catch, too. Oftentimes, you can bait out the Looking Olaf Ultimate. If you, yeah, exactly. You bait out the Olaf Ultimate. As long as he doesn't get another attack off, you can time it out, look for re-engages, look for jungle plays. Uh, but honestly, I think this one is going to be very difficult for Cloud9. Backs against the walls. This is upper bracket, though. Uh, let me remind all the fans. So if they upper fall bracket. through this wall, there's another one. Yeah, you've got two lives still. Yep. <laughs> Both these teams still have two lives, and they don't want to use them, but they do have to. So speaking of having different options that you may or may not have to use, what do we expect to see from everybody's favorite like thrift store item shopper in Kaisa this game? Because we hear about how like the, you know, the AP build is really strong late, but you've already got double AP solo lanes, and it's a pretty magic damage heavy comp if you go AP Kaisa as well. Are we just expecting AD Kaisa here? What's the, what do you guys think? With Lethal Tempo, I think it's just going to be Shift Kraken, yeah. would be my expectation. Okay. So I think it is going to be on hit, um, especially because there are multiple tanks and frontliners that are going to be difficult that you have to, to get through. You get reported if you go triple A uh, AP here. You get, okay. you get super reported. I'm just yeah. making sure I'm <laughs> your not... Your solo laners are pissed. Your jungler is pissed. <laughs> your support is pissed. I have not played an AD carry champion in years. The closest I get is when I roll one in ARAM and yeah. give it to a Zale. But while we're waiting on the minions to spawn in this game, we got Raz standing by with FlyQuest coach Nuke Duck. That's right. I got Nuke Duck with me. First question, you guys are 2-0 up. Comps have been looking nice. What's your assessment so far of the series and your guys' performance? Uh, the guys playing surprisingly well, uh, like of course without some laning problems, but yeah, they're playing very well. And uh, yeah, the assessment is we just need to not get too excited and cocky. This is a definite problem we have because, or we never win clean wins, you know. We always have to do a little too much, throw a bit, and then come back. So I hope the guys will take it like fully serious. That's the main uh, problem I guess we're facing. And I guess that's literally my second question is just like how to be how do you guys can clinch this series out? You kind of already answered it, but just based off the comp alone, uh, anything that you're afraid of with the uh, Cloud Nine's comp here? Yeah, I mean, it's fudge on Olaf. That's like the, this their trump card this game, you know. Uh, so if we keep him in check, we should be winning. So, you know, I think we're gonna win. <laughs> All right, sounds confident to me. I'll send it straight back to you guys, the casters. The first, the first question and answer is the best part. That was actually hilarious. <laughs> Surprisingly well, the team is playing. <laughs> uh, honestly here though, yeah, it feels like they do have full confidence there. He, he mentioned keeping Blippo in check and being confident that they can do that. I'm also curious how much focus will stay on JoJo this game. Game number one, it was all JoJo focus all the time. Game number two, it kind of just felt like FlyQuest was running away with it. JoJo just unable to play, really, without having to be specifically focused down because of the comp difference. I mean, I, I think for better or for worse, you know, win or lose, there's going to be a lot of focus on JoJo from the results of these first two games, right? Mm. Uh, game one, he was getting picked off nonstop. Game two, the comp was kind of built around him, but he couldn't really make it happen. I do think it was a very difficult composition to play, yeah. but still, this is the superstar player. You know, you heard Vulcan in the interview at the top of the day. You know we have JoJo in the mid, so he's going to be slamming mid. We just have to not end. We're going to win the game. That has not been the case whatsoever. Jensen nope. has been heavily outperforming. And I actually wanted to 
look to chat, but we're gonna get a gank here real quick. If Jojo takes a Q in. Uh, Jensen's trying to trying to be like, oh, I'm looking pretty juicy. Why yeah, yeah. It's oh, look at me. <laughs> it, it was a little bit too far on the act stupid scale, I think. You got to act just stupid enough for it to be believable, yeah. but he was just walking straight right. at him. But I will say Jensen has been actually immaculate in this series. He has not died yet. So I wanted to pose the question to chat. Do you think Jensen will even die one time in this series? If we put up a poll for Jensen, because he has been so good and now he's on his Orianna, he too has the phase rush. Uh, to be able to get out of a lot of these melee ganks that they're going to throw his way as Whippo also face checks. Yeah, Whippo does not really want to be here any longer. Undertow hits him for enough to get him down below 100, but Whippo should be able to get away now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and this is this is Ghost for Fudge, not Flash. So it's not like you flash in right. and finish him off there. Uh, was never going to be the kill, but does lay in wait. Finds a nice little play. Whippo, though, of course, you know, you're starting with just the mana crystal. It's not a lot of combat power. It's just going to be about <laughs> it's, it's, I'm going to put that at zero for yeah, combat yeah, power. So. Hey, zero is not a lot. There you go. That is uh, true. So you're just trying to survive, right? And any is going to be able to successfully do that. Fudge, uh, I have seen some people commit fully to just like Ma Rush and stuff. It looks like he is going uh, at least towards that Hex Drinker. Uh, definitely does want to be bullying in this matchup and wants to play heavily towards that. Yeah. Uh, even Lee Sin has a little bit of magic damage, too in the kit so always feels super nice for going for the all-ins it's definitely going to be uh, a little risky here for cloud nine how do you feel because blabber remember he had such an amazing never mind bottom side gets a nice little chunk but blabber had such an amazing maokai record for so long that they made so much oh uh, never mind and we've got we've, we've got possible possible pressure it is alleviated quite quickly though but um you know a lot of people also talk about how when Blabber's not on one of these carries, then, you know, Cloud9 do have trouble. And this series, now him being on Maokai, they've got carries everywhere else, basically. And he has yeah. to do the setup work. Yeah, and I mean, he, he was really successful with that. Like, as you were alluding to, mm -hmm. um, he had this incredible record. I can't remember how many games in a row he won, but it was a lot. Fudge getting pretty aggressive here. Might look for the all-in, because Boko is very far up. Not going to commit to it. I mean, that mini wave is very big, so he's being a little bit respectful to it. And obviously, he doesn't have six just yet. Yeah. Right. Pretty, he's like a little bit more than way away from it. Jojo does get his level six though. Jensen, no problem here. Has his teleport to get right back. I think if he hits that Q3, he could maybe kill him because Jensen wasn't six and he just hit it. So uh, it could have been Q3 into ulti, but maybe a fight here over by the grubs. Yep. Inspired and Whippo were there first. They snipe out the first <laughs> grub, but C9 now has more manpower. Oh! Inspired! Oh, it's fire, but what in the hell was that? Okay, hold on. We got the cask thrown out to disengage it. That was that was a little wild. Well, he wanted to be able to smite it. It was so close to 600 there. So he wanted to take the Q and be able to, to smite it in a couple of seconds. And then the grub just leashes back. The uh, the Cloud9 grub. C9 grub. <laughs> C9 grub <laughs> trying to pull in that jungler and get some, uh, get some revenge there. Well, this is the first time so far in the series that FlyQuest has acquired a grub. Both of the previous games, it was all six grubs for C9. This is the first grub for FlyQuest. Is that good or bad for them, though? Because they won the last two without getting a grub. Well, They've deviated from the plan of You can tell the grubs service. were pissed because then they tried to kill Inspire. <laughs> Well, I'd say, I think, what was the number, Kobe? 72% of people uh -huh. think that it's a good thing because the grubs are cute. Uh -huh. You gotta have cute grubs. The Void Might's mm -hmm. not the grubs. Oh. That's a whole different story. Yeah, I, 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 I think I even more percentage probably yeah. think those are good. Yeah. <laughs> I must have not been paying attention in class. That's my bad. We got the Drake started up, though. We got the attempt on that one from FlyQuest, which again, we'll see if they can control these early Drakes. Game number one, it was absolutely huge for them being able to have the mid-game control they needed. Vulcan just kind of going to look on. Look at Bwipo. Bwipo's actually roamed mid here. He's going to be a surprise for Cloud9. Yeah, Blabber's going to get jumped on here first, and as soon as Bwipo shows up, Jojo knows that he then has to retreat. He can't try to stand and fight these guys. Blabber loses his flash, but he keeps his life, and that's what's important. Now Fudge, with his lane opponent gone, can shove up the top lane too. Yeah, as soon as he sees him, tries to hard push, Q through the minions, but Bwipo on his way back has an easy route. He'll lose just one melee. It's a cannon wave, and those are the types of plays that you're talking about when you're highlighting how smart Whipple has been. Uh, top laner taking some of his time. 
Oh, inspired oh. again. He goes all the way back. He follows Jojo to the origin point of the Soul Unbound, but still no kills coming in just yet. Bottom lane, Zeri pops the ulti, and Fusio's got to be scared now. He tries to walk away. Dredge line back on the Alistar. Vulcan gets out, and it's first blood over to Berserker. The Zeri is ready to go. Masu still at about half HP, trying to wait out the ulti here, see if maybe there's some kind of an angle. Zap hits him, but not after it goes into the train. Berserker down to 200, Masu down to 200. Monster's not going to do this anymore. He's heading home. That is so big for Cloud9. 2v2. They get the kill in the bot lane. First blood for Berserker on the Zeri. That is a big confidence booster when Cloud9 really needed in this series. Yeah, they put so much faith in him really early on. The Berserker Zeri carry. See if uh, Vulcan shenanigans here. Right out of the brush. They thought it was the uh, recall. He gets the setup onto Busio, immediate ult from Berserker, and they know they're going to chase it all the way through. Vulcan does a good job staying in front of Busio too, uh, so that he can't get the hook escape onto the wall. And then after the hook, he flashes away, makes sure there's no counter kill. I gotta say, it always feels really bad when your bot lane dies, and then you look, it was to a cull AD carry, right? You know, Zeri yeah. actually had bought a cull before that. They get the outplay anyway, they get the 2v2 kill, so he's off the races here a little bit. <laughs> We, we got the numbers back. Over 70% of chat does think uh, Jensen will die this game. Uh, he will not go deathless in this series. And now the, now the Berserker's got some money. Honestly, with Berserker getting money on Zeri, I've seen this before. Uh, I'm definitely feeling a little bit more worried for FlyQuest this game. Oh. Blabber here on this Maokai. Still waiting to see either one of the junglers get involved in any kills. Inspired has definitely made some attempts. Dredge line onto Vulcan. Lots of damage there on the Alistar, chunking him down, but the Zeri ulti's already ready to go. Berserker wants some more PvP. Masu and Busio trying to get themselves back a little bit. Vulcan hits level six, and that means the chance for a counter punch is greatly diminished. Masu and Busio have to retreat all the way back underneath their turret. Yeah, this is quite well played there, but they're gonna look for Jojo. Inspired knows there's no soul inbound. Fate sealed though. Nicely done from Jojo to keep himself safe. Yeah, really good job from Inspired to blow his uh, his ultimate cooldown there too. He, by landing that Q and taking it in, all he wants there, get the extra cooldown out of Jojo. Now you've got no ultimate. The Yone here feeling the pressure. Good. Jensen doing a good job there too. Just interrupting the back, messing with his tempo a little bit. And, and that's gonna uh, make sure that these grubs are gonna be pretty much guaranteed. Jojo now does get a nice vow, but this mid lane cannot get over to grubs. Should be inspired picking up the rest. Yeah, he's got control over that. Blabber shows up mid, but Jensen is just ready to stare these guys down 1v2, keep the jungler away, keep the mid laner too low a health to be able to really participate in the situation. Jensen committing the shockwave there just to make sure that he's keeping these guys out. Inspired still working on the last one of those grubs. Remember that C9 did get two from that first set of them, so neither side going to be spawning the void grubbies this game as the invade from C9 Oh no, Busio wanted to channel his Hex Flash to get back over that wall, but it's gonna be a lot harder than he wanted it to be. He stays alive for now. Blabber throws out the ulti. Busio's still burning. Berserker makes his way into the fight from the side as Jensen now tries to escape, but he's gotta be careful. He flashes back over the wall to the Blast Cone. Inspired tries to flash to the safety of the tier one turret, but Berserker is popping off in game three. Big moves there from the Cloud9 bot lane, being able to roam up. Berserker gets there, grabs another kill as Cloud9 win another fight in the yeah. FlyQuest jungle. And it's all because they knew the grubs are being given over to FlyQuest, to Inspired. And when enemy jungler is up on grubs, you got to take something from him on the bottom side of the map. So Blabber went with Vulcan. And even though Busio is like, all right, they got to be in here, right? They're, they're counter jungling. We just saw them. They still get the jump. So this is a, a little bit of a pop quiz here. So you're trying to guess in chat. This is Masu's playoff debut, and we have another player here. You're trying to guess what playoff debut is, is that this bald player? head? Is that you? You got yourself in there? Huh, Isaac? <laughs> My playoff debut was pretty good. That, that's looking pretty round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kobe's just staring at my head. You're just going. Trying to look at the comparison. I'm looking at you back at the screen. I was like, that's definitely. So the shadows can be misleading because one time we did a guessing game, and I was yeah. like, that was Dokla. I know it's the shadow of Dokla, so I guess Dokla. And they're like, yeah, that was Dokla's shadow, but the answer wasn't Dokla. Yeah. I just like how you tried to direct Kobe's attention to the statistical comparison <laughs> of the players. And he's like, I don't know, he's got no round head. head. <laughs> I've seen that head a lot. <laughs> okay. Let's see. It. I was trained by, by Pokemon, though, to trust the shadows. <laughs> I feel like I've been betrayed. I know. 
All right, well, Shadow dragon Kings have leveled up. <laughs> FlyQuest coming to challenge C9 here for the Drake. Inspired's in the pit. Zeri Zap comes through over the top. Blabber's trying to keep these guys away using the ult. He has Vulcans here from the front line with the Alistar ult leading the charge. C9 just looking to run over him. Whippo's already down as Jojo goes in for the fate seal, resets his spot so he doesn't get burst himself. Now Busio drops next. FlyQuest are dropping like flies. C9 have finally found their way to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a total of five kills for Berserker now. We have seen this story before. Wrap it up. It is a rich, rich Cloud9 AD carry. Inspired played it well in the 50-50. Kicks out Blabber. Blabber tries to Q Flash back in for the smite, but he secures it. But Cloud9 were playing heavily for the fight. FlyQuest are positioning for this potential Dragon Steal and end up just getting roasted by the Cloud9 AD carry. Watch how Inspired plays this as it gets low, steps forward, doesn't get rooted up, kicks him out, secures it with that Q smite, but Jojo on the other side, they're on Whippo. Look where Masu is, look where Jensen is. They're completely zoned out by the Maokai all. Meanwhile, the Cloud9 carries are always hitting. Yeah, and Berserker's like melee range in here, pops the ultimate, easy, easy chase downs with Zeri always too. Now he's so fed, he didn't have a completed item in that fight. Now he finished his static shiv, he's got the extra zeal on top of it. Um, I mean, this this is exactly how Cloud9 need the early stages to go to win this game. When you're focused on getting these extra kills, yes, you have given up two dragons, but you put yourself into such a good position to fight dragon number three and completely stop any of these advantages that FlyQuest did accrue. Uh, so I definitely do have confidence in extending this series, and I'm pretty happy with that so that we at least get some more games. FlyQuest, of course, still very much have some chances here with the dragon stacking and with the way that you can play some of these team fights. Jensen, by the way, still has not died, so the Orianna Shockwave might come up huge. And I don't know about you guys, but when we saw JoJo's reaction to that fight, to me, it looked like a bit of relief on his face after yeah. they won that fight, after they finally found a composition that's working for them, after this game number three is going the way that it is, because I feel like you had to be feeling the pressure wow. and the stress, especially after how bad game number two was. So 53% of chat actually guessed this. and they Wait, got 53 Danny. of them that's got it right? 53%, not even just 53 people. That's actually crazy. Wow. I feel like that's a really hard one to get, but obviously, you know, throwback to Danny had this incredible, incredible debut. Also played alongside Inspired on that EG roster. Mm -hmm. It is again Inspired, you know, paired up with this really experienced top side like he was with Impact and whatnot on that team. Uh, but that time he was with Jojo and Danny and they were able to make that title run. So FlyQuest trying to replicate some of that success. It has been a bit of a recipe here in the LCS since EG had that big success is pairing strong, young NA talent with veterans, try to help them really learn and level up their gameplay at a faster pace. Exactly. You have the veterans for their skill objectively, but they're also a catalyst for the development of the younger players. Level them up faster. Make sure you've got the whole roster ready to go. Inspired is just hanging on the brushes here, but he's not going to find anybody. He's seeing if maybe there's some opportunity to get a punish. The teleport onto the tier one turret from JoJo, but again, this champion is so hard no, no, to no. catch and first no, down. No. Shockwave immediately. JoJo trying to get away from it. The Nautilus ulti, oh. he still gets away from it. This is Yone. This is, this is Yone. He's still alive. Okay, okay, he finally drops, he finally drops. I was, I was really wondering if he was gonna fully get out there. I gotta say credit to him though. He times the, the snapback on the soul bounce to completely immune the Nautilus ult on the knockup. That was the reason he doesn't just immediately die. Uh, that was well played against them that one kill back. Uh, he's able to use all the tools at his disposable to get it. Yeah, exactly. It's all because of that that they do the overchase there, and then they end up sending Inspired all the way into the grave. And because you overcommitted on bottom side, that leaves the rest of the map open. And who benefits the most out of it? Solo Tower Gold into Berserker. Man. His most famous quote is, I like money. <laughs> I was literally just going to say that. That was a great quote. <laughs> and... He does indeed like money, so he's <laughs> definitely happy this game. That's two items already. Some of the stories are so funny that I've heard about, you know, like they'll be playing in a scrim and Fudge will TP down, get him a double kill, take one minion, uh -huh. he's helping him push out the wave, and he's like, Fudgy, stop it, you know, like my minions. <laughs> <laughs> he just really likes that money, yeah, dude. He so wants funny, to man. farm up. He needs all the gold. That's what makes a great AD carry. <laughs> Greed. <laughs> Greed. <laughs> Give me all the money and yeah. I will kill kill all of the enemies. Well, 
Whippo making this matchup not look so fun for Fudge as he's been getting chunked out. Did just still sit on the Null Magic Mantle, elected to go for the Ravenous Hydra first, so it has a lot of sustain. Wasn't going to be the Hexmaker Rush that we have seen before. Mm -hmm. I love, too, how we were talking so much in the beginning about, uh, oh, yeah, Cloud9 have three, uh, you know, possible carries here. Guess what? That Knight's Vow is going one place and one place only. Oh, yeah. There's only one Vow in this game worth taking, and that is the one to Berserker. As he uh, pulls Dragon, Cloud9 should have a very easy time. Take bottom tower, take out the Dragon, and a uh, little bit of extra push. One Constellation Tower on the top side of the map does go over to FlyQuest as Whippo finishes it up and pushes the wave out. Soul Stack is stopped. Oh, they want JoJo's head again. Eight kills to two. It's the tilt JoJo play. That's what they're going for. Trying to just blow this guy up. He's not getting away that time. Fudge teleports in. He's ready to Ragnarok and roll. He finds a kill on Inspired and now has to get back out of the fight. Masu's looking to kite around the edges here, but Vulcan's zoning him away. A beautiful ult. He comes out from Whippo. And holy cow, and a hook from Bucio for the shutdown on Berserker. He curved the bullet like Angelina Jolie! That is your first team all pro support, Busio on the rift. They get the shutdown off of Berserker's head. FlyQuest just clawed their way back into this one. They're gonna get the tower as well, and JoJo this time too slow on using the ulti. I, I wonder if he was trying to, you know, be a little bit slow on it, try to bait them out, try to make them fully commit. If he thought they were gonna be able to have the turn and he could get out anyway, but this time the ulti comes out too late. He gets burst down without being able to buy any extra time whatsoever and then that hook was massive the shutdowns really really big you start looking over jensen's doing well moss is doing well and this is what i'm talking about he has he has the ulti he could use it any time but the body slam flash comes in he can't react to it just gets deleted and even though fudge goes in gets that first kill he's put so low that he can't really participate in the fight he for sure was trying to bait because he immediately thumbs up he emoted and he had berserker coming down the river so he thought, block that. thought he was going to, uh, you know, bait him into it, but yeah, full, uh, an Alistar with an ult on. Hold on, guys, we already got another fight. Blabber's trying to get away here. A teleport brings Jensen back to reinforce the rest of FlyQuest. Blabber ain't gonna die, but it cost him his flash. Pretty big tool for Maokai to not have for the next four minutes. That's one of those things where it's just a reaction. You see the hook coming at yeah, you yeah, and you yeah. sidestep, but if he blocks that, maybe it's a different story because Berserker was so rich. Uh, there was an opportunity potentially for them to turn around or at least for it to not be nearly as bad. Maybe he dies, but they get out and they defend the tower. Also, as a support, you know, if you're auto-filled into support, like, it's fine, you can have those instincts. But as a support, you should have the instinct of, I need to block stuff for my AD carry. Especially when you're on the cow, man. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta drill that into your support's uh, reactions so it just becomes natural. Mm -hmm. Okay, C9's lead has shrunk drastically. They were up 3,000 gold, feeling really good about the state of everything. That fight just kind of suplexed their lead right back down <laughs> into the dirt there in bottom lane. Wow, I, I can see, I can visualize it. I, I know, suplex, it's a, suplex is a great verb. It yeah. really does show a visceral idea. <laughs> I've got to say, this has kind of been a throwback to JoJo on EG a couple of years ago, where it felt like teams always just targeted him in the side lanes, and he had this, you know, habit of getting picked off inside lanes. I feel like last year and, and this year, he had really kind of cleaned up on that and had been very difficult to pick off, but FlyQuest are clearly just sending it for him time and time again. Mm. Inspired has just been hunting his ex-teammate across the map. Yeah, Inspired seems to have him pretty well downloaded. He remembers their days as teammates and exactly <laughs> what he needs to do to get the job done here in what is now, once again, a very close game. Inspired, uh, never mind. We got a hook onto Vulcan here. All right, All right fight's away. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, yeah, he deleted Facebook. He went to the gym. He's been working out. He's like, I don't care about my ex at all. I, I for sure don't care about him. You know, uh, not going to focus on killing JoJo at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Then you run into I'm him doing on a just night fine. out, and yeah. it's all out the window. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing just fine. I'm doing just fine. <laughs> the pain, though, honestly. They're going for him again. Oh, boy. This is, uh, this is not where JoJo wants to be. Nice, he gets away using that primed up Q3 to dash away from the Sonic Wave. Inspired had the flash there, so you know if he connects the Sonic Wave, he can easily follow up for the resonating strike in the NSEC. And now the pressure definitely really on to FlyQuest here, uh, excuse me, from FlyQuest onto C9. 
because they don't have this massive lead to work with anymore. Zeri's still really strong. They obviously can very easily win this game, but Jensen really strong, Masu really strong. They're completing their items. Um, Whippo has been very, very good in the top lane. Hasn't died. He's up in CS. He's been a part of a lot of big plays. Mm -hmm. So Fudge hasn't been able to really make much happen in that 1v1, and it's going to be up to him to make it happen in that 5v5 where it can be tough. You know, you try to go in with that Ragnarok and you just get focused down and pushed out very quickly. Speaking of getting focused down when you go in, big purchase here for Bwipo has the Seeker's Arm Guard ready so he can go in for one of those massive engages and then drop the aggro right after so he doesn't get traded. Infinity Edge, third fully completed item for Berserker Zeri. This dude is going to hit like a truck. This is actually really cool. So it's double Anathema's chains from Cloud9. We saw double Vow, now it's double Anathema's. Almost for sure gonna be on Jensen and Masu. So, you know, both you have that damage reduction on that person, you know, to you, but also the reduced tenacity is really, really big because there's a lot of CC on that Cloud9 side. Another hook comes out. Blabber's going to be the target here at the very start, but Whippo, using the stopwatch, has to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Jojo wants to turn around. Inspire goes for the insect. Oh. Double knockup comes out. Whippo's on a killing spree. Jojo's rooted up. c 9 beaten down. FlyQuest is taking him to town. FlyQuest team fighting is insane. It is so so much better. That's going to be a Baron for sure. Inspire just takes over, man. Found the kick on a Berserker. Berserker had the summoners, insta dies anyway, tries to get out of there. FlyQuest crushed them. And with that, you have to feel the hopes for Cloud9 in this series are starting to fade away. Get out your brooms. It's looking like a sweep. If bottom lane was the suplex, this was the steel chair. Just watch Inspired Man. He makes all the difference in this fight as Cloud9 are trying to go forward, trying to look for the engage here. Initially onto Whippo, the first hook comes out. Whippo buys time with the Seeker's Arm Guard, then Inspired right here on the side. He's hunting. They try to mark him a little bit, but Berserker is basically being zoned out of the fight just by his implied pressure. Then Warthog, kick, flash, knocks him into the team. He flashes out, but he's already rooted by the auto from Busio, then put it the bounce house by Whippo, so he can't actually E over the wall. There was no way out for him in that fight. Perfectly executed, great positioning from Inspired, great fight from FlyQuest. Also, if you're looking at the bottom side of the, fi <laughs> the fight from FlyQuest, their two carries were in a really safe position away from the Maokai ult. The Maokai ult went across the screen trying to actually get one of the, the frontline members. Both Jensen and Masu, easy time slipping into the river, avoiding it and just blasting them. Feels like C9 might have made the same mistake I did in that fight where I'm looking at Inspired seeing like, oh yeah, he's gonna go for Jojo. When's he gonna kick Jojo? He wants to try to kick the anime character. Nope, he goes for the Pikachu instead, blowing up the Zeri, guaranteeing the win in the fight. FlyQuest now up 4,000 gold. Blabber forced to take the long way around to group back up with the rest of his team. Whippo is utterly unafraid of these guys. Body slam forward, plus the Q. There's your ulti knocking Blabber back. Jensen throws the ball over the wall. They force the flashback out on a blabber. Jojo wants to go in and find some kind of damage, but honestly, it's not enough to be a real threat. And Jensen, I mean, it seemed kind of crazy at the time to pose the question and be like, oh man, versus Cloud9, is Jensen never going to die the whole series? It's not crazy. That is very close to becoming reality. This man has played so incredibly well for FlyQuest. Their team fighting has been set up so incredibly well by the front line, as we keep on highlighting, that they are now, with Baron Buff, have an easy time with this 4-1 split push siege and it is already starting to close in around Cloud9 from all sides. I mean, life comes at you fast. It was looking like a guaranteed Cloud9 win into, okay, well now it's a close game into a, now you need heroics to even stand a chance. Vulcan flashes in, Jojo follows up. They need a little bit more burst, but they ain't gonna find it just yet. FlyQuest disengage and kite it out. They'll take out the tier two turret at the same time. Berserker's still trying to find some damage, but FlyQuest is all the way out. Blabber gets jumped on by Inspire, but he ain't too worried about it. Walking around the cask here from the side, nicely steps forward to avoid being knocked back by Whippo. Nobody dies on either side, but critically, that was the flash engage from Vulcan's Alistar that did not get a kill. They cannot hold the tier two turbot in mid lane either. C9 are struggling. The biggest thing I will say for Cloud9's side, for Cloud9's hope in this series, you did get 
very, very critical flashes in that attempt in mid. Now, for the next five minutes, Jensen and Masu both do not have flashes. So the small window for Cloud9 has opened up. And look at the timers here. For Baron and for Dragon coming up, they are not going to have flashes. So Cloud9, they might have given themselves one baby step of okay. a window to try and get back into it. They have to be able to get back to that back line and kill those carries. We'll see if we can do it, though, because Masu on the other side, he's basically dead even in gold now. I don't know how much is in Berserker's pockets, but it's like, this is three items. He is still down the 1K, but that's three items completed. He went for, you know, a very high DPS build. He actually skipped the shiv, so it's Kraken, Navori, and Terminus, which is incredible DPS, and three items done for Jensen, too. So Berserker is 1,100 gold ahead of Masu, but he also has almost exactly 1,100 gold more in inventory. Those... Power spikes are identical between these two carries right now. It's been a pretty incredible comeback from FlyQuest so far here in this third game. Fourth big completed item for Whippo's Gragas. He's got the Morello Namacon now done all the way to continue reducing some of that healing and making it so they can continue finding these bursts. So this is interesting actually here from Berserker. So he went back, he bought a vamp, then decided to sell it and actually changed it to the Hex Shrinker. So he's really worried about the 100 zero from Jensen and Whippo in particular. Mm -hmm. Of course, there can be magic damage from other sources as well, but those are the two main contributors. But it does mean he's just gonna have lifesteal from runes. Like he doesn't have any lifesteal actually from his items. So there's yeah. not that ability to just heal easily back up if you do get chunked out. I, I think it's actually a good swap from him because the last two plays where we saw FlyQuest kill him was burst damage mm -hmm. and it was magic damage. FlyQuest, since we mentioned that Berserker has five kills and that he is going to take over this game, FlyQuest have surgically removed the Zeri in back-to-back Back plays to, to retake control of this game. They have been so good, uh, both Busio inspi and Inspired, uh, at finding him and kind of handing him to the rest of the team to delete. So, very, very worried about a repeat of that play. FlyQuest are really showing up in this series, man. We said it at the top of the day when we were watching the teams arrive. Hold on, never mind. We don't even have time for that. Ragnarok forced out as Busio again lands a dredge line. Inspire looking for the angle here. The death charge is dropped. Jojo into the back, trying to find the entryway with a fade seal, but he's almost killed immediately. He has to fully retreat. Busio looks for another hook, but he won't find this one. Vulcan's trying to get away, but with everybody else in C9 already in full retreat, I don't think it's happening. Masu goes on a rampage, and Jojo tries to Q3 out. The mortal steel keeps him alive for now and berserker is ghosted all the way back into his own base blabber might just be able to escape here but it's another fight going for fly tank, quest tank, tank. it's another team fight these guys are winning they will tank up for the cannon minion in mid yes it gets eliminated by the zap but not in time to save the turret and even without the fight going perfectly them for them right they actually stopped with both throughout the ulti to try to knock back fudge but he had ragnarok already up there was a misclick from busio they actually had both blabber and berserker standing on each other and he ulted onto Blabber anyway, you know, so it's that tough situation where they both overlap, but they're onto the Baron. They win the fight anyway. FlyQuest is looking more and more and more dominant. Uncontested Baron here. Cloud9 gonna try to run to this dragon, put themselves the soul point, get a bounty, but they are down 7K with an open inhibitor and a Baron buff on FlyQuest, who are potentially one fight away from sweeping this series. And they don't waste any time. They immediately send Jensen topside to push out top wave while everybody else goes for their reset first. So everybody else getting their, their money spent. Jensen gets one wave push on topside. I wonder what his, uh, his cash is looking like. Well, it looks like about 12,500 total with 2K sitting in his pocket, just waiting to be spent. The Oriana 3, 0, and 8. Feeling great in this game. Honestly, got to give props to Busio, too, who's just been hitting so many hooks to start off so many of these fights in the favor of FlyQuest. Now inspired, and the rest of Fly pushing down the top side. Jojo immediately has to snap back from his soul unbound, and it looks like this minion wave will be ready to crash into the turret. I mean, it is crazy that Jensen still has not yet died, but it's almost crazier. Jojo still hasn't gotten a kill in the entire series. You know, he's not been able to get on the board. Jensen has just been playing flawless. FlyQuest, they're just gonna muscle their way into the base, take down the tier three turret in top. That's now two open inhibitors, top lane and mid lane, both vulnerable. Blabber jumping in, looking for Inspired, but there's just not an angle here. Blabber now having to deal with Whippo. He'll be the focus. C9 dog piles in, it's a five man play, looking for Whippo, but he just flashes back over the wall, follows with body slam, he's safe. 
Jensen keeping the Baron buff on these cannons while threatening a flank from the side too means that they for sure will get this inhibitor. Mid lane inhibitor is also still exposed, so they could rotate over mid wave not too far out. They've still got this Baron for another 75 seconds. FlyQuest have plenty of time to work with. They'll use the teleport mid lane. Whippo is going to heal back up. He'll be ready to go. Oh, no, not going to find an angle here just yet. C9 again, trying to focus on Whippo. They know he doesn't have an hourglass this time. Inspire goes over the wall. He needs to find one of the carries, but he ain't going to do it. Berserker gets a shutdown and Whippo drops. But now, what about the rest of the fight? Monsters already kill off Berserker. C9 to the run again. Vulcan gets turned to ground beef. It's a double kill for Masu. A two for one trade, favoring FlyQuest. It's about to be three for one. It's about to be a clean sweep for FlyQuest. They march all to the Nexus now, four versus two. FlyQuest are looking to earn their spot in the finals, are looking to challenge for their first ever LCS title as an organization, and they're gonna do it by clean sweeping Cloud9. Dude, inspired in that last one, over the wall twice to get the perfect angle to get Berserker in again. That was insane. That was actually insane. Another surgical removal of the enemy AD carry. This FlyQuest squad, I mean, you got to echo Nuke Duck's interview. He was like, whoa, we are playing surprisingly well. And that was our own coach that said that. This, this team absolutely came out and completely blasted. Jensen, in fact, did not die the entire series. Jensen, no deaths. JoJo, no kills in the entire series. Very, very surprising results. You know, Flying Quest, people are thinking they were gonna come in. This was gonna be a really tight series. Even with the monster leads in games one and three in the early game, Cloud9 could not get it done. Flying Quest out positioned them in the team fights, out executed them in the team fights. This was all about really out thinking your opponents and out executing them in those critical moments because Inspired to me was so massive in these pivotal moments being the person to find those picks time and time again, hunting JoJo across the map in multiple games, and finding Berserker in back-to-back -back fights with the kick flash, the one member on Cloud9 who maybe could've got it done. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the team fighting that we saw from FlyQuest in this series has been the best we've seen from any team in the LCS all split, and it's not close, not even a little bit. That was scary. And I think Cloud9 are a little bit shell-shocked from just how one-sided that series was. Even in the game where they were ahead here in game number three, FlyQuest just turned it around beautifully. And now with their 3-0 win complete, we're joining Emily and Jensen on stage for an interview. Hello, I am here with the deathless and victorious Jensen. First of all, congratulations. You've now qualified for the mid-season Invitational. Um, thank you, thank you. Was that on your mind at all in the series or just laser focused on what was going on? Yeah, I mean, I was definitely thinking about, you know, the winner goes to Chengdu, which will be an exciting event to go to because I missed out on the last international tournament. So I'm really looking forward to it and I'm happy we made it. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Um, in terms of Going through this series completely deathless, were you also aware of that, or was that something that the team was kind of cheering you on for? Uh, I don't think we talked about it, but I mean, in the back of my mind, I definitely like remembered it. I also remembered that enemy mid lane, I'm pretty sure he didn't get a single kill. So that was like also a fun fact that happened. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, going into this matchup, I think a lot of eyes were on mid because of how much pressure JoJo is able to exert in a lot of C9's games. You absorbed that really well. So what was your kind of individual and team game plan going up against C9 today? Um, I mean, I know how good of a player JoJo is. And usually, like, when C9 wins, it's through JoJo pressuring the map and stuff. And I also know, like, I'm really good at neutralizing players who play really aggressive and tries to snowball. So I thought as long as I played a good game, like, we should win C9 pretty easily. And then one thing I really appreciated today was just generally your draft strategy going up against C9. So talk to me a little bit about that, because I know it previously, and you've even joked about it yourself, I think a lot of people have criticized your champ pool, Azir being removed. I think you've had an excellent playoffs thus far. Um, so talk to me about your draft strategy going into C9. 
Um, I mean, we kind of just draft whatever is like comfort for us and it works best for us. And we've had good results with in practice. But we also knew that C9, they snowball through mid a lot. So we just banned Ari and Nico. And after that, it was like just pretty straightforward game. And I mean, it was pretty easy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys seem to have a little bit of a tougher time against Team Liquid last week. In terms of coming out of that series, what do you think your biggest takeaway was going into this week to qualify for finals in MSI? Uh, I mean, the games against TL, I don't know if there's like a specific takeaway. It was complete <laughs> banger games back and forth. So I think, you know, I don't know what the takeaways were actually, you know, I think we just we just played bad some games and had some bad individual performances and we just cleaned it up a bit today. But I also think Teal was a much tougher opponent. They play a lot better than C9. So I think it was just harder against Teal. That's the perfect segue into my question next, which is going to be who do you think is going to be facing you in the grand finals? Uh, I mean, uh, I thought for sure before the series, it was going to be us against C9 again. But after today, like, I don't know, man. I, I, can't, I can't say C9 after today. I just can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. So probably TL. <laughs> All right. You heard it here first. It's going to be TL. Thank you so much for taking the time, Jensen. Once again, congratulations. And Thank we you. will throw it to the Analyst Lounge to close out the day. <laughs> I heard it in the back. The lounge. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, back Emily. To the lounge, Emily and Jensen. Crazy stat Jensen had there. Uh, no deaths for Jensen, no kills for JoJo. Yeah, I don't think that happens, especially for mid lane. Like top lane, sure, that could happen, but mid lane, not getting a single kill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we break more down, a uh, reminder, LCS Finals Weekend, it kicks off next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific for the lower bracket finals, which is now Team Liquid versus Cloud9. And then the winner of that will play FlyQuest in the finals. That's Sunday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. So coverage starts very early for the pre-show there. And speaking of which, even though Jensen didn't flip, even though, Raz, you didn't flip your vote, Jensen's one player of the series. Boom! Yeah, that's but a big one. I do have to ask you, uh, Dokla, as someone who lost the upper bracket final and then won the oh, finals yeah. finals, what yeah. mindset are you in? As, as Honestly, Jensen, I, just I, I think it's finals, more of a buff right? playing it through the lower bracket because you have more stage experience. Well, back when it was like on a stage, like you can get, just have more stage experience. Um, and you just have more practice and more momentum. Like whoever wins, I think, just feels good. Mm -hmm. And um, even though you're like you're showing what you're gonna play, I think it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, so honestly, it's gonna be a blessing in disguise for C9 losing in a, such a quick fashion to go through lower bracket. And more it, reps. It was quick, Raz. <laughs> it was quick. It was insane. Uh, so. Well, you guys have predicted a five-game series, but you both predicted FlyQuest. Yes, yeah. Doka and I have both had the correct-ish prediction. Yeah. And I had the least correct prediction of all time with a 3-1 Cloud9. Because I came in with the expectation of, oh, you know, they slammed 100 Thieves, they came into the series uh, looking really much on page. I think my biggest takeaway was just, A, FlyQuest definitely outdrafted throughout the series. Mm -hmm. um, B, Overall, team fighting from FlyQuest was crazy good, yeah, especially yeah. in the last game when they were behind and there was that one team fight around mid lane uh, next to River, uh, Botside River, where Inspired gets that kick onto Zeri and like they just throw in resources, Gragas on top, Gragas barrel on top that kills them. So I think their team fighting was great, their drafting was great. There was a lot to be positive about them. Yeah, and I don't, I need to see the ballots on this one. Jensen won Player of the Series, but yeah. our Player of the Week, Massacre Player Week, is. Whippo. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's just the way That's everybody crazy. votes. Because sure, I, I know I voted for Yawn. There was some crazy stuff. There was apparently like a tied ballot and tiebreakers. Yeah. Anyway, player of the week to Whippo. Congratulations. Dokla, I want you to talk about this one because I think you pointed out how impressive what Whippo did this series actually was, sometimes based on the fact that he blind picked three times. Yeah, so he blind picked three games in a row and he had more impact than pretty much every single game. Um, you know, setting up plays. I think the TP game, uh, the TP play in game three, was the biggest play of the series. At least when the when they were behind, he just found a really good angle to get back into the game. So, um, and I think he's just finding a lot of time in uh, front lining for a team to play well. Like he's stuck in the middle of like five people here, but just presses on his here, buys time, flashes out, and you know, Inspire hits a great kick into the Nautilus, into the Ori Shockwave. But you know, it's all set up by. Um, just making space for the carries. Yeah, I definitely think that Blippo and team fighting was like a big one. That's why my player of the series vote went towards him. 
Um, but it's crazy to think that so, <laughs> you're player of the – you're not yes. player of the series, but you're player of the week. Listen, I, we don't need to – we know who to direct any vitriol to if okay. we have it. So, I heard there was a three-way tie in voting yeah. between – the lounge uh -huh. and the casters for a player of the week yeah. and a two-way tie for player of the series. In the event of a tie, our stats guy who goes by at MZ Leo the Chosen <laughs> on Twitter broke both ties. So if you have any issues, you know who we go to. Leave Leo alone. Yeah. <laughs> I think he did great. I think he did great. That's all I'm saying. I think there were great choices. Yeah, you guys look at the stats. I look at the game impact. <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's pull the up heart. the bracket Can't measure what you for have. the the final week of the playoffs and to see what happened so far. <laughs> FlyQuest with a 3-0 over Cloud9 today. C9 and TL going to be playing in that lower bracket final. And that's suddenly a much more interesting game, looking at how close Team Liquid was to taking down FlyQuest in the first round and how solidly FlyQuest took down C9 today. It's going to be... I, I, re I genuinely don't know what's going to happen next week. Hearing from Jensen at the end of that interview and being like, I can't pick C9, yeah. basically just based off of that day's game. I mean, I would also agree with Jensen here. I think Team Liquid look a lot stronger. Um, I think MT is playing really well, and uh, I, 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 I just don't see how TL could lose. I, I'd be mm -hmm. surprised if they lose. MT also said he doesn't think Blabber's very good yesterday. Oh my goodness. And then Yon facepalm because he didn't <laughs> want to piss C9 off. Anyway, that's, that's it for us. We'll be back next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Thank you, Doka, for joining us. That's going to be TL versus C9 is the first matchup. So for now, we're sending it over to the NACL. See you over there. See you guys. Thank you. This, this, this guy's hitting, bro. What the? I don't die here, okay? I don't die. Yeah, okay. I don't die. I don't die. I don't die. Can we look Kalista at all? Yes. Yeah. Freeman kick. Freeman kick. No flash on Vi. Play slow, guys. So this. I want to flash on Vi. Okay. Kill the ball. 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 The Rumble has no flash as well. Watch me, watch me, watch me, 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 me. They're looking on uh, Zen. Look, 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 Yon, 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 Yon. Holding backline. It's big. Yon, 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 Yon. Yon's dead, Yon's dead. Kill this guy, Nash. Watch me, watch me, me, me. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. Okay, 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 I'm gonna die here. Just let me die, let me die, let me die. Maybe I can live, maybe I can live. Maybe I live, I live, I live, I live. Oh, they killed that guy. I'm gonna live. Nice, can we go, Nash? Karma, a beautiful catch on JoJo. And they aren't done yet. FlyQuest have found Berserker right next to him. And they're still going forward. I'm chill, I'm chill, I'm chill, I'm chill. Slow down, slow down. I can, I can't, I can't blow. Watch my ult, watch my ult. Bring me. Kobe! So that we one can we hit Nexus or not? Can we hit Nexus or not? They're 1 HP, they're 1 HP, they're 1 HP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Go Yon, body timing. Yon flash, Yon flash. Oh, and then just, I yeah, just yeah, fucked with Nexus. I'm ending, I'm ending, I'm ending. Good job. Two! Two! Third left. Has only ult. Oh, okay. TP, yo. Body time flash, one shot him. Nice. We fight after, we fight after. I block, I block, I block, I block, I block. Oh, I I I I Olaf, 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 before Zeri joins. Kite, 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 we can kill Zeri. No, no, Zeri missile, Zeri missile. Keep fighting, keep I'm fighting. I'm holding Zeri, maybe? Zeri, 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 Zeri